take a knee. They kneel in unity. In but without actions, genuinely powerful sight. There are just words. There's no room for ignorance or intolerance, for hate, for injustice, for sitting in silence, for doing nothing. I'm ashamed, I'm embarrassed we want equality in society and football. We, we all need to, to do more. more. Challenge it. CCTV will find the perpetrator of that and he will have a lifetime back. Report it. Change it. Premier League. No room for racism. Anywhere. That is Ninja Kid Shells looking to get us underway, dancing into the back of the net. Trying to enjoy himself oh, in the Shell, box. Oh my it. god, he is. Shells, stop it. Can he find the ball into Pele? Surely a chance for Shells to equalise, and he will. Brings it on to De Bruyne. Lovely oh. football. Lovely talent. Oh! Brilliant feed from Wilfred Zaha. Mane does well. Goes on his own and puts the game to bed. It could be a chance for impact. Surely a goal! Bobby Firmino! Fernandez into R9, chance R9 round the corner, goes on his arm, will score a massive goal! Can he play Cantona, Croy, brilliant touch, brilliant goal! Cavalry is here, oh, and that is nice. a great finish. And Rashford, lovely back heel, what a finish oh. that is. Lovely ball, it's a box! He's about to get his hands on it as Curtis Jones goes in, dinks it over the goalkeeper as Ryan Fasoa. The result there. That's the final whistle in North London. Harry Kane steps up yet again for Tottenham. Big points in the bag. What are your Great game, Harry. Cheers, mate. Such a clinical finish from a top class striker. Welcome back to the E Premier League, ladies and gentlemen, for the Xbox side of the event. Coming up next, we have Manchester City versus Tottenham, but we've also got eight more games as well. We've got the likes of Tottenham versus Everton. I'm very, very excited, Carl. Calm me down. May I, I need calming down on this one. Manchester City's MCFC Ryan taking on Newcastle's Planet Toast. And it is time to kick off this year's E Premier League. Richard and Brandon, I'm going to throw it over to you guys. Kick it off. Thank you very much, Carl and Joe. And yes, for the third time, the E Premier League has now returned. And we're kicking off today on the Xbox. Just Xbox games to play. We've got group games and we've got the call to finals. I mean, looking across the four groups first and foremost, Richard, with how the seedings work this year with those global series rankings, it's difficult to say which group is the most difficult or the most stat, but in your eyes, what group are you sort of swaying towards saying that is a tough group to get out of? Uh, personally, I'd probably say group one. In all honesty, Group A, the, the, the sort of group that we're going to be, we're going to be looking at first in, in proceedings here. I think when you look at the talent, especially in particular Olito, he is an incredible FIFA player. We're going to see him in action later on today, representing Leeds United. Is he going to live up to the expectation of everybody? He, he's won 
previous events, not maybe not the E Premier League. This is first time competing. And also, welcome to the E Premier League, all you Leeds United fans out there. Debut in the E Prem. Will it be one to remember? But this man on your screen right now, we're going from debuts to seasoned veterans. Ryan Pessoa. Oh, definitely indeed. I mean, Ryan Pessoa has had a, a bit of a journey in this, but he wasn't actually part of sort of the bracket in part of the tournament last year. But in a different capacity, he was here, of course, as an expert and as a host. And with that first kick, the Premier League is underway. The Premier League finals underway once again. It will be Manchester City's right up against Newcastle United's planet. So speaking of which, speaking of players that have both had caps in this competition, two times... They both played in this one. Manchester City's Ryan did play for Chelsea in the inaugural E Premier League back on FIFA 19. And Planet Toast also played for Newcastle. Fortunately, they both missed out on last year's tournament, but they're back again this time to do what all they can to get themselves out of the group stages. You might not be aware of the group stages, Richard. They're a little bit different, these group stages. They're not the usual sort of groups here. No, they're not. Double elimination bracket groups. The number one seed in each group will go through into the winner's match already. Other four competitors, they'll battle it out. And you've got to lose two matches to be eliminated. Yeah, of course, it will be Newcastle United's Planet Toast from right to left in this first leg. And Manchester City's Ryan from left to right will break down these teams. As you know, it is on FIFA Ultimate Team. Premier League players only, but safe to say, you might not have all the strikers in the world in the Premier League. A, a, a very good... Uh, sort of variant of, of items that have been pushed into the game. But we have got a solid selection of Team of the Year's headliners in forms. We'll do our best to break them down over the next couple of days. Speaking of one player, that's Curtis Jones, future star item in the what midfield. Pass. What a ball. That could be to Reese James to get us underway. And that will be the first goal in the E Premier League. It goes to Newcastle United's very own Planet Toast. And expect to see that man a lot more, but not in a scoring capacity. Reese James, welcome to the E Premier League. Fair play. Great start to proceedings here. Maybe going against the, against the script a little bit. Planet Toast 1 0 up. Beautiful play in and around the box. And looks like Dan Gaskin knows what he's talking about. Reese James, opening goal of the day. That's what I was saying, just briefly. He's not the man that scores goals. He's the man that's there back defending. Yes, he's a fullback by trade, but you will notice one thing the pros will love to get him as a centre back. Such a solid item is that future stop of Chelsea. That's a wake up call, though, for Ryan Pessoa. Double elimination group. Looking to equalise. Is Jao Cancelo, the Manchester City man, dinks it into Marcus Rashford. And... Uh, maybe that's where the lack of real out-and-out -out strikers in the Premier League, especially in the sort of meta, meta most effective tactic available. You're looking for pace, you're looking for skill moves. There isn't that plethora of strikers available in the E Premier League with these restrictions, Premier League players only. You can see all the scores coming in at the top of your screen when we do get goals. We'll make sure that you see all the action here in the E Premier League. And of course. Looking through those E Premier League archives this morning. The two teams that have won this tournament previously, it was Liverpool back in 2019. That was Tex. Of course, he's back representing the Mighty Reds for a third year in a row. But a team that was relegated from the Premier League, Watford. They were the champions last year with their player in hashtag Tom. He's now moved over to Spurs this year. As we said, PlayStation will be in action tomorrow. It's all eyes on the Xbox today. And we'll be covering all of those games for you. Just keep an eye in the right-hand corner of your screen. We'll keep you up to date with all the scores as the goals go in around the ground. Manchester City, as we say, Manchester United up against Villa, Brighton against Arsenal, chance for Ryan Pessoa! Just like that, 25 minutes played. Expect to see that man scoring plenty of goals over the duration of this week. Team of the year, Bruno Fernandes, no doubt one of the stars of the show in these Premier League teams. An absolutely zero reaction from Ryan as well. He got that goal back. It you think he's just playing a casual game of FIFA against a few mates, not the E Premier League. One apiece here. All these games will be played over two legs, meaning that it's an aggregate scoreline. No home or away goals that you've got to worry about, just straight aggregate. Whoever scores more will be your victor, progressing into the next round of the tournament. Yeah, and you can only lose two games. Or sorry, you can only lose one game. If you lose two, you're out of the competition, unfortunately. That is how the group stages will run. You are looking at group... A at the moment. Who else is in this group? Here you are. So you've got West Ham, West Brom and Leeds United also in this group. You said it perfectly, Leeds United. This is their first ever E Premier League finals and what a roster of players they have. Here comes 
Ryan Pessoa now looking for a second. Adama tries to cut it back inside to Hunmin Song. Just can't angle the shot. But speaking of Leeds United, Oli Lito is in this group, though. Yeah, we'll see him later on today. Just Hungmin Son getting forward. I expect to see that Hungmin Son foot item. Typically a left-sided midfielder, but what makes Son so usable is the fact that he's got a five-star weak foot, meaning that his left foot is just as good and effective as his right foot inside the final third, whether it be passing or shooting. I'm sure you'll see a complete mixed bag of in-game items here on FIFA Ultimate Team from the Premier League. Different formations being used as well. Will that 5-3-2 be ever-present as it has been over these last couple of months? So we'll see a mixture of formations. Also expect to see fullbacks moved across into those centre-back areas. Of course, Carl Walker's in form is a centre-back, so he can get He's away in. with that. De Bruyne could be through the Manchester City man for the Manchester City eSport Pro. That is the beauty of the Premier League, does well. Rashford now goes to fake shot, doesn't need it. The cancel into the chance for Marcus Rashford to ensure that Manchester City's right goes up by two goals to one. Yeah, a couple of options when the ball came back into Bruno Fernandes. Could have shot, played Marcus Rashford back in. That Manchester connection on the red side, sending Manchester City's Ryan Pessoa into a winning position. From 1-0 down to 2-1 up, all in the space of this first half. Goals are going in Everton, 1-1 against Tottenham in Group C. And after the perfect stop, the most unlikely scorer, Planet Toast, down by two goals to one. As we said, he represented Newcastle back in the 2019 E Premier League Finals, just missed out by a game last year. Well, that is the beauty of this competition, Richard. You've got, you know, fans of these clubs that are getting an opportunity to represent their club in the E Premier League Grand Finals. That'll do us for half time here. Three goals and two goals to one. Manchester City's Ryan Pessoa does lead at the break. If you have just tuned in, welcome to the E Premier League Grand Finals. That's our first 45 minutes played, Richard, and a great turnaround, wasn't it? Yeah, a fantastic first half. We're going to see the best moments of that first 45 right now. Wonderful run in behind for Rhys James. Just caught that line perfectly. The pass waited and he was on side. But Ryan came firing back. Marcus Rashford, beautiful way to pass into Bruno Fernandes, who slotted past the goalkeeper. And the goal was returned. This time, Kevin De Bruyne into Bruno Fernandes. Goal scorer turned a sister, Marcus Rashford. Little cancel inside the box, just throwing that air of doubt into the mind of Planet Toast. Puts him 2-1 up. Just saw the formation of Ryan as well. He's playing a 5-3-2. Five, five defenders, three midfielders, two attackers. You might be thinking that's slightly defensive. However, currently, with sort of the meta and how people are playing, 5-3-2 is a formation that you're going to see quite a lot over the next four to five days. And just to pick your mind quickly, Richard, who could we expect to see off the bench in these games? Because there are a handful of great items that aren't good enough to make the starting 11 but off the bench they give you pace they give you that extra bit of of creativity that you might be looking for the, the, the first word you said there pace that is what you're looking for off the bench look for adama Traore, alan saint maximin all to make an impact off the substitutions bench well here we go then we're back on the way here in group a on the xbox manchester city's right Leads by two goals to one after going 1-0 down to Newcastle United's Planet Toast. Remember, all 20 Premier League clubs are involved in this tournament. They both have an Xbox player and a PlayStation player representing them, hoping that they can, of course, move them through to those knockout stages. Group stages and quarterfinals being played today. Of course, finding all over the place, two apiece between... Everton and Spurs, I just saw there. Leicester Fulham, they're tied one apiece. Seems as though everyone's coming out to attack here in the third annual E Premier League. Just what you want to see. Brilliant ball. Marcus Rashford does well. Gets Nick Pope off his line just offside. West Brom lead by two goals to one. Of course, that's Jazz back in action. There's a result for you. Aston Villa, speak about a player Gwigzy. making a return. Gwigsy. The Scottish pro back against Saf's Dragon. I mean, looking at that group, that is a great group. Grill is in there, former world champion, back with Sheffield United again this year. I mean, that game 
Both of those two very, very experienced when you talk about reps in FIFA, years in FIFA, probably five, six years they've been competing. Guizzi had a hiatus, he's now back in FIFA 21. It feels as though the game suits his play style and making the Premier League certainly an achievement for him. He'll be hoping to go far in this competition. Looking for a third now is right. That build-up play has been perfect, sort of like a triangle between Rashford, Hummin, Song and Bruno Fernandes. Team of the year, Bruno Fernandes! Doing exactly what he's there to do. Create those chances, create those pockets of space. And that's a two-goal cushion for Manchester City in the first leg. Incredible from Ryan Pessoa right there and just winning the ball straight back as well from kickoff. Relentless from Ryan right now. And Bruno Fernandes putting him three goals to warm up. It's such a, an impactful player, Bruno Fernandes. And typically a centre midfielder, but honestly, I, I wouldn't expect him to do anything less. He is the best midfielder, arguably the best player in the Premier League on FIFA right now as well. He offers you everything. He's a player as well that doesn't feature just in this E Premier League tournament. If you're a hardcore fan of competitive FIFA, you'll know that he plays in predominantly everything. most of the teams, if you can fit it in within your certain squad restrictions. Paul's coming in, I can imagine, from Planet So it's 25 minutes left in the first leg. Just a quick one, Richard, worth speaking to the viewers about those players that are the top seed in each group, they are only one game away from making it to the knockouts, aren't they? Yeah, with how the, the bracket is, they're already one game in front, so to say. So they have that spot in the, the winner's bracket already. They don't have to play a prelim match. They don't have to play necessarily the sort of the game to get you into the winner's bracket. Looking for another goal. He's right. He's in that five back. Adama Traore is that left wing back. It's going to offer you so much in terms of an overlapping option every single time. 22 minutes left here. We'll go into the pause menu. It's the five at the back, as you mentioned. Expect to see just the one change. It will be Saka that will come onto the field. Future star right a minute, left wing back. And yes, he might not be a left wing back <laughs> normally. But to those maybe that are tuning in, Richard, why is that the case? Just what pace at wing back, really. Just bring on fresh legs. You can see... Cancelo and also Saka, they're very sort of offensive in their approach. When Ryan's playing right now, those wing-backs offer you the width. They offer you that out-ball, if necessary, as well. You're just looking across that midfield three. Powerhouses, creativity, everything that you could want in a midfield three. Team of the year, Kevin De Bruyne. Team of the year, Bruno Fernandes. And you sort of get that gimme spot. Do you play an attacker in there, maybe a, a Hung Min Son, or do you go with a more defensive-minded player, someone like Curtis Jones? Ball into the box now, will be. Just clawed away there by Nick Pope. I mean, expect to see Edison Nick Pope as the main two in goal. That'll be the inform. 84 Nick Pope, the, the six foot seven Burnley goalkeeper. Into the box it will go again. That's what he's there to do. Come out and claim the ball so well. Result that just caught my eye in Group D. Wolves are beating Southampton three goals to one in the first leg. And that's Sean Flossie, the, one of the lowest ranked players, not just on the Xbox, in the whole competition, going out to say, you know what? I've made it into the top 20 and I'm here to play. Yeah, shocks will happen in the E Premier League as well for the simple fact that a lot of these experienced Global Series players, it's unusual. Chance here for Marcus Rashford. Great finish from Planet Toast. 3-2 right now with 15 minutes left to go. There you go. Goals are flying in literally everywhere. Brighton lead Arsenal by a goal to nil. That one in Group B. Everton, 3-2 in front. Against Spurs right now, that's in Group C. That one is an interesting game, isn't it? I mean, uh, he deserves a credit. He deserves a mention, sorry. NFG Jaden, been knocking on the door for a long time for an event to get his opportunity. I think he's come close a couple of times in qualifiers as well in the Global Series, like one game away from making a broadcast. He's up against that Stokes, 11 Stokes, a player that needs no introduction. A remarkable FIFA player in his own right, Stokes. Playoff winner, uh, huge amount of money that he won back in FIFA 19. He made the FIFA E World Cup Grand Final, which is the final event of the FIFA season, the place where you want to be, where the most prize money and accolade is given out. He was at that tournament. Just go show how good he is. Yeah, the Seagulls flying high. Two goals to nil against Arsenal. That is a big result for bundled Luka again. Debut E Premier Leagues for a handful of players here. Planet Toast. Looking for that goal, that third goal. Does well, Lacroqueta onto the left boot of Bruno Fernandes, just able to deal with the pressure. He's Ryan, he looks to 
in this first leg, just about in front, but we've watched, sorry, we've watched a lot of FIFA Esports, and that one goal is not going to be the safest of scorelines. Especially in a, a two-legged format where a second leg of FIFA can give you any result. Charles Saka off the bench. Ah, oh, he's just offside, a little bit too keen off the mark. Was the Arsenal future star item. That's an interesting pick there from Ryan as well. Giroud comes on. One of the most recent objective items, I believe, that could be completed by players. Is, is, is he in your bench if you're playing in this tournament? Maybe. I mean, he's one of those players that offers you something different. He's tall, he's physical. He got a huge pace increase as well on his regular foot time to into his objective. The game mode that we're playing right now, it's FIFA Ultimate Team. It's a live game mode. Players get upgrades given their recent performance in real life or due to the promos that are released in FIFA. Speaking of which, what result that is, by the way. Burnley, 3-0 up in their match. That's Burnley actually their leader. And that will do us for the first leg between these two. Ryan Pessoa leads Newcastle United's Planet Toast by three goals to two, but there's still a second leg to play in this game. And no doubt that will not be the last of the goals uh, seen in that game. A one-goal scoreline. Not really enough to tie you over, I would like to say, with, with confidence. Let's have a look at some of those highlights in the game. And it was the perfect start, wasn't it, for Planet Toast? It was indeed. James beating the offside trap and finishing extremely well as well past the goalkeeper. But Ryan showed why he is one of the favourites on this Xbox. Smashed in at the near post there. Hung Min Son playing Kevin De Bruyne in on goal. Kyle Walker came across. Decides to recycle the play back into Bruno Fernandes. Beautiful little cancel there. A very sort of technically hard and mechanically difficult thing to do in FIFA. It sort of master that cancel. Bruno Fernandes put Ryan 3-1 up. However, Planet Toast got this goal back through Marcus Rashford. Heel to heel flick. The skill moves coming out in full flow for Planet Toast. And that was the goal to only give them a deficit of one. Three goals to two now. Yeah, so the second leg to come up very, very shortly indeed. 16th against 17th in the seedings. Of course, these two in group A. And it, it must be said as well, huge, huge tournament for these guys because, you know, there's playoff spots on the line. And for, for some of these, they might not be getting the playoffs through other tournaments. The Premier League might be their only hope. Yeah, it will be their only hope indeed. Leg number one is complete right now. We're going to head back over to Joe and Kyle to break down all of the other games. Cheers, guys. Yeah, Carl, very happy bunny. After that first leg, obviously Manchester City picking up three points or at least winning the first leg. Yes, and that's something we have to just make sure people are aware of. There'll be a second leg from all of these matches. It's not just one game of FIFA 21. There's two, then it's the aggregate score that's combined together that will then see uh, if who goes through into that winner's bracket, who drops down into the loser's bracket, Joe? Yeah, I have to say, I was pretty impressed by Planet Toast there. A bit of a, bit of a surprise, but getting a couple of goals. But um, Ryan, as one of our favourites looking at it so far, very comfortable. Yeah, he is. And I think for a player like Ryan, we've seen so many times how he's gone to some big competitions and it's difficult for him as well in previous years. So I think for him, he's representing Manchester City. He actually plays for Manchester City Esports as well. So I think for him, he wants to put a great uh, result on the board over two legs. Yeah, definitely. We can have a look at some of the other results then as well. Obviously, we just chatted about Manchester City beating Newcastle 3-2 in that first leg. Second leg still to come. West Brom 3-1 winners against West Ham. Manchester United, that's not a great start, losing 3-1 against Aston Villa, but Brighton, 3-0 victors there over Arsenal, Carl. Yes, and then moving into Group C, Burnley 3-0 against Crystal Palace, Everton 3-2 against Tottenham Hotspurs, then Group D, it's Southampton 2, Wolverhampton Wanderers 3, and Leicester are losing 2-1 to Fulham right there. There's plenty more FIFA 21 action to come. Yes, there is, so make sure you do stick around with us. The second legs from all of those games that we've seen throughout that first leg of the E Premier League. But coming up shortly, yes, we're going to jump straight back into that second leg. MCFC Ryan taking on Planet Toast. See you in a minute. The first ever E Premier League. This is so big. Every single club. It's loyalty, it's passion, it's desire. Ball into the box. Kelly with a header! That's how much it means to him. He is the Xbox 
champion. I think it's my favourite one, to be honest. F2 Tech, what a performer. Hello and welcome to the E Premier League Invitational. That feels very sweaty. You know it's disgusting. We both know that was disgusting. And we're seeing it again. And it's a chance for Diogo. And there it is. Diogo Jota has won the tournament. Mares into Trezeguet. Oh, he's up by two. Goes back inside. Pogba gets it back. And it's a second. And now he has won. Tom, you are no longer the bridesmaid. You are now the bride. Oh. You are the EU <laughs> Premier League Finally. champion. Finally. <laughs> We can start. It's your family, your teammates, your squad. This is football, and in football, you are never alone. FIFA 21, win as one. That's sick. PlayStation. Like you'll ever get paid to play video games, they said. Now you're players, creators, fans, all in one huge and growing community. We know that gaming's many faces can truly make a positive impact. We're there with you. Whether you're making the next great game or just looking forward to playing it. Squad up, we're Barclays. True or false, Phil Foden has the best trim at Man City. Oh, come on now. It's false, isn't it? False. So you're not even having your own trim, Phil? I'm having it, but I just keep it simple. I don't think it's the best. Okay, do you want to put that down now, mate? <laughs> <laughs> There's some glue on it. I can't... It's sticky. <laughs> so I, I just keep it... Set that up for a while. So the ball goes out of play, it looks like on the sidelines Marcus Rashford is getting ready to be their first change today. Just getting his final checks from the physio by the looks of it. And he'll be looking to make an impact from the bench, most definitely. Who do you think has the better agility stat according to FIFA 21, Phil Foden or Kevin De Bruyne? Phil. You're saying Phil? Phil, yeah, what are you saying? might be me, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I think that might be. Yeah, I think Phil yeah. moves a little bit better than I'm me. Not too sure. Maybe because I'm a bit more younger, so. A bit younger, okay. Kevin De Bruyne, 76. Phil Foden, 87. So there's a big gap, and Phil, uh, you take yeah. it. You must be pleased with that. Yeah. They used to be Kevin on start, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the E Premier League 2021, where we just saw Manchester City win their first leg 3 2 against Newcastle Carl. Yes, we did indeed. But there is a second leg coming up very, very shortly for you. So make sure you stick around. Who will progress through to that winner's bracket? Who will go down into the loser's bracket? We will find out. That second leg is coming up. MCFC Ryan taking on Planet Toast. Richard, Brandon, it's over to you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yes, yeah, second leg in front of us in this game. If you missed the first, don't worry. We've still got 90 more minutes of this game to be played. Richard, we left the, at the break, so, uh, so to speak, at 3-2 to Manchester City's Ryan. He was 1-0 down, bounced back, got himself a two-goal cushion, but then Planet Toast did respond late on. And to be honest, this game is still so open. No, absolutely. And, and typically, the second leg of FIFA is where it all kicks off. That's where there's there's goals, there's more mistakes because there's more on the line. Players start panicking more. And this is really where the tension amplifies tenfold. And I cannot wait to see what he's going to give. Is the experience at these events that Ryan has over Planet Toast potentially going to play a factor? We'll have to wait and see. Or will it just be Planet Toast and Newcastle United? Maybe. Stirring the pot a little bit in game number one. Maybe so. Again, as you said, you can only lose, obviously, one game before the next thing you know, you're in an elimination game of FIFA. Must be said as well, 
uh, Oli Lito in this group, as he's the top seed, the highest ranked player on those Global Series rankings coming into this tournament, he sort of skips around, doesn't he? I mean, that's the same for, for Oli Lito, for Gorilla, for Tex, and for Diogo of Chelsea. All those players only need to win one two-legged game to get into the knockout stages. Yeah, they do indeed. And funny you say, Oli Lito, because the winner of this match plays him in the next round. So lots up for grabs. It's not the nicest, ties it, to be up against Oli Lito in a game which potentially is going to knock you straight down into that loser bracket. But here we go then. Uh, well, it's funny you say that as well. We're catching up with Ryan only a couple of days ago, and he says he's looking forward to the challenge of playing Oli Lito. He's got to get past Planet Toast first. But it's never going to be an easy game, is it, if you want to go and win the E Premier League? So much talent here. And again, we have got you covered all this week. Xbox today, PlayStation tomorrow, and then those big finals on Friday where there'll be playoff spots on the line. And one player will be taking home that crown of the Premier League champion for their club and £20,000 in their back pocket as well. Newcastle. In their black and white traditional strip from left to right in this one. Manchester City in the blue and white from right to left. Two goals were scored in quick succession from Ryan. Is he going to be able to do so again in this game to pull away from his opponent? Both players starting in the five at the back as well, Richard. It's a... Formation that is ever so popular. Virgil van Dijk will get maybe a second bite of the cherry. Oh, that's an ugly finish, but as long as the ball's in the back of the net, who really cares? Bruno Fernandes will run away in celebration. Virgil van Dijk headed it down to the floor, tried to stab a foot in it. Next thing you know, the Portuguese midfield maestro was there to tap in, say thank you very much. That's 3-3. Very scrappy goal there, Planet Toast. Leveling up the playing field, he scored early in the first game and now in this second leg, scores early again. said that one goal wouldn't be enough. I mean, it's only taken seven minutes. Let's be brought back all square. 3-3 three, three in this one. She said, winner plays against Oli Lito of Leeds United. This is Group A we are watching. Keep a close eye on the right-hand corner of your screen. That's where all the score updates will be coming through from Group B, C and D. Sure, there'll be lots of eyes on Fnatic Techs over in that Group D for Liverpool. See how he's getting on very shortly indeed. All matches in their second leg now. Ryan Pesela. Looking to build that lead back in front now for Manchester City. Jao Cancelo, the Manchester City fullback. Offers you a very good pacey outlet on that right wing. Someone else offers you a lot of creativity. Is that man in possession now? Kevin De Bruyne, team of the year. Good step from Trent Alexander-Arnold, stepped out, won the ball back. And potentially a counter-attack here. It's going to be quite a lot of Manchester City players featured in this E-Premier League. Kyle Walker at centre-back, not the one in the studio, the one on the pitch. Kevin De Bruyne's team of the year, foot item. And also João Cancelo, arguably up there with Trent Alexander-Arnold, fighting for that right-back spot. Trent might even be used as a centre-back believe it or not, and Cancelo pushed out to that right wing-back area if the five-back formation, 5-3-2, five, 5-2-1-2, two, five, two, two, is used. There's no doubt about it. Trent can also do a job in central midfield as well. His item is that good that many would regard it. It's not really a right-back, but more of a central midfielder or a CDM. Planet Toast. After that, goal, that first goal was... Now to find his feet, speaking of... Trent Alexander-Arnold, able to interchange easily with Virgil van Dijk. Roberto Firmino, I'm sure that'll be his foot freeze item. Offers you a very good balanced central midfielder. Just offside, slightly too keen off the mark was the Brazilian. Not still opening stages, but Planet Toast looks really comfortable in this second leg. Creating all the chances, not really letting Ryan have too much in the final third. A lot of possession just in these midfield areas for Ryan. A pause cued there by one of these two players, not happy with how the game is What's that cutback? What's that Rashford on the edge of the box now? He's just teeing up that pass. It's one that was delayed. Some scores coming in, you can see. Aston Villa were leading. Four goals to two against Manchester United. But Everton against Tottenham there. Bit of a battle between Southampton and Wolves, one of the lowest-ranked players in the tournament. Sean Flossie of Wolves up against Royal Funky. Four goals to two. Fulham leading. Two goals to one against Leicester. That's Painter against Footwiz Nixnib. 
if he sits in those, or in the seeding, I should say, 808 points for the year. And then West Brom running away with it. Interesting story, that Jazz Singh, a former West Ham eSports pro. Now, yeah, revenge. playing for West Brom against Redlack. Of course, of West Ham United. Some brilliant games, some fantastic players on display. I'll go out on a limb and say this is no doubt the most stacked e Premier League tournament we have had looking across the board, Richard, at all the names that are involved. I'm sure every single Premier League club is in safe hands with their representatives across the two consoles. What a touch that is! Oh! Just flicking it around the defender there. Beautiful little touch. <laughs> it's just a class, isn't it, of Bruno? Especially in and around the box. Such a nice sort of composure touch. Watch Rashford, look at the space. Marcus Rashford, it's an easy finish. And that's how Arch Fever can be at sometimes. You can have all the pressure, you can have the best chance in the game. All it takes is one attack down the other end. And of course, just like that, the roles have reversed. It's a cruel game. Beautiful play in the attacking sense up one end for Planet Toast. Creating the opportunity, hitting off of the post. Ryan, one counter-attack later, whipped cross into the box and smashed home by Manchester City's Ryan. And you can just see the formation that he's playing there. We talked about Trent Alexander-Arnold in at centre mid next to Bruno Fernandes and Kevin De Bruyne. It's a scoreline Brandon Smith will be happy about. Brighton and Hove Albion 4-1 up against Arsenal. Just, just, just taking it slow, just taking it slow. That's bundled Luca there, four goals to one up against Healy of Arsenal. Do ignore that you just saw in the pause menu there, you saw Newcastle were four three up. It is Manchester City that are four three up in this time. Marcus Rashford. Let's make it four goals to three. Will that be the match winner that will send Manchester City into that winner's side of the group against Oli Lito, the highest ranked player on the Xbox in this tournament? And a name that I'm sure is feared by many. I find it very peculiar, actually, that sort of these two, we were talking a lot about Ryan being the favourite, but they're only 17th and 16th from seeded in this tournament next to each other. So that just certainly shows how we're valuing the experience that Ryan's had playing in multiple events all over the world for the last three, four years. How big of a, uh, an impact and a positive impact that can be on your performance. Well, let's not forget on the flip side as well. This is the second E Premier League Finals for Planet Toast, back with Newcastle again. I think there's definitely some experience that he's picked up from that event. Yes, may not be knocking on the door as of much in the global series. In E Premier League, it's the same story for quite a few players. You know, they might not make much activity or make much of a noise in other tournaments happening around uh, the globe. But in the Premier League, there's some players that just love this tournament so much that they're just back again playing for either a different club or the same team that they've put their trust into. Let's have a look at the highlights from that first leg there, Richard, because there was a couple to talk about. The post was hit. This was a, a quite an interesting finish, wasn't it? Very scrappy. Virgil van Dijk won the first header, but then the ball rebounding off the goalkeeper into Bruno Fernandes's path. Hyung Min Song playing a lovely cutting ball there, and Marcus Rashford just got away from his marker. You see... No real reaction from Ryan. He's been quite conserved, hasn't he? Usually he's quite sort of uh, en energetic, I'll well, say. We saw him when he won the qualifier to actually play for Manchester City at the Premier League. And it's the most <laughs> inspired <laughs> I've ever seen Ryan. He was calling people out. He was saying, if people want to come at me, I'm here. Come and, come and, come and try it. I'm better than everybody else. I think some people don't understand that some of these Premier League clubs have got sort of full-time FIFA yeah. pros that represent the club outside of this competition in the E-Premier League. And Ryan's point was the fact that there's a lot of Manchester City fans, there's a lot of FIFA players that wanted to take my shirt in this tournament this year. And after he missed out last year, he had to come back fine. That's exactly what he did. Played some of the best FIFA we saw yeah. across that club playoff event, which if you don't know how the E-Premier League works, there's different stages. There's an online registration stage. Obviously, there's the playoffs that was all online where you had the best of the eight players across the both consoles, Xbox and PlayStation, all fighting to be here in this E Premier League. But no, no doubt what a performance that was from Ryan Pasala. And he wants to carry that momentum into this tournament, which at the moment he is just about doing. Leads by four goals to three. It's not been plain sailing for him at all. Planet Toast putting up a fantastic effort. I think you were mentioning there players potentially preferring the E Premier League to maybe the more global series events. Also, if you're a Newcastle United fan, 
it just means so much more. You're playing for your club. It, it matters more. And that's why we've seen, you know, for example, like Tex, he's played for Liverpool three out of three years. There's only a handful of players that have played in this tournament every single year. And that sort of consistency is absolutely remarkable. Back on the way now. Remember, loser will drop down to that loser side of the group here in Group A. We are watching. Winner will play against Leeds United. Oli Lito, the number one seeded player. And a name that's formidable with FIFA Esports right now. Brilliant ball in a running race. You just see in the bottom left corner, every time Ryan's getting the ball in the sort of defensive area where he's defending an attack from Ponitos, he's flicking on all the low ball side. What that does, it's a quick tactic in FIFA. You just simply use it by flicking on your D-pad. You just see it here. Perfect example. He brought it up. As soon as it comes forward, he's putting that tactic on. It compresses the pitch. It makes your centre mids come tight, your defenders come tight, and it really is hard to break down. This could be dangerous now. His numbers forward, just delayed it maybe slightly too long. I'm in some waiting to find that right skill move. The directional nutmeg, as we know, is so dangerous in the box. It's sometimes so powerful that you can get the odd rebound, you can get a bit of good fortune. It'll fall into your favour. Even with the best defenders in the way. Expect to see this as well. Lots of pauses. I'm sure there'll be people watching home saying. These players like to pause it quite a bit. It's all about those small changes, tactical changes, fresh legs onto the field. It might take you 60 minutes into the second leg to spot a weakness in your opponent, and as soon as you see that, you want to change it. You want to exploit every small, minute detail that you can on the pitch. Building is Ryan Pessoa. Chance, Bruno Fernandes, can he find that cut back? Goes on his own, somehow. That goes in under Nick Pope. I mean, it looked like he, he got there for the save originally, the English goalkeeper, but can understand the frustration from Planet Toast. It was one of those, the angle was narrowed down so much, it was obvious what Ryan was originally looking for. He was looking for that cutback ball into Marcus Rashford. But Bruno Fernandes says, no, I'm going to squeeze that in. And that's two goals in. I mean, I have no idea what's happening in that Brighton game. 5-4, it's a nine-goal thriller, and there's been another goal. Surely not. Have Arsenal equalised? Oh, that is awful. There's such a bad mistake at the back. Arsenal, 5-5, five, five. what a turnaround. It's been a week for uh, Arsenal turning over defeats and potentially it goes all the way there. Just to, just to put that into context, Brian with four went up in that game. It's 5-5 five, five now. I mean, that's just a small takes for some of the games. Look at that, Leicester Fulham, four goals to three. Remarkable. Three. We've not had a bad game, have we, to start, start proceedings here in the Premier League? Seven goal thriller between West Brom and West Ham United. That's Jazz of West Brom leading against Red Lab. That's from Group C that game. And then Aston Villa still just in front. I think you're seeing Guigsy there just ensure that the lead is too much for Saf's Dragon. 5 5. There it is. Group B. Brian against Arsenal. Back on the way in this one. Ryan Pessoa's got that two-goal cushion to fall back on Planet Toast. Trying to pile on the pressure, as you can imagine. That depth will be high now. Fresh legs off the field. Try to Elastico his way into the box. Did Marcus Rashford. Is Saka again off the bench for Ryan. Saka and Aubameyang both coming on. Plenty of pace being introduced here for Ryan with only 20 minutes left to play. You make those changes because you know your opponent's going to make offensive changes. You bring more pace onto the pitch to try and hit him on the counter-attack. It's very much a game of chess right now in the final 20 minutes. Robertson, all the way from fullback. Sergio Mane, as you said, off the bench, looking to inject that pace, that creativity. Marcus Rashford, he's is off. he on? He's off. Just just a quick one, Richard. What a game that is. Group C, Everton, I think seven, three up in that game against Stokes. That's Jaden of NFG. Up against 11 Stokes. What a game, that one. Six against 11th in the seedings. Oh, wow. 12 goals now. Aston Villa just hanging on to this, aren't they? Every time United score, Aston Villa going bag one or two as well. Unbelievable start here in the E Premier League. I don't think we've seen this many goals in usual competitions. Usually it's sort of a 4 3 or maybe a 3 1. We're getting 7 5s, we're getting blowouts, 5 1s.
the Premier League does not mess about. And I'm, again, I'm saying it's these restrictions. He's got 12 minutes to find two goals. There's one, there is a goal. Sadio Mane strains the pause, we go again. Five goals to four. Planet Toast just down by a single goal now. Is he going to get a chance? Yes, he will for Newcastle, but he's got to put that into the back of the net. Leicester Fulham 4-4. I mean, whether it's some nerves from people, whether it's just the excitement of playing in this competition, we are being treated by so many goals across the four groups here in the Premier League. If you have just joined us, we're looking at our first opening games of the competition. I think one of the big things, defensively, there's so much pace, but the actual sort of defensive attributes of some of these players isn't the greatest. We're not seeing icons, which typically you see in the FIFA Global Series, players like Maldini and sort of Carlos Alberto, real top-tier icon defenders. We've seen players that are maybe technically Jao Cancelo, Trent Alexander-Arnold better, but in the actual defensive aspect, a little bit weaker, so it, we are just seeing more goals. Everton are making a statement right there. Stokes, who's one of the favourites coming into this, 9-3 down. He's a young player, Jaden. as I said. First ever LAN event. He's obviously qualified for just a live event in the E Premier League. Been knocking on the door in those global series. Oh, that's terrible. Tournaments, this could be an awful mistake. Newcastle United, so close there, it was a great idea. And that's pressure, that's nerves from Ryan. All playing a factor oh, right now. To put the game to bed, potentially so, Aubameyang off the bench. Cheeky chip, Aubameyang will score. And that might be enough to send Ryan into that winner's matchup against the Elite of Leeds United. We're leading six goals to four. We talked about the counter-attack. We talked about the importance of bringing pace off the bench. One through ball down the line. Aubameyang, when he's in that scenario, it's all down to Ryan. Can you pick the right finish? Went for the dink over the goalkeeper and just potentially saw his fate blossom before his eyes. He won't give up just yet, though, Planet Toast. You know, we'll be able to create a chance. Or two. If you're a Newcastle fan, do not worry, you won't be out of the tournament. We'll just be down into that loser side of the group. If you lose the next game, unfortunately, it will be the end of the road of the Premier League on your Xbox side. Well, I think he's in safe hands now. The two-goal cushion reinstalled once again from Ryan Pessoa. Added time to follow, just two minutes of normal time. And as you said, he's looking forward to that game. Manchester City against Leeds in the winner's side of Group 8. One more goal to end it in style. <laughs> Rashford, maybe not so clinical at the back post there, but it doesn't matter for Ryan. He will be going through into the next round of this double elimination group bracket but a lot of these games potentially going into extra time if they are drawing we had a 4-4 in that game right there five apiece between Brighton and Arsenal but our featured match Ryan coming out victorious six goals to four for Manchester City yeah congratulations Manchester City you will go into that winner's side of group A as we said against Oli Leto that is going to be a very tough game. Let's have a look at the highlights from that match because I think the key thing was from it, and you're going to see this from a lot of players, you have to just keep your opponent an arm's length away. This was the perfect start for Newcastle United with Planet Toast. It was a great goal from Bruno Fernandes, but then we talk about these goals. Get in front by a goal or two and try and dominate the game. This was a really well-taken finish. It was never a level playing field. It was always that one step ahead. Two steps ahead was Ryan. Bruno Fernandes here into James, played it back into Bruno, and I want to see this goal back, I don't know if it's, I think that's a pass he's gone for across the box, quite a fortunate deflection off the goalkeeper. Planet Toast made a couple of offensive changes towards the end of this game, Sadio Mane smashing across the goalkeeper, five goals to four, but what did Ryan do? Went up the other end, and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang Thinking it over the goalkeeper to solidify his place in the next round. Yeah, and just one of those items that you said, Richard, off the bench, could be very, very deadly. And that's what you can see, those long through balls late into a game or late into a tie where you've got a lot of pace. And you said Aubameyang there. I think that was his uh, Europa League item yeah. um, that, that's been introduced. And that's the winning goal. Big win on the flip side for Newcastle. What does that mean for them in Group A? It was a loss, but it wasn't a terrible loss. There's a lot to build off of that game. You're facing a player who is very experienced. He's not going to be sort of affected by that game and, and this full sort of um, 
experience, really. He's been here before. He'll have suffered defeats before Planet Toast. So he just needs to pick himself up and move on. Yeah, that's hopefully what he can do if you are a Newcastle fan watching the Premier League. Well, we saw Manchester City win that game. I believe Ryan Pessoa is now joined by Nicole to chat about that big win. Yes, I am here with MCFC Ryan. Ryan, how are you feeling? That was yeah. stressful for me just to watch. And obviously an early goal from Planet Toast. How did you feel at that point? I, I know you're quite confident in yourself, but were you a, a bit worried? Yeah. Um, not really, no. In all honesty, I wasn't even stressed. I'm also disappointed with the way I played. I played terrible. So, mm. yeah, to get a victory when playing bad is a good thing, I guess. But, yeah, I'll take the positive. I'm through to the next next round where I play Olalito. But, yeah, I need to improve my performance. Don't be so harsh on yourself. Like you said, you are through. <laughs> you are great. Yeah. But next up, like you said, Olalito. Look, we know he is a brilliant player. What are you going to take into that game? Yeah, he's seed one for a reason. He's really good. He's been consistent over the last couple of years. So for me, like I say, if I play my game, I back myself to be anybody. But if I play like that, then yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. I just need to buck up my ideas. And yeah, as, as I said, if I prepare well mentally and in terms of like the gameplay as well, then I think I back myself to go through. And I know that you've been doing a lot of work on yourself and your mentality in the game. Talk us through that because yeah. I think you've been working on your diet, your sleep, everything, right? Yeah, everything. I'll be honest, my sleep pattern right now is a bit shaky, but everything else is, is, is still up to the standard. But yeah, mentality is a key thing in esports, like especially competing in FIFA. We know sometimes you can get annoyed and stuff, but the key is just to, to just not focus on the things that are out of your control. That's like the main thing for me. I used to have a really bad mentality with that where I'd let things get to me. Even in that game, for instance, if I played that game a year ago, I perhaps would have lost because I would have just lost my head a little bit. I wouldn't have remained focused, but... Yeah, thankfully to see and everyone behind the scenes that I've helped sword as well that's coaching me just to keep me calm, keep me cool and yeah, just make sure that my, my head's on the right level. Look, well done and good luck in the next game. Thank you. Right, there we have it. Some harsh words on himself by <laughs> MCFC uh, Ryan right there. It just shows how he he wants to be the best. He strives to be the best. And Joe, he's coming up against Oli Lito next. Mm, yeah. It's going to be a tough matchup. It's an interesting one because when we chatted to him in the preview show, he was really, really confident about progressing and getting through and he looked like the look of his group. And then just listening to him there, he seemed raging with his performance. So fingers crossed he can turn it around in his own head maybe a little bit. We can have a look at some of the other results then as well from the round one. We've got Manchester City, as we've just seen then, 6-4 winners over Newcastle United. West Brom versus West Ham is still playing five all at the moment into extra time. Manchester United lost 5-7 to Aston Villa. Uh, and then Brighton, Aston Villa, Brighton versus Arsenal, it says 5-5 there, it's actually six all, and it's still in extra time, Carl. Wow. Wow, look at that one. Goals plenty across the board. Moving into Group C, Burnley, five against Crystal Palace, only scoring one. Then Everton, yes, NFG, Jaden, 9-3 against 11 Stokes for Tottenham Hotspur right there. Then Group D, Southampton lost 7-3 to Wolverhampton Wanderers. And Leicester against Fulham, 4-4 that one right there. So that, they're still playing that one, Joe. I can't believe it. I mean, I'm already excited to watch some of those goals back. Obviously, some massive results we can already talk about there. Everton, 9-3 winners over Tottenham Hotspur Cup. I know, yeah. You look at some of the competitors, we know some of the names that we've spoken about, some of the names that we highlighted coming into this tournament. Mm. And they're really putting that first marker down. Everyone wants to be champion right here, OK? Some of the games are going to penalties uh, as well, I'm being told. I mean, this is incredible. This is the drama we wanted on day one of the E Premier League, mate. Yeah, absolutely. 7-3 as well. Sean Flossie versus Royal Funky was very, very exciting. I mean, there's so many goals. Do you think it's just because people are a little bit nervous? I think so. It's the very beginning of the of the tournament. The nerves are going to be there. They're all playing from their, their bedrooms as well. Normally, yeah. we're here at the arena. Normally, we're all playing. They've got the coach is with them as well. When it comes to this situation, when they're all at home, they've got to look within themselves. That can be nerve-wracking. That can be very, very difficult for some of these pros. So you can expect some shaky starts, but as soon as they gather that momentum, they can carry on. Plus, there's a loser's bracket. If they go down into that loser's bracket, yes, it is uh, worrying, but we can see some live scenes right now. And as you can see, we can see West Ham and West Brom and it's West from taking the penalty. It's 3-3. Three, three. Oh, he's got that 4-3. Is this one has to be scored? He steps up. Oh, he saves as well. Oh, this is the drama we all wanted. 
for West Brom right there. It was Jazz 1875 who gets that win right there. That's what we want. That's what we want. We want the penalties, Joe. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it doesn't <laughs> get more exciting than penalties at this level, does it? Very, very... I can just imagine the pressure sat in your bedroom at the moment because, you know, we were talking to some of the players, weren't we, last week, and they were saying it's actually harder to play in their bedrooms than it is to be playing in the Gfinity Arena just because, you know, they're not got the same setup, they're not got the same pre-match. It's really, it's really tough. Yeah, when you're at these um, arenas, when you're at all of these different tournaments around the world, we travel together, we all normally go together, but they're on land, so it means that actually there's no issues with connections. We all have that problem with the internet. We all have experienced that at times as well. So there's those little things that creep in, but we're doing our best to ensure that all these amazing tournaments can still go in with everything that's happening, Joe. Yeah, exactly. Right, it is time now for a quick break, but there's loads more games coming your way today, including the likes of Tex, which I know everybody in this studio is extremely excited about. We'll be back with you in just a moment. Right, who is the highest rated player at Everton according to FIFA 21? Who do you think, Mace? Hammers. It's not Hammers Rodriguez. No, not according to FIFA 21. So for I you, think, though, should it be Hammers? I think it's Lucas. Yeah, so I've got, I'll, I'll give you the stats. Hammers Rodriguez, 82. Alan, 83. Luca Dina, 84. So uh, I want to come to you first, Mason. You, you think it should be Hammers Rodriguez, do you? I just thought, because obviously you've come from Madrid and, and stuff like that, I, think, I thought he'd be quite high. First ever E Premier League. This is so big. Every single club. It's loyalty, it's passion, it's desire. Ball into the box. Kelly with a header! That's how much it means to him. He is the Xbox champion. I think it's my favourite one, to be honest. F2 Tech, what a performer. Hello and welcome to the E Premier League Invitational. <laughs> That was very sweaty. You know it's disgusting. We both know that was disgusting. And we're seeing it again, and it's a chance for Diogo. And there it is! Diogo Jota has won the tournament. Mares into Trezeguet! Oh, he's up by two! Goes back inside, Pogba gets it back, and it's a second! And now he has won! Tom, you are no longer the bridesmaid. You are now the bride. Oh. You are the EU Premier League <laughs> Finally. champion. Finally! <laughs> Who is that one player that you looked at that you tried to replicate or be like? X. You've got the free kicks, you've got the hair, you've got the eyebrows, you've got the full Beckham look going on. How did you feel in that moment? Yeah, it's everything that I ever dreamt of since I was a little boy, so it was an incredible feeling and one that we'll, we'll never forget. We now have a photo of your FIFA 21 item. But the big one for me is you've 80 physical. <laughs> Do you know anyone in your team that could be rated higher? I don't think so. Willy Bolly is in fact higher than you. I know he's higher. There are many, there are many players that are higher than me, not only in my team. I got big problems with this, man. That's, uh... What are your main concerns? You know, concerns? I don't want to be that guy that's complaining about FIFA things. I don't really care too much, but I do care well, about my... Well, you've got big problems. <laughs> but I've got big problems. I want you to identify your three favourite players in Premier League history. Ian Wright, I just lo I love him to be fair. I think he deserves a knighthood. It should be Sir Ian Wright.
Welcome back. What a start we've had here. Uh, we can have a look at some of the results actually from that round one in front of you right now. So Manchester City, 6-4 winners. We just saw Ryan Pessoa there beating Planet Toast. West Brom, 5-5 five, five against West Ham United, but West Brom did go through on penalties there. Manchester United, 5-7 losers against Aston Villa. Brighton over Albion, I think that was 6 all the last time I heard in the Arsenal game. It's all to play for in between Brighton and Arsenal. Um, uh, but there's so much more to come, isn't there, Carl? There was indeed. On that one just there, Arsenal actually beat Brighton. 7-6 oh. it was just there. So there's plenty of drama that's coming up throughout the rest of the day, so make sure you do stick around with us. There's plenty of goals, and I'm sure, Joe, we're about to uh, get plenty more penalty shootouts as well. That's where everyone's hearts are racing. That's what's super exciting, mate. Yeah, absolutely, and I'm already excited about the next game. Right, let's go straight to it, shall we, guys? Amazing stuff, no messing about here. We're ready for our next game, and we're gonna see one of the favorites for the tournament, someone who's already lifted that trophy. It is, of course, going to be Fanatics Tex, representing Liverpool, the inaugural E-Premier League champion, the first player to ever lift that trophy, but a little bit of a surprise who he's going up against now. Yeah, we're seeing Flossie come through here after a 7-3 victory. He'll be representing Wolves, taking down Southampton. Not what we would have been expecting, the lowest seed in this group, but a fantastic chance to go up against one of the best players around, or previously one of the best players around. You could say this season, Tex hasn't quite lived up to expectations. And even in the last E Premier League, he was knocked out in the Xbox final to Mark Marley. So I'm sure he'll one-up himself uh, this year. Yeah, he's certainly looking to add another trophy to his collection, which is a vast collection if you don't know about Tex then all you've got to do is hop online and look at some of the, the tournaments that he's won, the amount of trophies that he's managed to put together in the meantime. Uh, a lot of has been said about Tex this year and how he's been performing. I think we're about to see a very special Tex, though. I think he's always planned to be coming to the fore around this year, hitting his peak around this time this year. I think he's going to surprise a few people, which might sound like a strange thing to say with the reputation that he has, but I can see him going on a big run here. He has said that he wants to play in those big games. Like he wants to play at those live studio events again, and he hasn't quite felt it playing online. Unfortunately, is still playing online for this tournament. So we will see if that affects him at all, or whether wearing that Liverpool top is going to change how he plays. He did say that winning that first inaugural E Premier League was one of the best trophies he's ever lifted because he played for Liverpool. Well, he's got the Liverpool shirt on, and I'm sure he's got it on at home as well. We know how much it means to Tex, his beloved Liverpool. I always joke that if you follow Tex on Twitter, you're going to hear more about Liverpool's performances than you are from his own FIFA ones. But we are underway here. This game coming in from Group D. And for Flossie, you have to say, this is a real opportunity for him to step up, not only as a player, but raise his stock in the FIFA world down. It was quite the journey for Flossie as well, just to get here through those Wolves playoffs. In his first game, he lost 6-0 and dropped into that lower bracket and then came all the way through the playoffs to actually beat the same player he lost to 6-0, 7-4, to get here today to represent Wolves. So it was quite a journey, but he has shown that he has incredible fight back. We're going to have to see what happens from this corner then. Tex is going to whip this one, and he's looking for the head of Virgil van Dijk, the Liverpool man. Trying to provide the magical touch there to give the Liverpool player the lead. Human Sun now goes back to van Dijk, who's just retreating from that corner. But good news for Flossies, he's managed to hold off that first little barrage on his goal against Tex. And when you're playing against a player with that kind of reputation, always important just to be solid in those first few moments down. It is indeed. You can't allow them to get ahead and gain that confidence. And Sean Flossie has definitely shown defensively he can keep up with Tex at the moment, but going forward hasn't been able to break down that back line that Tex has to offer. It was a somewhat comfortable journey for Tex throughout the Liverpool stages. He didn't really have too much of a threat and it was expected that he would represent this club. Well, it's going to be Sean Flossie here who might have the first opportunity. I've been really impressed with the technical ability I've seen from him. We've seen Croquettas, we've seen Elasticos, and we've seen Cancels. So all of the mechanics are here, Dan, and I'm sure that Texas had to pay attention very early on here and realise that he's in for a heck of a game. Yeah, well, you're not really going to get to this point of the E-Premier League without having the ability to kind of pull out the shot Cancels, know what the meta tactics are. That's going to be offside. But Tex certainly has demonstrated in the early stages that he can go forward, but he will have re suddenly realised that Sean Flossie is a player who also knows how to attack. 
it's very scary when you're going up against someone who in the box has that technical ability, can just twist and turn on a dime because it's very difficult to keep up with. I'm just looking across the teams as well and the player selection always interests me. Quite a strong Liverpool theme, actually, to Texas lineup. You've got Sadio Mane on that right-hand side. Virgil van Dijk, team of the year in its centre-back. And he's got team of the year Alexander-Arnold as well as, I believe, Curtis Jones in the middle. So four Liverpool players for the Liverpool fan representing Liverpool. And here is one of them now, Sadio Mane, trying to use that pace here on the right-hand side. Goes back inside now to Curtis Jones, De Bruyne. Looking for that ball into the striker. There is Xiong Min Sun. Trying to stop up. Looking for the cricketer, but well defended by the Wolves man. Yeah, Tex just testing out a few things here. Seeing if he can maybe break through with a, a cheeky cricketer. Probably going to have to dive a little bit further into his arsenal of skills, though, to break down Sean Flossie. It's not going to be a comfortable game for him from what we've seen in these early stages. But a goal can change everything. And it's really going to be how both of these players react to that first goal. If Tex does take the lead, is he going to suddenly have a surge and go for goal after goal? Or will Sean Flossie struggle? Mane has threw on goal here and Pope has to make a save. But a little bit of delay on the offside call. But it does come through eventually as the referee has to get involved again and make yet another decision. As Tex trying to be aggressive in defence, as we know he loves to do. He does. He's always been one of those players who will bring those fullbacks aggressively to try and win the ball back in dangerous areas so that he doesn't have to go up against a wall of defence. Instead, tries to take advantage of any space that is created and left by maybe some aggression from his opposition side. And Well, possession-wise, Texas had the majority of this game. As you can see in Group C, Tottenham have just taken the lead against Crystal Palace as well. So goals going in in other games, and I'll keep you up to date when I see them. Well, well, but there by Tex, but given away a little bit carelessly as De Bruyne tried to fire it out wide. Saka goes back inside here to De Bruyne, who does likewise on the Wolves side of things now for Sean Flossie. And this is where Tex is so dangerous. You see that Mane's trying to burst in behind and spin away from his man. He's managed to do so here. Now, what's he got up the sleeve? Not enough to get past Carl Walker. For Titan, I know you are a huge advocate of as Van Dijk goes for that head up and can't win it initially. Yeah, any sort of centre-back that has enough pace to keep up with these strikers are very important. And Kyle Walker, his price just went up and up in the FIFA market ever since he was released. And that inform has been ever present in a lot of teams in professional FIFA. As a reminder, this is of course a group game, but the winner of this does progress to the quarterfinals. Well, this is beautiful stuff here from Sean Flossie. Rashford getting a little bit of space in... I love the idea behind that as well, just trying to feed the ball back into Marcus Rashford. But I think one thing that Sean Flossie can take a lot of confidence from early on here, Dan, is the 1v1 scenarios. He seems to be winning more than 50% of them, which is going to give him a lot of confidence in the attacking third. I mean, looking at the results that he had during the Wolves playoffs, he had plenty of goals, winning 8-0, 9-2, 7-4. However, there were occasions where he did concede a lot. He conceded six goals in his first, four in his fourth game, four in his fifth game. So I want to see him be able to actually penetrate Texas' defence, get that lead, and then just try and hold on to it a little bit, just try and keep himself level-headed and not allow Tex back into the game. Well, it's a 4v3 situation here for Sean Flossie, the Wolves man inside the box, and it's the Wolves player, Adama Traore, breaking from fullback, trying to create and be the catalyst for... Maybe the first goal to break the deadlock here, but you have to say Tex defended that incredibly well considering he was a man down now at the other end. Can Tex take advantage of an almost similar situation? Recycles the play back inside. Rashford into the feet of Bruno Fernandes. Jungmin Sun now going to strike and finds the back of the net as well. First strike on goal for Tex. And it's Jungmin Sun who breaks the deadlock. Just off with him a little bit too much space there on the edge of the box, and you're going to take that with Son. Having the five-star weak foot, very important indeed. Keeper just not able to stretch close enough to it, and that is a fantastic goal for Tex to open things up with. Sean Flossie not happy, you can see in his camera, a couple of head shakes here or there. Just has to stay calm, though. Plenty of time left in this tie. Of course, this is only the first leg. It is going to be a two-legged affair. And he's only a goal down against one of the best players in the world. An instant response would be perfect for him, but Adama Traore is going to stop that idea before it becomes... Any more than that. And for Tex, not the goal you usually expect seeing from him. A little finesse from around the edge of the box. 
such an effective way to break down defenses now when you have those high shooting statistics. And now you're going to see Son, the goal scorer, trying to get through again. Fernandez has to battle back and does so well. And whilst, yes, OK, it's not the typical goal you'd see Tech score, it was all that was he was presented with. We've seen good defending from Flossie. He's been uh, kind of tracking the players' runs well, so we haven't seen many successful through balls. He's been jockeying successfully, keeping an eye on Tex with those skill moves. But as soon as Tex saw some space, he said, all right, well, well why shouldn't I hit it? Let's have a go at it. And Sonny tucks it away, and that's a, a fantastic lead for Tex in this first half. It has been a really good uh, examples of some technical ability coming in from Flossie as well. But well, before we talk about that, we'll have a quick look back on this goal. And like you were saying, it was more, you know, the chance presented itself. You could see the angle for the strike, and... That headliner Son's got some fantastic statistics when it comes to finishing and long shots and shot power as well. He really is a good player to have in that position. He is indeed. Uh, we were wondering like who is going to be playing in those striker roles for the E Premier League because you don't have your typical icons that we see at the top in competitive FIFA like your R9 or Pele, for example. Maybe it's going to be Sean Flossie here who can answer back right at the start of the second half. Only one goal between the two players. And just going back to the point I was making, technically, Sean Flossie has looked really, really good. He can show that he's got a real showcase of all of the, the mechanical ability you need to be having at your disposal as a top-level FIFA player these days. But for all of that, still not had a real clear-cut shot on goal. And to be fair to Tex, that was his real only opportunity of the first leg, but clinical when it came. And you can see that Sean Flossie has been trying to track these runs, but this one does get in behind, but the assistant will raise his flag. But one thing that Tex has done to try and counteract that is utilising the RB button, the LB button, to send players on runs and then bringing those players back, almost stopping that run, going for a little bit of a fake, hoping that Sean is going to actually track the run, and then it offers space naturally for Tex to run into. Well, here is Mane. Now Kevin De Bruyne. patrolling the midfield at the moment. Tex looking for that opening to move forward defensively. Sean Flossy doing a good job, just player switching, trying to read when those passes will be coming in. And Marcus Rashford is a player that I'm sure Tex is going to look to for the little bit of inspiration with those five-star skills. There's a little directional nutmeg. There's a croquetta cancel from him as well. Unfortunately for him, the list goes on a skill moves, but it's joined by the... Offside flag coming in from the linesman. Crystal Palace now 2-1 up against Tottenham, so plenty of goals just flying in. In games elsewhere, of course, some very important matchups at the moment. A chance for the quarterfinals for those who are still in this winner's bracket. That's a great through ball. That's a big mistake, though, coming in from Sean Flossie. He tried to play the offside trap. It has cost him dearly. Son will get his second in the game. But it was the patience from Tex just waiting and waiting to see if he can find the ball through. Sean Flossie trying to pressure by using that offside trap, put that defensive line up, but it just left so much space in behind. And Tech said, thank you very much. Yeah, the driven cross, as soon as it gets into that position and you've got a player like Son on the end of it, you're not going to miss. I've even seen the likes of Curtis Jones marauding from the midfield into that kind of scenario and putting them away on the volley. But now this is more of a commanding lead for Tex. A two-goal advantage. Possession has been firmly at his players' feet. And Sean Flossie needs to respond to. He needs to respond, but maybe this is the opportunity to do so. Maybe just a little bit overzealous there to get that ball inside. You could see the idea, but kind of just telegraphed it a little bit early down. You could see by his reaction as well. He knew that it was a little mistake and he could have done somewhat better, but it's very easy to get in your own head when you're going up against a player like Tex. Here's Rashford then. And Dyke will... Do a good job to stop Tex before he got into full flow there. And that's one thing you will see when Tex does start to get into the lead. He will start showing a little bit more confidence, a little bit more swag, if you like, when he gets on the ball. But there's a little mistake from Tex. And now Bakayo Saka tries to feed it across again. Bergwijn will pick the pieces up now. Alexander-Arnold will do well. But one thing you have to take away here is that the pressure has been upped here by Sean Flossie. St. Maximin now with the opportunity. Troyore makes the block and... The pressure being adjusted here, team press being engaged. Tex is struggling to get out a little bit. Struggling to get out, but most importantly, hasn't conceded. Is hanging on, is just keeping Sean Flossie at bay here and just barricading that door. Awesome, Maximum, beautiful reverse Elastico from him. There's a regular Elastico, but Nick Pope in goal is going to be equal to it. Maybe if you had the likes of 
A five-star weak footed Son taking that strike. Might have been a different result. Only the four-star, unfortunately, on set maximum. However, of course, Son doesn't have the five-star skills to create that chance. Speaking of Son. It's back to Alexander-Arnold now. Jones now into the feet of Bruno Fernandes. Might be fed back here. Mane's going to let this one roll. Yeah, good chance there from Tex. And maybe just let it roll a little bit too far. And Sean Flossie is very much retreating and hoping to win the ball back defensively, but Tex is not allowing any sort of easy pass here. Fernandes inside the box. Decides to recycle. Ten minutes left until the end of this first leg. Tex with the two-goal advantage, and there's a ball in behind again. You can see he's recognised that Wolves is Sean Flossie. He's trying to employ that offside trap more and more, and he's just trying to time that ball as soon as he sees those defenders step out. We also know how good those through balls can be, and there is a through ball all the way from the goalkeeper. And perhaps an opportunity here for Sean. St. Maximin, Saka was available in the middle. Needs to make something from this opportunity. Not too much time left in this first leg. Alexander-Arnold steps in again. And when I say you can get nervous and you can get in your own head when you play against someone like Tex, is you know that every chance that you have, if you miss it, he can go down the other end and he can score straight away. And it makes you extremely nervous defensively that any sort of mistake he's going to capitalise on. But I would say that 2-0 in the first leg isn't too much of a damaging scoreline for Sean Flossie. He's shown me enough that he can get behind Texas' defence, he can get those shots away. That sent maximum chance was fantastic. And as you say, with maybe a striker who wasn't on the weak foot, perhaps you'd be able to see a goal go in. But we can look at goals elsewhere, Mark. And this matchup I was really interested in. Oli Lito versus Man City's Ryan. And Leeds United fans wow. rejoice. Four goals to nil in favour of Leeds. Such an interesting result, that one as well. If you're wondering how good Oli Lito has been, and if you're a Leeds fan and you're thinking, how good is our player? Perfect example there, because beforehand, Ryan was saying, I don't mind playing Oli Lito. I've got a pretty good record against Oli Lito. Well, Oli Lito is that kind of elite level player in the world. And that result speaks in us for itself. Now, back onto this game, and you can see a few changes going to be made. I believe that Riyad Mahrez was brought on for Tex and Son, the goal scorer. Of both, both goals, excuse me, here for Tex. has been brought on on the other side of things for Wolves. And here is Alexander-Arnold now, marauding forward from right back, just waiting for that run inside of Mane. Instead, going to use the drag back just to go back inside. Only a few moments left here, Dan, just waiting for that last attack. Yeah, and you would imagine that that's going to be Leeds United and Olilito through to those quarterfinals. But I have seen crazier comebacks, so don't be too worried if you are a Man City fan just yet. Fernandez tries to poke that ball back inside. Bergwijn has to get back and do some defensive work, and it will go out for a goal kick here. And with time up, you would expect the referee to bring this first leg to a close. Ball goes out of play, and it will be Liverpool and Fnatic Tex with the two-goal advantage. And you have to say that was a clinical performance from him. It was. It's not necessarily the crazy high-scoring game that we've seen from Tex. We didn't see loads of flashy skill moves. The goals weren't like beautifully uh, there wasn't loads of technique behind it it was a lot of just crosses and whatnot it was just through balls it was very successful and meta goals as we can look back at those goals the first one just an opportunity that was offered by Sean Flossie that Tex took full advantage of and then a slight mistake with an offside trap being played the through ball successfully finding Rashford on the left hand side and then this is one of the easiest goals you'll see in FIFA just a simple cross to the player running onto the ball, and then it's a nice and easy finish. We'll say pretty good finish there from Hugh Minson uh, there on the uh, on the left foot to get it across goal. Uh, terrific stuff from him. So Tex looking extremely strong, as you would expect. Two goals to the good. Let's see what Joe has to say about that. Yeah, great performance opening us up there for Tex. What do you make for Carl? He's a player that we all know. He's won this competition before, and we know that he wants to do Liverpool proud. Liverpool aren't doing too well in the Premier League, let's be honest, all right? <laughs> so can Tex actually... Can he manage to do it in the E Premier League? I'm sure we will find out. The second leg of that match will be coming up very, very shortly. Make sure you stick around with us. Yes, Sean Flossie of Wolves taking on Fnatic Tex of Liverpool. See you in a minute.
Good result there. The final whistle in North London. Harry Kane steps up yet again for Tottenham. Big points in the bag. What are your Great game, Harry. Cheers, mate. Such a clinical finish from a top class striker. I was probably about six when I first experienced racism. And I think at that age, it's, you know, the, the person that's being racist towards you probably doesn't quite understand what, what it really means or, or what they're actually saying. And the lad that it was actually became one of my best friends um, throughout school. And it was just a prime example of, you know, um, not being educated at that point and I probably went home to my mum, you know, and, and told her and, and told my dad. And I think they always said to me, you know, just be, be comfortable in your own skin and always love yourself and no matter what you look like. And that was my first experience. I have, yeah. And it's more so where I've kind of seen it is like in your Instagram direct messages or whatever from, you know, the, the make accounts or whatever. If you Know, some players have reported it now and it's nice to know that you know if you do report it something's going to happen because I feel like in the past it's been too easy to kind of think oh well I have to deal with this it's part and parcel which it is not so you know people are getting punished now speak to whoever you need to speak to whether that be your family members or your friends and, and voice your opinion because don't don't give the person the satisfaction of affecting your happiness at the end of the day and no one should have that right and I would say that, you know, block them, report it, and tell an adult. I can, yeah, I've experienced it where someone close to me has experienced racist abuse, and at the time you, you feel infuriated and, and angry. It's, um, it's tough to deal with at the time, in the, in the heat of the moment, but I would always say don't react, and don't react in, in anger, and, and then go on and, and tell somebody. Listen to what they have to say and and just if you're a friend or a teammate, just be there. Be there for that person and you know. Hey, mate. I mean, let's not talk about Manchester United <laughs> right now. I, do you know who I want to focus on? Olito. Because we talked him up in the pre-match, didn't we? And you know, we saw Ryan potentially saying that previewing it, he was saying, I'm quite confident in this group, but I'm not playing that well today after his first game. And he's 4 0 down against Olilito after the first leg. That's a huge start for Olilito. It is indeed. And I feel like with that game, it is in the winner's bracket. So we can see what happens with that one. But we can get into our second leg. Yes, Fnatic Tech taking on Sean Flossy. Liverpool taking on Wolves. Let's see what happens. Mark and Dan, it's over to you guys. Thank you very much, Kyle. And yes, yeah, second leg, it's time to get that underway. 2-0 the difference, like you quite rightly pointed out. And uh, Tex looking, one thing for me, he was looking incredibly solid in all assets of the game. Sometimes we're talking about Tex, we're always like, ah, oh, he's full of flair, he's full of magic, he's full of these magical moments, right? But I feel like defensively and with his possession, he was very, very smart with how he approached that game. He looked like a very focused Tex. He didn't want to make the mis mistakes. He didn't want to go a goal down. He didn't want to concede an ugly goal so that would maybe frustrate him or give his opponent a little bit of confidence because as soon as you see any sort of weakness in your opponent naturally and Sean Flossie will be looking at that saying right if I score a goal against Tex I can score more but the fact that Tex did hold on especially when Sean was pressing quite considerably there was just so many players flooding forward Tex couldn't get out of his box but he was able to defend well he was covering all those runs he was jockeying incredibly and he just didn't concede and I think that was extremely important if we had seen Tex concede that goal maybe this would be a different scoreline going into the second leg but he still hasn't conceded a goal still has a two goal lead yeah, I'd have to agree with you there I think it's one of those things as well if Sean Flossie for Wolves gets that early goal or at least you know finds the back of the net all of a sudden he's a 20 a lot of sighing there's a lot of frustration whereas for Tex it's kind of just another day in the office it's laser focus from Tex. It's what we expect as we can see the second leg is now underway and it's up for Sean Flossie, the Wolves man, to turn this two-goal deficit around. And I just wonder if there's going to be any changes in formation early on here. If he's thought that from how that first leg went, if there's something that he could change in that tactic screen to really try and put the pressure on early on to Tex, the only thing that's going to be pressured early, though, is the Wolves player as he goes down. And it will be a free kick here to Sean. And if Sean can get the first goal in this second leg, I will have that belief that maybe he could actually make a really, really good game of this one. But at first, he's going to need to create those chances. He's going to 
have to get past the defense of Tex. And I feel like Tex would have to make some sort of mistake at the moment. Even though there have been moments of promise from Sean, ultimately Tex has been very solid at the back. He hasn't really offered up much opportunity for Flossie to have any creation in the final third. I think one thing that has really stood out to me here is uh, Tex's player choice and his lineups as well. Some of the foot items he's got in there. He's only got one player who's got the five-star skills, which for me... You look at Tex, if he could, he'd have 11. He'd rather his centre-backs not be, you know, <laughs> maybe the most uh, defensively minded players, but just have some fun with them. Of course, he's going to go for the most defensive minded player, but he loves those five-star skills. As we're actually going to see an opportunity here and a five-star skill from Rashford to reverse Elastico almost break through. But I think that just shows a lot of what Tex believes is important in this game of FIFA. And one of the most important things, pace. You need pace to break down your opponent's defense. You need pace to catch up with your opponent's offense. And he thinks that those through balls are going to be successful and that four-star skills is enough. You saw that he's trying to go for those elastico cancels quite often. The directional nutmeg, of course, you don't need a five-star skill or two to go for that skill move either. So there is a lot for Tex to use to try and break down that back line. You can see Tex with one of the five-star skillers on the ball there. And you spoke about directional nutmegs. There is that burst of acceleration you get. And there is... A little scoop from him as well, but unfortunately it isn't going to create too much. And already into the pause menu here, so already potentially a little bit of a change in the tactics coming in from Wolves' player, Sean Flossie. But uh, one thing that's interesting as well, the 4 2 3 one Dan, has not been a, a formation. It was obviously incredibly, it was the only formation for the last couple of years for a lot of players. But this year we've seen 4 4 2 we've seen the 5 3 2 the 4 2 3 one kind of fallen out of favour, but Tex bringing it back into fashion. And there was a pattern in those formations you were starting to name is that it was two strikers having the ability to kind of ping pong off one another those quick passes maybe playing a triangle with the central attacking midfielder as well and then going for those penetrating through balls they're just so deadly but if you have played 4-2-3-1 for pretty much two years straight you know where those players are going to be Tex is very comfortable with this formation and defensively having those two CDMs is extremely important in trying to defend against those two strikers that are going to be pushing on you and also a very good tactic at going up against the five-back, which has been one of the newer formations in competitive FIFA. Well, here's Son, the striker, dropping deep here for Tex. Adama Traore, he's got pace to burn. He's quick, he's strong, and he's found a wonderful pass inside here to Son. It's almost a little bit of fortune going his way, but it will be a strong tackle inside the 18-yard box there for Sean Flossy. Now the chance to go forward. 20 minutes gone in this one, Dan. Still only two goals the advantage here for Tex, and you get one back here, and Wolves fans can start to believe a little bit. Yeah, I think that if this was FIFA 20, FIFA 19 at 2 0, I'd be maybe even writing off Sean Flossie. Not FIFA Bruno 21. Fernandez gets inside the box, charge for Rashford, and there is the goal for the Wolves man. And it is Marcus Rashford who halves the deficit. But not FIFA 21. Anything can happen, and it can happen very quickly in this game. And suddenly, we have a match on our hands, and Tex, that little seed of doubt planted in his mind of, well, what happens now if I concede another? He's going to have to go forward. He's going to have to look for more goals, because a one-goal lead is not going to be enough, considering how much time there is left in this second leg. Because as soon as this gets to the second half, and even if it is still just a one-goal deficit, that's when Sean Flossie and Wolves can start to really what team press. Oh, that is, though, and Sadio Mane has just got the goalkeeper to beat here, and he does so. And it was only for a moment that Sean Flossie had managed to get himself within striking distance of Tex, and then straight up the other end, one of those three balls. Sadio Mane makes no mistake, drills it in at the near post. Surprise he's gone in, to be honest. I thought maybe he would go across goal. Did see a subtle amount of goalkeeper movement from Sean Flossie, which probably allowed Tex to make that decision of just sticking to his guns and going near post. But a massive, massive response from Tex just to say, all right, well, I'm going to keep this two-goal cushion. I'm not going to allow you to get back into this game. It's a real statement, and that's going to be frustrating for sure. Well, here comes the Wolves man again. De Bruyne has managed to feed Bakayo Saka. The Arsenal man now inside the box, and Pope had to be quick off his line there because the Croquetta cancel would go him the wrong side of the defender. Speaking of getting the wrong side of the defender, you can see Marcus Rashford almost doing so there, but Tex valuing possession of the ball more than releasing him first time. Good De Jong turn there from 
Rashford inside the box as well. Son's going to beat the goalkeeper. Takes with a massive opportunity and a bit unorthodox there from Pope. It does get the job done at least. That's one of the reasons why Pope is going to be the featured goalkeeper for the majority of teams. He has the save with leg trait. He's going to get down onto the floor and he's going to wave those legs in front of everything. And he does often make some big, big saves. Alexander Arnold trying to turn back inside. Just incredible pressure high up the pitch, like you expect a lot of the time from Tex. It will be a free kick and a chance to go forward here. Around 10 minutes till half time in this second leg. Just a reminder, it is an aggregate score. And we'll decide who will go through into the quarterfinals as Saka. Looks to whip one in there towards the back post. An important touch there and good control from Alexander-Arnold because that was dangerous. Yeah, you do see them just sneak past that back defender sometimes and allow the oncoming striker to nod one in. And that's a through ball attempt from Tex again. He is just trying to catch Sean Flossie off guard here. Well, look at the pressure. And now Bruno Fernandes one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. And again, Tex makes absolutely no mistake. Perfect timing on the through ball. A little ball roll before the finish as well to create the angle. And now there's daylight between the two. Three goals just might be too much for Sean Flossie. And it was a slight mistake in giving the ball away at the back, allowing Tex to have another go at that through ball. And notice how Tex is utilising that striker drop back every time he's defending, making sure he's got enough men to come back and try and win the ball back before he then presses and looks for another goal. And this, I wonder, is when we're going to see how Tex is going to approach this tournament. Is he going to try and put on a little bit of a show now that he has a little bit of distance between his opponent? Or are we going to see a very sensible, a very professional Tex who is just going to close this game out? I think Tex feels that he's got a point to prove. I think we're going to see, like you mentioned, a very professional performance through this tournament from Tex. So now slides this ball down the line again. Maybe a chance just before half time in the second leg for another goal here for Tex. Here's Bruno Fernandez gets that ball inside. Van Dijk has to do well. Will we be, will be put out of play here to bring this half to a close. But perfect half there for Tex. A little bit of hope there for Sean Flossie getting that goal back. But again, he's just looking so professional with everything he's doing at the moment. Yeah, that goal almost just woke Tex up a little bit as well. He was the first time we'd seen like a reaction from Tex, just shaking his head when that happened. Uh, but we can look at some goals elsewhere between Brighton and Man United. A series about FIFA Dragon against bundled Luka. And the opening goal Oof. going towards Luka here, Mark. Yeah, beautiful goal as well. You saw the scoop turn, directional nutmeg, all of those good things. And then we're going to see another one going in. You can see the score as well. and. Lots of goals on display here, and if you're a Brighton fan, you're going to be supporting Bundled Luka right now because he's looking extremely good. Yeah, we've just had a goal back as well off screen, so it's 5-3 on aggregate in favour of Brighton. So still some life in there for Dragon just yet, so don't worry too much if you are a Manchester United fan. But back to Tex and what he was able to achieve in that first half of the second leg. It was a professional performance. There was that slight mishap and a little moment where he allowed Sean Flossie, of course, to get through and get that goal. But it was the instant response for me. It was the ability for for Tex just to put that goal behind him, go straight up the other side of the pitch and take the lead. And straight at the start of the second half of this second leg as well, he's almost in behind with Sadio Mane once more, really utilising the pace the Liverpool man can offer. And again, just a measured approach. And you can see how comfortable Tex is looking in this formation as well. Like you mentioned earlier, he's played it for so long. He's had so much success over the years with it. He just knows all of the patterns of play that he wants to execute. Yeah, whilst every iteration of FIFA is different, there, of course, are going to be similarities, especially when it comes to the formation and where players are, what runs they're going to be making, how you can control it using that RB and LB button to send runs to bring players close. And Tex is just able to control possession so successfully. Well, Mane somehow got the better of Traore and tried to feed that ball into Bruno Fernandes, who is going to be the focal point of a lot of things good that happen for Tex in this E Premier League run, playing him in at that cam position. It was a question that I was thinking before the tournament got underway, who are going to be those attacking options like we mentioned? The Premier League obviously blessed with some of the best strikers in the world, but in FIFA, maybe not represented that way. But Bruno Fernandes is one of those players, you saw the statistics from him as we see Fernandes now in on goal. Almost managed to get the chance to Maximin. It's wonderful there from Sean Flossy to have that composure. And there is one of those forward players finding a magic touch. 
It's a great goal. And it sent Maxim in to maybe just breathe a little bit of life here for Wolves. It's certainly a difficult hill to climb still. But I wonder whether that will just give Sean Flossie the belief of, all right, well, I do still have time. Still got 30 minutes in. Maybe a pause soon just to, you know, up the ante a little bit, get some fresh legs on the pitch, add a little bit of pressure to the mix as well. And we did see how the team press affected that first leg as well when it was switched on by Sean Flossie. And really did do a good job of winning the ball back in some very dangerous positions to defend for Tex. And now all of a sudden, look at that belief that it's put into the hands of Sean Flossie, the Wolves man, all of a sudden. He's finding a little bit more space. He's finding a little bit more success of his passes. And St. Maximin has now found the ball inside. And Rashford, oh, oh, he puts it wide. What an opportunity that was just to bring Flossie right back into this game. And Tex quite rightly just taking a little bit of a breather. He knows if that had gone in, things start to get a little bit more dangerous and his comfortable lead would have been ripped away from him. In just a few minutes with back-to-back -back goals, but Sean Flossie, creating the dangerous chances, is still in this tie. It's so well to create it as well. Beautiful work from Sir Maximin. And unfortunately, the only thing missing from that move was the finish from Marcus Rashford. And to be honest, I'm surprised to see him not at least test the goalkeeper. It was on his stronger side on that right foot. And that's in the pass now. Sean Flossie's got to be careful. He doesn't concede up the other end. Beautiful dribbling from Sadio Mane to keep that ball close to his feet. But what a tackle that is from Fernandez. Alexander Arnold just about rescues Tex there. 20 minutes and Tex just needs to really frustrate Sean Flossie at this point. Restrict those chances. Hold on to possession as he is. Make Sean come to him. He can hold on to the ball in this area of the pitch all day long if he needs to. And Sean, who has to press and win that ball back and try and create some chances. And here's Curtis Jones. Kevin De Bruyne. Again, just holding on to possession here, Tex. Just waiting for the press to come in for the mistake that he can capitalise on. Maybe that is it. Mane away from Troyore. Only momentarily, though, the pace and the strength of Troyore. Good enough to get back into position to defend that. Well, 15 minutes left, and it is going to be the tactic screen for both players. Of course, we get to see at the moment what Tex is changing, but I'm sure for Sean Flossie, it's going to be a case of really pressing everyone up the pitch now, getting a slightly more attacking formation, apply pressure where he can, utilise team press in the areas where possible, and see if he can just snatch one back so that he can give himself that last-ditch chance of getting back into the game. Yeah, change of formation coming in from Tex as well. He is going to go to the 5-3-2. And with the players he's got on the pitch as well, it's going to be uh, an option to use the likes of Fernandez in a slightly more defensive role, maybe. I mean, he, he works anywhere in the pitch, really. Bruno Fernandez. He's one of those players who just everywhere can do what you want to do as we can look at goals elsewhere, Mark. Yeah, we've got a goal coming in from the Chelsea-Burnley game, and it is going to be Chelsea on the tack here. What a strike that is from Diogo from outside the box. It's going to be that man that we're going to be saying his name a lot of over the next few days. It is, of course, Bruno Fernandes. We're going to be seeing a lot of goals from him. We're going to see a lot of important plays from him as well. And that was the reason why we featured him as one of our player picks in the early stages alongside the likes of Rhys James. And, of course, Rashford has been a dominant force in the striker position. We need to see a goal soon from Sean Flossie to give him and give Wolves fans belief that he can get back into this. If he does lose, he drops into the lower bracket, so it's not the end of the world. And for Tex, it gets him that one step closer to those quarterfinals. Tony Fernandez then looking for that ball out wide, and Alexander-Arnold had to be very, very careful there with that touch. Tex did it exceptionally well. And look at this running behind now. Sean Flossie being forced to go forward, and that's leaving space here for the Liverpool man, Curtis Jones, to find another goal here for Liverpool. The youngster, the future star, doing it for the star that's on the sticks. And that should surely be enough to wrap up this game. Send Sean Flossie down into that lower bracket, send Tex into the next round of this group, where, where he will have the chance to go on to those quarters, and... It's been a good effort from Sean Flossie. He has shown moments of promise, especially when you do consider he is the lowest seeded Xbox player in this tournament going up against Tex, who is one of our higher seeds. 
And it's about what Sean can take away from this, what he can improve on in that lower bracket to still give him a chance of getting through this group. And there you can see Tex making some strong tackles. He knows that all he has to do is just hold the ball and find some beautiful balls over the top as well to Mane. Chance at the back post if he could have found him. I think that was the idea there from Tex. As you saw, Rashford breaking in ahead of his man. And Curtis Jones, who was the goal scorer just a few moments ago, has to do some defensive work now. That's enough to win the ball back here. And just a few moments left to go. As you're going to see Tex now play Son through on goal. He's got runners as well. Son might take this on his own. Goes for the close dribbling, but maybe caught in two minds there. And I think we are seeing a very professional performance from Tex here. A, a Tex that wants to win, wants to prove himself this year. Fernandez looking for another to add to his tally. Tries to walk around the goalkeeper and Adama Traore. Traore will manage to get a touch on it, but there's only one thing stopping that header from Van Dijk. And that is the crossbar as the final whistle does go. And Liverpool's Tex will win this game Fairly convincingly, you have to say, but the Wolves man put up a pretty good fight. Uh, a great fight from Sean Flossy, but it's a fantastic performance from Tex. One that I think I wanted to see, fans wanted to see, and everyone in FIFA Esports wanted to see. It is the dominant Tex that we know and love. And I wonder, I just wonder how far he can go, whether we can see him lift a trophy again or whether he would fall short like he did last year. We can look back at some of the goals, Mark, and I mean, Sean Flossie at this point was probably thinking, OK, I'm back into this one. Yeah, for a few seconds, and then this long through ball straight up the line. Sadio Mane, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. A finish in at that near post from that foot freeze item as well. And then you could just see the pressure from Tex here. It's such a, a feature of his game, Dan. It is. He's always been a player who will not allow his opponent to kind of rest in midfield or dominate possession, play the ball around. Instead, he wants to win it back in those dangerous areas. But then there was this goal, and Sean Flossy again was probably thinking, OK, maybe I'm back into it, but Tex did not allow Sean Flossy to rest again and was able to get through on goal with Curtis Jones. And there's something always poetic about when Liverpool are represented by Tex. Something always happens, and you just see the last goal. Of course, it's going to be scored by the future star, Curtis Jones, the Liverpool man running through on goal. It just writes itself sometimes for him, doesn't it? It does, and Tex, you know when he scores with a Liverpool player, it just means that little bit extra to him. Of course, there is a lot of money on the line in this tournament as well, but in the first ever E Premier League, when he lifted that trophy, he said wearing the Liverpool shirt and lifting that trophy was so much to him, and I'm sure he'd love to do it again this year. And we'll have to find out if he can do it this year, but first, we're going to actually hear from Tex as he's going to be talking to the Yes, I am here with Fnatic Tex. Tex, how are you feeling right now? I mean, that seemed pretty comfortable, I think it's quite fair to say. Um, relieved, to be honest, because <laughs> um, I've got a lot more to give. I didn't. I played, like, OK, uh, but I've got a lot more to give in the attack in the sense. I think I, I think I defended quite well, but I went up early, and then at one point in the second leg, it was two goals, he missed the chance, and then I scored to make it a three-goal cushion. But, yeah, a very good player, GG's to him. Hey, you did well. Don't undersell yourself. I know that you can get a bit nervous before games. What do you do to kind of calm that down? Do you have any pre-match rituals? Um, nah, just be nervous and you've got to deal with it, to be honest. <laughs> There's nothing you can do to calm yourself down. You sit there a bit nervous. I wasn't too nervous, but yeah. um, when he got it quite close and I started the game, like a crazy player, um, a very good, I, I was like, ah, oh, wait, I'm in a game here. And um, that's when I got nervous. But I play better when I'm nervous, luckily, so. Were you quite surprised then at Sean Flossie? Because he did do well, didn't he? <laughs> um, to be honest, yeah, because I never really underestimate anyone. But you sit there and you just, like, uh, I, like, I expect a lot from myself. And I, I went into the game and I was a bit stiff, weren't moving all that nice. Um, but, yeah, I managed to get, get the W, so on to the next one. And you won the first E Premier League back in 2019. Does it add a bit more pressure? Does it make you more determined to get that trophy this year? Um, no, it makes me less determined, to be honest. But I'm still like, want to win. But it brings down the determination a little bit. It doesn't increase anything. Because you're like, been there, done that, it's fine. Yeah, I've been uh, there, done that. <laughs> you want to do it again, of course. And I know that you are a big big Liverpool fan, obviously representing them again. That must make you really proud, surely? Yeah, nah, as you can see, um, when I represent Liverpool, I don't. I hate losing, innit, because um, 
I hate losing anyway, but losing for Liverpool, I, I can't allow myself, especially if I play a rival club or something, because really, my dad will my dad will get onto me. <laughs> and you know, no one no one needs that. Thank you so much and good luck in the next game. Thank Over you. to Richard and Brandon now. Thank you very much, Nicole. And yes, we are going to be focused on one of the games that took place in that last round. It came from Group A in the winners' match. I mean, it's their first year in the Premier League, Richard. Leeds United, they picked up a very decent Xbox player in Oli Leeds. So this is the first time I've let you loose on this screen, Richard. So <laughs> good luck. Um, and take us through what happened in that game against Ryan Pessar of Manchester City. OK, so this is the first goal of this game. And we're going to play a little game. Even though we're playing FIFA, we're going to play a game of what happens next, OK? So <laughs> the clip rolls on. And the ball just rolls into Marcus Rashford here. You've got a couple of options. You can either go in this area with a little pass. It could play and that, that ball in. Or it could just do what he decides to do and think, you know what? I'm Marcus Rashford. I'm just going to absolutely bang it. And I think that sort of also shows the confidence that Olito's playing with. Not many people will actually shoot in that area right there. Uh, just going on to game three here. No, we're not. We'll go on to game six instead. Well, just a quick, just a quick point about Olito. As you said, he came into this tournament as the highest ranked player on the Xbox. He's the man that everybody's talking about at the moment. This goal came in the second leg, Richard. This was Ryan's sort of comeback. It was a weird game. Olito won the first game four goals to nil. Then the second leg, Ryan Pessoa did win that match two nil, didn't he? Yeah, hundred percent. And the big thing, this through ball that gets played just in the gap. You see. The, way, uh, the player at the top of the screen, I think it's Rashford playing a, a pass into Kevin De Bruyne, actually. And the big area that I want to focus on, we're just going to let this play on very, very slowly, is as soon as he's in this gap, Brandon. Yep. That pass, I like to call it Buckley Ball, OK? It's an R1 square, uh, uh, RBX, whatever console you're on, a load of in cross. It's a 100% guaranteed goal. You see the, the pass come into the box right there, and every single day of the week, you're going to score that goal. No matter if it's Oyelito, no matter if it's Ryan Pessoa, no matter if it's goal to merchant Brandon Smith, you are always going to score that goal. And it just goes to show goals from outside the box, low driven crosses. I think that's the, the big thing. We've seen a plethora of goals today. And, and once again, Oyelito, comfortable victory. There's a reason that we're bigging him up so much. Yeah, I mean, that means for Manchester City, they go down into that loser side of Group A. Now, Oli Lito, one win away from a quarter-final spot in his first ever E Premier League Grand Finals. That's our segment done, and we're going to throw it back over to Joe and Kyle to speak about all those games that just take place in that round. Yeah, I'm already obsessed with the term Brandon Ball. Yeah, yeah, uh, Buckley we've ball. seen... Buckley Ball, Buckley Ball, Buckley Buckley ball. ball. yeah. I, I wouldn't score that one, so I don't know what he's talking about right there. It's not everyone can yeah. do it, because my skills uh, aren't the same. Um, what's great to see, though, breaking down Oli Lito's uh, play right there. What a player he is, all right. Representing Leeds, first time there in the E Premier League as well. Top of the FIFA Global Series rankings as well. He's clear at the top. Everyone wants to be up there so for him he wants to showcase what he's capable of plus if he can win this tournament he makes his way through to the playoffs he's probably going to get there anyway but he cements his spot thinking about the FIFA E World Cup later on in the season as well. Yeah, exactly. And obviously Tex going through as well. So Tex and Olito both progressing pretty comfortably so far. Yeah, definitely. These are the names that you thought would be going through. We were confident we're going to go through there. So those are two that will can have a bit of a, a, a breath and relax a little bit. But what I loved about going back to Tex's interview, he's won this tournament. He <laughs> says, you know, I've done that, I've been there, done that, bought the T-shirt. I've won this tournament completely. And that is why I can come into this one a little bit more relaxed. So it's great to see, and I'm sure throughout the rest of day one, possibly going into day uh, three for him as well, who knows what could happen. Yeah, and do you know what? I was pretty impressed by Sean Flossie as, as well. I know that Tex said there that he didn't think he was underestimating him, but nevertheless, I think that was a pretty solid first performance from him. Yes, definitely. This is a great opportunity as well for us to look at some of the competitors. Obviously, all 20 clubs are represented in the Premier League, and it's great to see that. We can look at some of the goals from some of the other games as well, and this is a great chance to showcase some of the skills and some of the... Well, just beautiful Buckley ball, I think we're going to call it, from these competitors. Oli Lito, what a first leg it was, beating uh, MCFC's Ryan 4-0. Ignore the scores just at the top right there. It was in the second leg, though, that it was MCFC's Ryan. Managed to pull one back. Like I said, ignore the aggregate score. It was 4 Two, OK, overall on that one. Now, Newcastle's Planet Toast taking on West Ham United's Red Lack. Huge game 
the loser of this goes out. They're in the loser's bracket side of the tournament. And as you can see, it was West Ham United's red lap that managed to score that goal right there. One man we've all talked about, Joe. Huge gorilla. He's representing Sheffield United. We watched that goal before, and now we're taking. He was taking on Aston Villa's Wigsy, and again, two competitors that were close, three-three. But this game is all about fine margins, Joe. You'll mm. see that time and time again. Sometimes the ball can bounce in your favour. Other times it doesn't. And as we're seeing right here, w were you happy with this one, mate? I mean, I mean, not particularly. <laughs> <laughs> Not particularly, but less than about that, the better. I mean, big shock, isn't it? First, first sort of uh, round of games, and, and Gorilla's already lost, which is, which is a massive shock. We're talking about him as being a potential favourite, drops into that elimination bracket now, Carl. Yes, and that's what the beauty of tournaments like this is, is the fact that you can actually win you can be competitive, everyone can talk about you, but it's about what you do over those two legs and it doesn't always go your way. We've got plenty of goals going in through these round two games round here. Tottenham, Stokes, yes, representing Tottenham, taking on Crystal Palace's Alphins Monroe. And again, close, 6-5 at this point it was. Final few moments of the game and that can happen. It goes into extra time. Time and time again, we've seen how the game can change. And here you are, you've got Painter taking on Royal Funky. Sometimes it's not all about goals, it's just about how the small margins can go your way. Yeah, exactly. We were having a look as well. Al Simon Rowe, he was saying on Twitter that he was really nervous about his group. And it's not a terrible result, that, 7-6. Um, but nevertheless, you know, it's time uh, for a quick break. Um, now, anyway, uh, we're back with loads more action after the after this break, including the likes of Tex coming back in, Oli Lito back in. Plenty to get our eyes around. See you in a bit. As the ball goes out of play, it looks like on the sidelines, Marcus Bratchford is getting ready to be their first change today. Just getting his final checks from the physio by the looks of it. And he'll be looking to make an impact from the bench, most definitely. Shells looking to get us underway, dancing into the back of the net. Trying to enjoy himself oh, in the Shell, box. And oh my it. god, he is. Shell, stop it. Can he find the ball into Pele? Surely a chance for Shells to equalise, and he will. Brings it on to De Bruyne. Lovely oh. football. Lovely talent. Oh! Brilliant feed from Wilfred Zaha. Mane does well, goes on his own and puts the game to bed. It could be a chance for impact, surely a goal! Bobby Firmino! Fernandez into R9, chance R9 round the corner, goes on his own, will score a massive goal! Can he play Cantona Croy, brilliant touch, brilliant goal! Cavalry is here, oh, and that is nice. a great finish. And Rashford, lovely back heel, what a finish oh. that is. Chance for Josh! Oh, he's done it! 
Straight on the counter attack. He's in. Lovely ball. Ooh. It's a box. He's about to get his hands on it. As Curtis Jones goes in, dinks it over the goalkeeper. There's Ryan for Sower. Like you'll ever get paid to play video games, they said. Now you're players, creators, fans, all in one huge and growing community. We know that gaming's many faces can truly make a positive impact. We're there with you. Whether you're making the next great game or just looking forward to playing it. Squad up, we're Barclays. Welcome back to the E Premier League. Some huge results so far. A couple of shocks in there. Gorilla losing his first game. Tex winning his. Oli Lito winning his. Carl, enjoying yourself? Oh, of course, mate. <laughs> this is the third E Premier League. We're going to crown someone by the end of this week. We're on the Xbox side of things. We get to go again tomorrow on the PlayStation side of things as well. But there's been plenty of action and we can have a look at our brackets. This is how things currently look on the Xbox Group A side of things. That first matchup in round number one, it was MCFC Ryan who progressed through beating Planet Toast 6 4. It is double elimination. You lose once, you drop down into that loser's bracket side of things. Oli Lito took on MCFC Ryan in that round two matchup. Oli Lito beating him 4 2. It was Jazz 1875 taking on West Ham United Red Lack. It was Jazz who came out 6 5 on that one. So the winner's matchup is Oli Lito taking on Jazz. Jazz 1875, both of those remaining unbeaten. In losers bracket side of things on round one, as you can see right there, we had West Ham United Red Lack. He took on Planet Toast, which means Planet Toast has lost both of those games right now. So he's out of the competition. Let's have a look at Group B. And as you can see, Gwigsy back, he came out on top, beating Saf Dragon 7-5. That set up a game with Huge Gorilla, someone we all know on the FIFA scene. And it was Gwigsy back who got the win, and he takes on Healy, who beat Bundles Lucas 7-6. That sets up the winner's match right there. And then in the loser's bracket side of things, as you can see, SAF Saf Dragon. Well, he came through, that's why he progressed, and he beats Bundled Lucas 5-4. Let's move on to Group C. And as you can see right here, this was one that provided plenty of goals. It was Burnley Ashy taking on Alfie uh, Munro. 5-1, it was Burnley Ashy who came out. So he moved through. But Falcons Diogo came out 5-0 in that second matchup. Oh. NFG Jaden, he won 9-3 against 11 Stokes, which sets up our winners matchup. Falcons Diogo taking on NFG Jaden. And as you can see in that loser's bracket, if you're still there, you've got one life left. Let's move on to Group D on the Xbox side of things. Royal Funky taking on Sean Flossie in that first matchup. 7 3, Sean Flossie came out. Then, as we watched, it was Fnatic Tex taking on Sean Flossie. And Tex came out 5-2. And then we had that foot whiz, Nikin Sabob taking on Painter 7-6. That one was, which sets up our winners matchup. Fnatic Tex taking on foot whiz, Nikin Sabob NKSNB, for people who don't know how to say his name right there. In that winners <laughs> matchup, then in losers bracket, as you could see, Sean Flossie got that by. It was Royal Funky who came out 2-1 against Painter. And that is how things currently stand on the Xbox side of things. Super simple for anyone looking at those brackets. If you win, you stay in the winner's bracket side of things. If you lose, you drop into the loser's bracket. Lose twice, you're out the tournament, Joe. You are, and Gorilla has already lost once, which is a huge shock at this stage. Really, really surprising. But nevertheless, Nicole, I believe you've got something for us. Yes, he is with me right now. Gorilla, hello, how are you? 
How are you feeling um, right now? Are you here? Not to, yeah, Is it? Yeah. There you are. I was like, there I'm just going to stand here and chat to myself. Uh, yeah, how are you feeling right now? How have you found the competition so far? Um, well, obviously, I've just played my uh, first game against uh, Grigsy and it didn't go to plan. Simple mistakes cost me. I won the first leg 1-0, uh, but uh, he came out of the block. Second leg, I think he went three goals up, um, but I uh, brought it back and he, and he scored a winner late on. So simple m uh, mistakes cost me, so I've got to do it the hard way as per usual. What are you going to take then into this next game? Uh, just not doing stupid mistakes. <laughs> it's literally that from a defensive side of things. I just brought out my centre backs like an idiot, um, and it's just something simple like that can cost me a game, and it did. So hopefully rectify that against Dragon, and uh, we'll see where we go from there. But look, you are a very experienced player. The guys here have been talking about you all day. I mean, surely that's got to give you some confidence, right? <laughs> Um, at the end of the day, it's a game of FIFA. Anything can happen, you know. Whether I have experience or not, I need to turn up on the on the day, um, the individual game. You know, I beat Grigsy one 0 first leg, but you know it doesn't mean anything if I go and lose the second game like I did. So you know, it's just one game at a time. You know, obviously the experience will come in a little bit. You know, against Dragon, me and him have played numerous times. You know, over the years. So uh, I'm looking forward to this game. But you know, it's just I just need to turn up. You know, I know what I'm capable of. It's just mm -hmm. don't do silly mistakes and uh, take my chances. And are there any other players in particular that you kind of have your eye on in this competition right now? I just want to get through to the, to the next stages, into the quarterfinals. Um, but, you know, we've got to play Dragon first. If I lose, I'm out. So, you know, I've just got to focus on this game. It's not going to be an easy one. Um, and I'm looking forward to it, though. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get that win. Fingers crossed. Good luck. Thank you very much. Back to you guys. There we have it then. Huge Gorilla taking on Dragon. They know each other very, very well. Sheffield United taking on Manchester United. Joe, how are you feeling about that? I mean, I'll, I'll be supporting Dragon. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> not going to lie, but nevertheless, this is a huge game. Like you said, they know each other really well, and it's now basically you have to win. No messing about, right? Yeah, that is it. You have to win. If you lose, you're out of the tournament. They're on the loser's bracket side of things. Let's get straight over to Richard and Brandon as we kick off the next round of the E-Premier League. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And yes, you join us for technically our third round of games here on the Xbox in the E-Premier League. I mean, storylines already emerging, Richard. Maybe players that we didn't expect to be doing so well have done so well. And uh, we are really getting to the nitty gritty side now. Who is going to be making those quarterfinals by the end of play today? I mean, not only that, but we've already had players eliminated from the tournament. Four clubs have fell already. And really, if you just said Gorilla in game number three would already be an elimination match, I wouldn't have believed you. It hurts me to say this, but Brian of Albion out of the tournament. Fulham, out of the tournament. On top of that, Crystal Palace, out of the tournament. Uh, and last but not least, Newcastle United, out of the tournament on the Xbox here. So four teams already gone from the tournament. If you don't know how or why, that means all those players lost two games. And I mean, it goes to show, you know, even when you're winning and you're in cruise control, how the game can flip on its head. Because at times, Brian were running away with that game against Manchester United, Sean Allen. And it goes to show, you bounce back. That's why FIFA matches are played over two legs, just for that exact scenario. Now, we're in another elimination game where potentially Sheffield United could knock out Manchester United. Or on the flip side, Manchester United could stay within the competition. What a storyline this is. Two players that have been in this scene for so, so long. I mean before we had for Champions Cups, before we even had the E-Premier League. These two were grinding away, so to speak, in any FIFA competition they could. In all honesty, they were friends, they coached each other. If you remember, Gorilla winning the FIWC back in 2017. That man was coaching him on that journey. So this is a really, really interesting matchup. Oh, absolutely. Both of these two have had illustrious FIFA careers. Ball into the back post, Alan set maximum first chance of the game. I mean, be watching my breakdowns. Flow cross to the back post again, coming out. Into the box it will go. It's in oh, nearly the perfect start from Gorilla. It's another corner. Interesting to see how he's working these set pieces in this game. As you said, you lose this, you're out of the tournament. If you win, you stay within. You heard Gorilla just a couple of minutes ago saying, I don't care about who else is in this competition. I just need to win this game to survive in the E Premier League. Just see Riyad Mahrez involved as well here for Gorilla. He's going to be on site. No, he's not. That headliner, Riyad Mahrez, first opportunity. We've got the chance to see him here in the E Premier League. 
This is an opportunity that Dragon's been working so hard for three years. This is a real big chance to represent Manchester United on the biggest stage. Well, he's been going for Manchester United every single year, hasn't he? Yeah. In the Premier League. And this is the first time we've been able to see him in action in this tournament. He recently joined SAF at the beginning of the year, an organisation that have got four players in the Premier League. Serious about FIFA, that is. I'll be hoping that one of their players can make it into a top eight finish here. He's building into the first chance. Steve Bergwijn gets the nod and gets the start in this game. Not a starter for everybody. He's the Dutch winger. So a goal update at the top of the screen there. Manchester City's Ryan. 1-0 down, early doors. Yeah, keep an eye on that right-hand corner of the screen. We'll keep you up to date of all the score lines as they come in. All the games have got completely different... Scenarios based on them, could be knockout, could be a chance to book yourself a spot in those quarter-finals. Goes for a corner, this is the third corner that the Gorillas had in the first 15 minutes here. He's looking to try and be creative from these. This time we'll play short into Bruno Fernandes and he'll try and work it out. Looking at the options that he has in the box, queuing up. I mean, the defenders have now tracking back. Virgil van Dijk no longer part but that could be an awful mistake. Charles Bruno Fernandes, punished! Cannot make mistakes like that, giving... Gorilla the lead, just poor defending, poor decision making from Dragon. The ball stole off of him. And the man representing not only SAF but Manchester United. 1 0 down. What a story that would be. Manchester United could be out yep. in the group stages here. You think back to the first ever E Premier League season, what a year they did have there duo back then of Jonesy and Carl Lease made a grand final something's got to give though it's either going to be Manchester United out or Gorilla out coming in as one of the sort of favourable seeds was Gorilla in this tournament he'll be crashing out of the tournament yeah he came into this tournament as the second highest ranked player in the global series rankings that shows how good he's been outside of this competition fair play to Gwigsy as well who <laughs> Back-to-back -back wins. Oh, Nobody this is really silky in the box. No way around the corner in the end there. Expecting him to be as good as he was, but showing that form of a, a previous FIFA. Quigsy back is the uh, the saying that he was being going around on social media with after that big result for Aston Villa. Chance again to make it two. He's got to be careful at the back here, Sean Allen. We're seeing it a couple of times now. Just looks a little bit nervy. I mean, I would be nervous if I'm up against Grilla's press that's, that's so constant and... So hard to escape. I mean, you can see the animation in the face cam there. That's not good for Dragon there. We've all been there as FIFA players. You can't not be animated. You've got to stay calm. You've got to stay composed. Grill up. That's going to be playing into his hands right now. Well, he's already showing negative emotion. It's only 28 minutes in into leg number one. Got to get a handle on those the space. emotions. Look at the room. Zinchenko this time. Might find the cutback maybe for Grill up. Charles back to De Bruyne again on the finesse. It's defended just about well. Got to be better. Saw the use of the player look animation right there from Gorilla, where you get the opportunity to run off the ball with a human controlled player. Chance. Best one he's maybe had all game. Gorilla. Could be 1 1. It will be. Steve Bergwijn. Not the starter in every single one of these teams, but we mentioned the composure. We mentioned he was getting a little bit animated there, Dragon. He needed that just to calm himself down and to say, you know what, I am in this game still. That sort of threaded pass into Steven Bergwijn. Typically, he's only got a two-star weak foot, does Steven Bergwijn. But on that foot future stars foot item, highlighting some of the best talent under the age of 23 and what their potential could be in real-life football. He's got a four-star weak foot on said upgraded item. Just a quick mention as well, Arsenal Healy up by two goals to one against Quigsy in that one. Arsenal against Aston Villa, winner, goes to the quarter-finals. That'll be one of the first spots taken. Two against two. It's a lot of bodies being thrown forward here for Gorilla. The man that just lost to Tex, he's in a rematch against Southampton again. Wolves did beat the Saints. There's Tex doing Tex like things up by a goal to nil against Leicester. Of course, Foot was his player. Nick Sneb in that one. Chance building up perfectly. Bruno Fernandes can't find the way around the corner. Great press again from Gorilla. 
Can he find the gaps? He's done a great job to sort of disrupt that battle line from Dragon. Hasn't been able to find more than a single goal at this moment in time, though. Build up play, that's brilliant feet. Trent Alexander on all the way from fullback. Watch the options in the box potentially. So maybe a Manchester United man. Carl Walker, brilliant idea. He tried to play the one more pass. Into Marcus Rashford. That would have been a story. The Manchester United man scoring. For the Manchester United representative. I mean, those are the storylines you will come to expect in the Premier League. Well, it was Trent Alexander Arnold bombing forward from right wing back, getting the ball into Rashford, but who else but Kyle Walker Chance. speaking of Rashford? Awful touch. I mean, you can see the reaction from Dragon there. That should have been a goal for Gorilla there. Just could not find his feet, could not find the touch that he was looking for. Half time at the break. We'll have a look at the highlights from that game. And there was two goals to talk about, but some awful defending as well, Richard. Yeah, just a, a bad touch, in all honesty. Setting up Bruno Fernandes to fire past the goalkeeper. This was the equaliser. Kevin De Bruyne into Rashford. He just waits for that movement of Steele and Bergwijn. And then as soon as he gets into the opportunity, slotted finish past the goalkeeper. That's that live player cam. This is Texas' goal that he did score to put himself 1-0 up. Slight rebound there into Marcus Rashford with a composure inside the box. That is sublime from Tex. Just knocking it through the legs of the defender and sending him 1-0 up. Yeah, back to our game. In focus, this one. Elimination game. Who will be leaving the Premier League by the end of play in this one? Will it be Sheffield United or Manchester United that will be leaving? Over in this Group B. Building. Here's Gorilla. Goes for that finesse shot on the edge of the box. Speaking of that effort, Richard, it's become quite a viable way of scoring on the, on the edge of the box with that finesse. No, absolutely. Especially when you take into consideration the attacking prowess of Kevin De Bruyne, Team of the Year, of Bruno Fernandes. These players that have got sublime shooting. A finesse shot, maybe not the worst way of opening up a defence. There's a change at the halfway point. Saka comes on for Gorilla. Interesting, the Arsenal man does get the nod. He's a, a very pacey and decent for I mean game. Chance against Oli Lito. Winner of that goes into the quarterfinals. That's 1 1 the score. And that winner as well. The winner of that game, Aston Villa against Arsenal. The winner of that also books a place in the quarterfinals. That's Guigzi against Healy. And I mean, that's seed 18 against seed 10. I mean, the Premier League, don't worry too much about those seedings. As long as you're playing good FIFA on your day, anything can happen. Anything will happen. Chance, lovely bridge. Chance around the corner. Could be a chance off the post. Should have been a goal from Gorilla right there. The directional nutmeg, skill move. That accelerated touch away from the defender, leaving him for dead. And only that three inches of metal separating Gorilla and a 2-1 lead. Yeah, this could be heartbreak down the other end. Manchester United, Robertson into the box. It's punched back into the centre about that. It's end to end. Another elimination game. West Ham against Manchester City. Loser of that will leave the tournament. Redlack against Ryan. What a charge! What a block on the line. Virgil van Dijk will be the hero for the Blades. What a defender. What a block from the highest rated centre back in the Premier League. One of the highest rated players in the Premier League, Virgil van Dijk. Mr. Reliable for Liverpool. However, he's doing it for Sheffield United right here. Chance. Same maxim in now. Grilla on the hunt, hunting for that another goal. Lovely directional nutmeg into space. Goes down to ground. He'll cry for a penalty. The referee says, no, get back up on your feet. I just want to highlight as well, Everton. NFG Jaden. First ever time we've seen him in a tournament. He's been knocking on the door for so long to get that opportunity in competitive FIFA. He's potentially about to go and beat Diogo of Team Falcons, who's representing Chelsea in the tournament. A player that, if you remember well, back in FIFA 19 it was, he made a grand final on the Xbox, losing, as we know, to Tex in that dramatic last-minute chance. He's representing Fulham at the time, now playing for Chelsea. Not looking good for Manchester City. 3-1 down against West Ham United. I mean, he said it, Ryan, didn't he? He if said, not he, playing well. if I'm not playing well, I'm going to get punished. Yes, Oli Lito was a very difficult game. We saw the highlights. That was four goals to two. But now, if you lose that, you're out of the tournament. This is another elimination game, if you are wondering. 
Winner stays in the tournament, loser unfortunately will leave the E-Premier League. Manchester United against Sheffield United. Two goals in the first 45 minutes. And a goal line clearance from Virgil van Dijk, keeping Sheffield United in this one. Brilliant feet in the box from Bruno Fernandes, brilliant save. Still on. Slightly rushed on that rebound from Bruno. I didn't know if the shot was the best option, maybe a pass across the box. He went for the shot. Look at the space. Look at the ball into the box. What, what a, a save. save. Oh, nearly got a double one. For a split second, I thought that could have been a double save there. But Marcus Rashford. Joe Hart nearly. I should say, Steve Burke won. Nearly saving Gorilla right there. It was a fantastic first save. Steven Bergwijn doubling it up for Dragon. There's been more goals if you're a Liverpool fan and you're in safe fans. So it looks at the moment, Tex. A game away from a quarter final. You look at the stats that he's had in this tournament, Richard. He's won it. He's been in the grand final on the Xbox last year, losing, as we know, Console final, yep. to Mark Marley. I mean, the consistency. Sort of come to expect it now, don't you? Is Look it? at the space. Look at the chance. It could be another one for Manchester United. Acres of space. Sadio Mane got to stay composed. And Gorilla will find himself two goals down. A brilliant ball roll from Sadio Mane. And Manchester United will lead by three goals to one. Not too sure how that ball managed to find its way to Mane. We're just jumping back onto the game. And we see Sadio Mane in on goal. He tried bringing him down as well. See a goal here from Oli Lito. He's in a tough game against West Bromwich Albion and Jazz. But the Leeds man goes 2-1 up right there. Sadio Mane at the near post, putting Oli Lito and Leeds United in a winning position. We I'll jump back again. Oh He's my. in again. Oh, my. There could be more. There could be more. Will there be more? Mane. Yes, there will. And now a game can flip on its head. Such a tight game in the first 45 between these two, but Manchester United putting the sword to Sheffield United. Four goals to one. Dragon leads right now. You see a nod of the head as well in that live player cam. Sort of a nod of, I'm in a good position right now. I'm in a comfortable position. Do you think by the looks of it, Grilla's naturally trying to press forward and he's he finding did. all this space? He did team press. Gorilla, he tried getting back into the game instantly. He's just been caught on the counter twice. Could be one more time with this right, Rich. Look at the space. Look at these through balls. He's finding Rashford now. Acres of space. He's got Sadio Mane there. Surely not. Mane! It's five. And that's a full goal cushion that Manchester United will have heading into that second leg. And I mean, an absolute capitulation of a second half from Sheffield United and Gorilla. What on earth has happened? Gorilla will need to play the leg of his life if he wants to get back into this tie. 5-1 down against Manchester United and Dragon. Counter-attacking football at its finest right here. And if you're a, a serious about FIFA fan, you will be overjoyed with that first leg. 1-1 one, one it was. You have to remember, he was 1-0 down. He scored five goals, Richard. That will conclude leg number one. South Dragon leads by five goals to one at the break. I mean, we're seeing some brilliant games here. This is elimination FIFA. You lose, you're out the Premier League. As we said, we've already lost Newcastle, Fulham, Crystal Palace and Brighton on the Xbox. Who's next? Yeah, who is next? I mean, I tell you, Sheffield United are about 45 minutes away. If they don't book up their ideas of being eliminated from the E Premier League. Gorilla went 1 0 up. This is your highlights after leg number one. But G Dragon got this goal back with Steven Bergwijn. And it was sort of. We, we went into about 15 20 minutes of sort of slow play. Look at the clock 75 minutes. As soon as this goal went in. Sparked a fire. Gorilla just went very attacking. That depth went higher. And you see Dragon playing counter-attacking FIFA at its finest. Little flick on there from Bergwijn. Steven Bergwijn and Sadio Mane, incredible. Mane got a hat-trick. Bergwijn with two of the goals. And it... Gorilla will be thinking, how on earth have I let that get out, get out of my hands? I mean, these are the goals. There's two of them, exactly the same. That was one there from Mane. And guess what? He wasn't done yet. 
one more chance. It was all about the counter-attack from Dragon. Brilliant stuff. He knows he's got pace in Mane and Rashford. Mane bagged himself another one. The perfect hat-trick and the perfect first leg from Manchester United's Dragon. But that will conclude the first leg here between these two. The question will remain for any Sheffield United fan, will there be any way back for Gorilla? We're going to throw it back down to Joe and Kyle to break down that first leg. But, gents, what a game it was. What a game it was indeed. Are you OK, Joe? you got a smile on your face. I'm surprised you've not got your Manchester United kit on, mate. <laughs> Just a bit. You know, when Dragon started kissing the badge, I was thinking, yes, this is what I like to see. That is a shock of a result, isn't it? I mean, Sheffield United capitulating in the Premier League, as we speak at the moment, and capitulating in the EPL too. It is indeed. So, we're going to have a look uh, at that second leg. It is coming up for you very, very shortly. But do not count huge Gorilla out. If there's one man that could pull it back, it is him. It's currently 5-1, though, to Saf Dragon. And we've got that second leg coming for you just after this short break. of the perception that we don't know what we're doing because it's it's always been there it's always been women don't know the offside rule women don't know what football's about so they're not shouldn't be involved in it um, and for me i've come through exactly the same pathway and exactly the same tests and challenges as male referees and i think that's the stereotype really that i would want to challenge that we are good enough to be there if we're there. We're not there as a tick box. And we have a female assistant referee today. The first time that Sean Massey has run the line in a Premier League match. I think the more girls we get involved in football, the more other girls feel like they can be involved and that sport is for all. I'm a real big believer from my PE teacher background as well, that sport gives much more than just a physical aspect. It gives that mental stability. I'd say fitness is always a challenge for me because to keep up with the players on the pitch, I have to be on top of my game because they already have a head start on you. As an assistant referee, you're going from a sideways position when they're already running. You've got to be stationary with, effectively with the last defender. So if the last defenders are pushing out and you've got an attacker that's sprinting forwards, they're already 10 metres ahead. But also coming back from having a baby was really difficult. So the doctors told me that I wouldn't be able to come back to referee and they told me that I wouldn't be able to do any fitness work again. So obviously that's a big part of my career. Um, so coming back from having my daughter was probably the biggest moment in my life where I actually thought, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have lost my career. I had lots of support from the FA for John Wild, who, you know, gave me every possible person to go to that I needed to, to support me and then give me the opportunity to come back step by step. I went kind of back through the leagues again and that's what I definitely needed, that support. I want to be able to support other referees coming through. I always say that once I finish my career I want to be making sure that we've got the next generation of referees and sports women coming through. I think it's really important that we create that atmosphere that they feel safe in an environment that they feel safe in. When I said, can I be a referee? That shouldn't be a question that any other female has to ask anymore.
Hello and welcome back to the E Premier League. There's been plenty of action so far right here. Yes, we're into the round three of all of our fixtures and these are the results so far. Looking at it, West Ham United in Group A taking on Manchester City. West Ham United winning 3-2. Leeds United, Oli Lito taking on Jazz 18-75. It's Oli Lito who's winning 3-1. Group B, Manchester United. Saf Dragon taking on Huge Griller 5-1 to Manchester United after that first leg. And Aston Villa to Arsenal for looking all right, Joe. It's not looking too bad at all. We've also got Tottenham losing against Burnley 1-0. Chelsea drawing 1-0 all, all to play for against Everton. Southampton currently losing, but a second leg still to play against Wolves. And Tex just about keeping that lead 2-1 against Leicester City all to play for. But this is going to be a massive second leg now between Gorilla and Dragon, isn't it, Carl? It is indeed. 5-1 to Saf Dragon, which means that Huge Gorilla's got to come out. He's got to defend and not mm -hmm. concede any more goals, but he's somehow got to find at least four to draw it and then five if he wants to win it. Yeah, and we saw just how dangerous Saf Dragon is on the counter-attack. So he might well look to sit back and absorb some pressure and hit on that counter-attack. But Richard, um, Brandon, what have we got for us? Thank you very much, Joe and Kyle. One thing that quite interesting there, all the games that we saw, apart from the game we're watching, are super tightly contested. But the game we're watching, 5-1, is going to take a heroic turnaround for Gorilla if he wants to get back into this. Yeah, so we've got kind of lucky then, because uh, I yeah. mean, there's loads of goals going in our game. If you have just tuned in, we're in a, a stage of this E Premier League now where it's go home or stay in the tournament or book a place in the quarter final. I mean, if you're a Liverpool fan, if you're a Leeds fan, if you're an Everton fan, you know, you guys are so, so close to getting into the final eight and ensuring that you're going to be involved in the, in the conversation, let's say, on Friday when we have our grand finals if you're a, a Fulham fan a Palace fan a Brighton fan like me um, unfortunately we're out of the tournament um, and that is the end of the road for the E Premier League for some of those teams um, so I mean what do you expect in this second game because we know so well he can't write off Gorilla yes he's four goals down but this is competitive FIFA this is second leg FIFA and it always throws up some wild storylines just has to attack 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 does Gorilla if he wants to try and get back into this game cannot afford to go 1-0 down in this second leg, which would mean 6-1 on aggregate. Five goals to one. The craziest thing is, he scored four goals in 15 minutes, did Saf Dragon. It's Incredible. If he scores one more, I think he runs away with his tie. De Bruyne goes for that finesse. It's blocked well. Had to be blocked at the back. By Gorilla. Chance to come forward. James. That's the Bruyne. Gorilla needs four goals. Lovely. This is gorgeous. Brilliant finish. And a huge, huge goal. The Manchester United man scoring against Manchester United in this matchup. A fantastic directional nutmeg into the pocket of space. And Bruno Fernandes said, thank you very much. I'll be taking those all day long. Outstanding goal from Bruno Fernandes across the goalkeeper and potentially giving Gorilla a hope back in this game five goals to two now had to get that first goal in this second leg just to give him a, a little bit of hope a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel chance defended well has to defend so so well you can't imagine the pressure that Gorilla's under here as you said now needs three goals certainly can be possible if you can score like you just have then seven minutes in he scored with Bruno Fernandes expect a change of tactics from him to come out to be more aggressive to press Saf Dragon looking for Is a in? perfect start. Mares. Oh, oh the goalkeeper move, but no! No, well, well, well. What do we say? You can never count out anyone, let alone Gorilla. That's outstanding composure as well from Gorilla right there. He sort of baited the goalkeeper. He moved him all the way across, and as he cut inside, he had to readjust, he had to realign in his mind to then shoot near post. 16 minutes gone. And that impossible task starting to come a little bit more probable for Gorilla. Well, sometimes when you've got such a cushion, you could become so vulnerable. As crazy as it sounds, even a four goal cushion you think would be safe. Sometimes isn't. What a start to this game for Sheffield United's Gorilla. As we know, these two have been in the scene for such a long time, they've been competing 
against each other, with each other, his team's coach, he's got to stay composed, Sav Dragon! No! Ooh. It's moments like that! And that's the difference between using a player like Marcus Rashford in the E-Premier League requirement rules and, let's say, in the Global Series, he's using R9 there. He's using Cristiano Ronaldo. They don't miss those chances. Has to recompose himself. Gorilla on the hunt, looking to make it three. Mares twinkle toes in the box. It's Robertson that does well to flip possession back in his favour. What a challenge. Massive tackle from Trent Alexander-Arnold to get that attack back underway for Gorilla. Just wave and wave of pressure. Zinchenko does well. De Bruyne, same axe in. This is beautiful! Gorilla is in a rhythm right now. And that rhythm is goal off the goal off the goal. Outstanding from the 2017 world champion. What a goal from Curtis Jones. Just continued his run. Little back heel around the corner. The build-up play there, Richard. The build-up play was sublime. Exquisite. Needs to score this. Goes for a goal. Everything finding its way back to Sheffield United at the moment. The bounces, the touches. He scored three goals in 30 minutes. This has been a remarkable start to this second leg. When he turns up... Oh, sorry, when he needs to turn up, he often does turn up, Gorilla. This is an elimination game of FIFA. Whoever loses is out of the Premier League finals. It's as simple as that. Only eight players can go into the quarterfinals. Chance. Is he onside? No, no he's not. You see how high both Trent Alexander-Arnold and Zinchenko are getting forward as well. They're offering those outlets, which means defensively, Dragon's got to just move across. He can't be as aggressive as he previously was. Another score coming in. That's an elimination game in Group A. West Ham, Manchester City. If you're a Leeds United fan, you're having a bit of a dream start at the moment in your first ever E-Premier League. Three goals to one. Chance, surely not. The equaliser, what a save Rebounds. from Edison. Still could be alive. Recycles, well, wow, brilliant save again from Edison. I cannot believe what I am seeing right now. This turnaround is remarkable. It's still not done yet. This time, Bruno Fernandes, and eventually... Can he take a breather? He can't even get a chance to... To think, let alone breathe. This Look is the gorilla press. press. This is the gorilla press, the famous press. He's on. Can he find Rashford, though? Or Bergwijn. Look at the back post. Play the one more round the corner. Manchester United, you need this to go in again. It's brought well. It's got bounce, fortunately, as well, for Sheffield United to come forward. Look at that player lock. Just wayward. He'll be praying for half time. Leicester back in the tie, that's Footwiz, Nick Sneb. Let's have a look at that goal right now, I mean, he was 2-1 down, second leg, it's only taken him seven minutes in, Alan say Maximin, was he on his own? Cut back, Marcus Rashford, there you go. What a block on the line right there. Just that goal coming in, Dragon had a chance, inside left channel, cut it back, and we just saw an incredible bodies on the line. Defensive performance, chances at finish yet. Mane turns Zinchenko. That's what I mean, though. Everything Grill is defending. He's defending everything the Dragon's throwing at him. That's only going to fulfill him with confidence heading into the second half. I mean, he's done the hard part, in all honesty. He scored three goals in 45 minutes. What a turnaround by Diogo, by the way, of Chelsea. Three goals to one he leads against NFG Jaden. He was 1 0 down, but Richard, half time here. We said you can never write Gorilla off, and I mean, he's living up to that right now. He was four goals down at the break in that game. He's just bagged three in 45 minutes, Richard. Uh, I just saw a little stat there. Sadio Mane was the key man for Dragon in that first leg. He's had seven, seven touches in the first half. He's barely been able to get out of his own half. Never mind trying to get his attackers on the ball, Dragon. This was Bruno Fernandes' beautiful Bridge down the byline, he smashed it past the goalkeeper. Curtis Jones involved in this attack right here for Gorilla into Ria Maris. Just see the goalkeeper movement, pretty awful to be honest. From Dragon, dragged him into no man's land. And this goal, a beautiful bit of build up play on the edge of the box. The cancel on the Berber spin. Curtis Jones just continued his run, sent Maxim in round the corner. 5 4. What a game we are witnessing.
Well, well, well. 45 minutes away from saying goodbye to one of these teams. At the moment, it will be Sheffield United that still will be heading out of the tournament. But the way that Grill is playing right now, something just feels like we could be going into extra time potentially here. You can't imagine how Dragon's feeling. For Dragon right now, it's just going to be playing counter-attacking FIFA, just holding that lead, consolidating that lead as long as you can, waiting for Gorilla to push more and more bodies forward and playing on the counter. Robertson struggling to find space, let alone an option. I mean, that's been the story all day. In this second leg, in all honesty, he's made it difficult ah, again. Looks a bit harsh, that one. If you're a SAF fan, it must be very difficult to watch this right now. You must be panicking, thinking, surely not. Such a good first leg, such a good ending to the first leg. Here's De Bruyne, Gorilla. On his way back to Virgil van Dijk. I mean, he's done so well to play in these really tight areas, Dragon. But it's just always a player there. And all those second balls, all those second bounces are falling Gorilla's way. Look at Bruno Fernandes, he's in the box. De Bruyne, Elastico, goes for a corner. Watch that manual sort of play again, Trano. Is he going to look to control Virgil van Dijk? He'll peel away, then put him towards the front post. Virgil van Dijk will be there in Edison. Two hands on that one. Yeah, collects it well. Maybe a little bit of respite here for Dragon. And uh, again, I spoke about the counter-attack. This is where he's got to be Watch Mane. point. Watch Mane now. Mane, back post, acres of space. Fortunate enough, his teammate in Trent Alexander-Arnold was there to stop that cross coming into the box. Final 30 minutes now. Dragon needs a goal, just something to hold on to. A two-goal cushion would be reinstated for him. Bergwijn fakes it around the corner, wins a corner for his efforts. See a few incredible results. Arsenal 6-3 up against Aston Villa. Goes deep into Virgil van Dijk, it's back to Rhys James. Pyle on that pressure still. His Dragon, will he be just offside? Yes, he will, Mane. Burnley, two goals to the good over there. That's a massive result for Burnley. Burnley, Ashley, that is. We're knocking out Stokes if that continues. Chance. Nearly fell back to the feet of Bruno Fernandes there. Dragon is in. Now starting to get his chances. Needs to stay composed. Can he feed the ball in? Bruno Fernandes! No! Joe Hart with a huge save right there. Came out. You see a quick goal here from Liverpool. 3-2 up currently on aggregate. Bruno Fernandes into Son. I'll tell you what, you just maybe missed the best chance ever <laughs> from Gorilla there. In the corner of my eye, I was following it while we were just watching that goal from Tex. It was an unbelievable ball that was played over. Still, the scoreline is in the favour of Manchester United. Just. 20 minutes or so left in this one Dragon gets a goal I think he'll be home and dry and he'll be staying in the Premier League can he get that ball into the box Trent Alexander-Arnold and it goes it finds nobody other than the fullback back across Ooh. I mean what was that it was a very good cross from Trent Alexander-Arnold just nobody really on the same wavelength once again Joe Hart with a huge save for Gorilla against Bruno Fernandes well, the last couple of chances Gorilla no needs a goal to settle this tie. Will he be onside? No, no, he won't. Again, just so tight, these calls, and it must be so difficult to watch. There's been a goal in this game. I mean, Manchester City, they were trailing, but by the looks of it, this is 4-4. Bruno Fernandes on his own. Lovely little step over. How about that one for a finish into the top corner? Bruno Fernandes has got to be the player of the day here. Foot with Nick Seb getting a goal back with Marcus Rashford. Three all that game right there between Nick Seb and Fnatic Tex. Three apiece going into the second half. Jumping back to our featured match. One goal still separates it in the favour of Manchester United. Yeah, what a game that is as well between Arsenal and Aston Villa. You know, congratulations to Healy of Arsenal. He's on his way to a quarter final. Incredible stuff on the Xbox. So men over. Look at the back post. And it will go. Punched away. Surely. Surely. There you go. It's an ugly punch away by Joe Hart. But the easiest finish. The Dragon will get all day long. Marcus Rashford.
could be sending Manchester United into the next round. Heartbreaking way to potentially go out of the Premier League. Joe Hart, zero conviction on the punch. Just aiding Gorilla. It's just an aiding Dragon right there. Game still not over. But after all that pressure and all that good play, it's a very harsh way to concede. Well, speaking of goals, oh my. Sadio Mane with a cheeky chip for Tex. Back up by four goals to three now. I mean, the goalkeeper came out, he got tangled with a defender, and I'm sure that'll be one that foot with Nick's there, but we'll never want to see again. Chance, Chance for Gorilla, brilliant save on the rebound again off the line by Curtis Jones. Jesus, goals are going in everywhere. Blocks, defensive interceptions, it's so hard to keep up. Huge opportunity missed there for Gorilla and could be made to pay if that through ball can get through. Could be another chance. Round the corner, that one's too heavy. Edison's off his line, collects that one. Nine minutes away from knocking out Gorilla and Sheffield United. It's Sash Dragon and Manchester United. I mean, we're, we're losing a lot of names in terms of players that are being knocked out of this tournament. Southampton, they're four goals down. They're very close to being knocked out of the tournament. Yeah, that'll be funky leaving the tournament for Southampton. Chelsea look on their way to a quarter final. That's Diogo, a player that's so familiar with the Premier League. Sort of gone on the radar a little bit, you would say, Diogo. But a very, very good player in his own right. Oli Lito for Leeds United looks to book them a top eight finish. Five goals to two. A chance to say thank you very much for coming. Let's ensure United are through to the next round. Can he find the cutback? Wins a corner. As long as he's got the ball and as long as that clock is ticking down for Dragon, that's all that matters for him. There was just too much to do in this second leg, unfortunately, for Gorilla. He left himself with too big of a mountain to climb. He did think, though, didn't you? We well, all did. I mean, look, you, you also don't expect your goalkeeper to punch it straight back to their attacker. And you also don't expect maybe to see three goals in the space of 25 minutes, which was the case for Gorilla. I mean, it's a minute and a half away, plus additional time. It's a two-goal cushion The Manchester United sits on. Even if there was a goal now for Marcus Rashford, I don't know. I mean, if there's two minutes added time, you can never say never. You just see every single attacking instruction put on right now for Gorilla. Constant pressure. He has to win the ball back. He's going to have kickoff. Is Dragon. What do you do in this scenario if you're Dragon from kickoff? Pray. I mean, there's, there's, <laughs> you just got to keep hold of the ball. Stick it in the corner if need be. Because you literally, if there's plus one minute, you're going to kick off. The game will probably be 89.50, maybe. Maybe even plus the 90th minute when we get back underway. It's two minutes. There's not a lot of time. If it's two minutes, it's a game changer. It is two minutes. He's got to win the ball back, though. Has to go. That press has got to be strong. Back to the goalkeeper. That's pretty much a minute gone already. He will do everything he can to suck out every That's second it. of this game. And I mean, he's going to win the game. Just get it clear for a corner. Manchester United will remain in the Premier League. He points to his head and says, you know what, I was focused on that. But for a second, Dragon, I thought that might have been going the other way. From 4-0 up, heading into that second leg, just about holds on. I mean, we've got to say, commiserations to Grilla. Yes, Sheffield United will be out the tournament. What a game that was. People often ask, why is the Premier League so special? Well, moments like that just make this tournament so, so incredible. For a split second, we thought that we were about to see one of the best comebacks for the oh, third season in a row. An incredible feat in that second leg, but it's very... This is this is FIFA Esports for you, because Dragon goes through that game. Oh, fantastic. I get to go through to the next round. But he'll, in the back of his mind, we're thinking, I was very lucky. I, I nearly threw that away and I'd be in a laughing stock. We're going to have a look at some of the best moments from that second leg. And for the first 45 minutes, it is all Gorilla. It is. It's just Gorilla, Gorilla, Gorilla. Goal after goal after goal. This was the first one after seven minutes. And when these goals start flying in, Richard, I think anyone sits there and thinks, he's going to come back here. He's going to go and bring this game back. And he had a couple of chances as well. You see this chance right here coming with Zinchenko, a little Berber cancel. Plays back into De Bruyne. One touch pass around the corner Brilliant from St. Maximin to Curtis Jones. Best goal we've probably seen today. However, the counter attack was always prominent for Dragon. Cross whipped into the box. Joe Hart. No words. And uh, you just see Gorilla's reaction 
to that goal right there. He did get one back in the final moments of this second leg, but it was too little too late. And the 2017 world champion and E-Premier League favourite crashes out of the competition. Nobody is safe. Nobody's safe indeed. I mean, as you said, Sheffield United now out. As we said, Newcastle gone, Brighton gone, Crystal Palace gone, Fulham gone out of the Premier League. More names are slowly leaving. I think Southampton are on their way out. But I mean, what a game it was. And I'd love to hear from that man. The nerves must have been ridiculously hard to control. So we're going to pass it down to Nicole, who's with Manchester United's representative, Sav Dragon. Yes, he is here with me now. Dragon, take a deep breath. Oh, my God. We were all so stressed out in here. How was that for you? Talk us through that game. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Uh, the first game, I kind of went 2 1 up 75th minute, and then I hit him with three counters, and I, somehow I ended up 5 1 up. And then the second game, oh my God. <laughs> like, if you back Gorilla in a corner, he's going to come out punching. And this guy, like, when he goes for it, 44 constant pressure, he's coming at me. I didn't know what to do. I, he scored three goals. I thought that was it. Uh, and then somehow I managed to hold on and get the goal to kind of seal it. You seem quite shocked in a way. Is it because there was so much tension and you just did not know which way it was going to go? Yeah, kind of. When you win the first game 5 1, you look at it and you're like, right, that should be, you should, you're safe now. You should be safe. Like, there needs to be some serious comeback for them, for mm. him to do it. And then all of a sudden, within like 30 minutes, he scored three, and I'm like, oh, here we go. But You'd said before, though, that Gorilla was kind of your biggest rival, but I know that you get on really well. Is it then a bit difficult when you then do knock them out? Um, I guess so. Like, me and Gorilla go back years. I coached him to his World Championship that he won. Uh, we've been good friends. We spoke for maybe like five, six years now. And... It's just business at the end of the day. You've got to try to win. It don't matter who you knock out. There's no friends when you start playing, so that's what how, it is. How do you keep calm, by the way? I don't know how you keep your cool, honestly. <laughs> I don't, I don't. You should hear me more, Jim. Like, I, I'm screaming every second, every time to the wrong decision is given against me, he gets to throw in, especially when he's like, they get 3-0 and it's now a one-goal game. Like, <laughs> I'm not calm. Well, you do seem pretty cool and collected. And you are a big Man United fan as well, right? So does it make it that bit more special for you? Yeah, 100%. I've tried the previous two years to qualify. I, both occasions, I come really close, but didn't quite make it. This time, I finally just get over the line. I'm here now, and I'm trying to go all the way. Brilliant. Well, you did great. It was very, very tense for all of us, but well done. Thank you very much. Back to you guys. Nicole, thank you so much for that one right there. Saf Dragon makes his way through after a nervy second leg. <laughs> the first one ended 5-1. We think, there we go, Manchester United progressing through on that side of yeah. the, the tournament, but huge griller. We said he needed the second leg of his life. He nearly had it, Joe. Nearly had it. We saw a total capitulation in the first leg from Gorilla. We nearly saw a total capitulation from Dragon, didn't we? My heart was beating, it has to be said. But nevertheless, Manchester United progressing through. I'm absolutely delighted. Of course you are. Of course you are. You can see how much it means to these players yeah. right now. The competitors they are taking on for their own their teams. He supports Manchester United. He's representing him. He wants them to do well. There's plenty more action here to come. Yes, the E Premier League here live in London. There's loads more action to come, so make sure you stick around with us. There's going to be plenty of goals, maybe some penalties and lots of passion. We'll see you after this break. The result there. That's the final whistle in North London. Harry Kane steps up yet again for Tottenham. Big points in the bag. What are your Great game, Harry. Cheers, mate. Such a clinical finish from a top class striker.
I grew up in a, a little town called St. Helens, obviously up towards like Liverpool ways, and for me it was great. It was a very diverse place. It was something where racism and things like that didn't really exist. I'll be totally honest, it probably did. And it's probably my fault that I was quite not onto it. I feel a, a bit bad sometimes, I'll be honest, that I never got them feelings that uh, black players did. Yeah, my eyes are open now, a lot more now that I'm older and wiser and I'm more experienced and I see what's going on, which I think is absolutely ridiculous for this day and age, I'll be totally honest with you. I think it's something as you grow up and as you grow older, you see what people actually go through. And for me, like I said, I, it, it's something when I was a kid, I maybe had, I don't know, some sort of blinkers on. I, I didn't see these things and, and that's probably my own fault. But for me, things were just normal. I was never brought up any difference. Everybody was the same in my eyes. I, I played football from a very, very young age where I played with a lot of black footballers, Asian footballers, and I think it was all just normal to me. I was involved in captain's meetings over the lockdown and, and meetings regarding racism and regarding things to come back, and one of them was obviously taking the knee and, and the Black Lives Matter and the logos on the shirts and different things, and it opened my eyes a little bit just to, to see what people are going through. It's shocking, honestly, it's, it's absolutely shocking. I can't imagine what I'd be like in that situation, but what we can do as footballers is help and help with the platform that we have. I think as soon as it happens, tell someone straight away, don't bottle it up. I think it'll make it hard for yourself if you bottle it up and you think about it more and more and more. I think it's important that you report it, you tell, I don't know, parents, friends, people who can make change and make things happen. I think it's important you tell them straight away because I think if you sat in your bedroom at home and you see these things happen and then you start bottling up, it becomes worse. And Listen, I could never imagine my children seeing something like that and not telling me. I'd, I'd be absolutely devastated and I think it's important that people want you to tell people and I think that's the most important thing when it comes to this. I think racism, online abuse, what we're talking about now is, is huge for people growing up. My, my children are the same, my children are very young, but it's important we educate this next generation of people on, on these things because we don't want our children now going through these things when they're older. If we can educate people through football, I think it'll be massive, so whatever it takes, I think, to, to help the next generation of people coming through, I think we should do. That's exactly what I am, not just because I'm captain or captain of Wolverhampton Wanderers, just that I'm a friend. And if something was to happen on a football pitch, outside of football, whether that may be, all the lads in that change room know they can ring me straight away and we'll, we'll get it sorted and we'll sort out whatever's going on straight away. So I think that's the biggest thing and I think it goes to show what our dressing room's actually like, that we're, we're as one as much as possible. Welcome back to the E Premier League. Yes, we're deep into day one on the Xbox side of things here in the E Premier League. All 20 teams are represented and they're all going head to head, hoping to be crowned the E Premier League champion. What a round we've just seen as well. We've got plenty of goals that have been flying in left, right, and centre. We can see some of the best of them right here, Joe. It's exciting, isn't it? It's so exciting. Some unbelievable goals so far. And, you know, we've already seen one real shock with Gorilla crashing out early doors. That was an absolutely stunning game, by the way. Uh, but this one is, of course, Ryan Pessoa, Manchester City's Ryan Ooh. against Red Lack. <sighs> Jazz, who's been playing really, really well, but facing up against tough opposition here. Oli Lito, we've spoken about him so much. The favourite from the Xbox side of the draw, really. Seeded number one. That was, a, that was really, really strong. Uh, work by him. It was indeed. As you can see, Arsenal taking on Aston Villa. The two going head to head. It was 6 3 on aggregate right here. Plenty of goals flying in there. Gwigsy was trying to make that comeback, trying to find an inch of space, managing to do that, pulling that one back there to 6 5. And then we move across Sean Flossy taking on Royal Funky. Wolves taking on Southampton. And again, goals flying in left, right and centre. That's what we love to see. We do not want any clean sheets here. We don't want any nil-nils. We yeah. don't want anything boring, Joe. Not at all. There were so many goals in this one. Obviously, this one finished 6-1 to Flossie and actually saw a little bit of a rage quit. Uh, there's Buckley Ball out yet again. <laughs> that low cross 
Really making the difference. This is, of course, one of the tournament favourites tax. How about this for a goal? Unbelievable finish there. The goalkeeper just getting a little bit tangled up, but just so many great goals, so many great games, Carl. Yes, there was indeed. Now, this one was the last game of we've seen where we've got plenty of action, as we said. But again, Buckley Ball. Buckley Ball. Put it across. Put All it the time. across, and then, you know, you, you're going to score. He said, was it 90% you're going to score? <laughs> I'm not going to put that one away. Right, we've got our brackets right here. As you can see on the winner's side of things, Oli Lito taking on Jazz in that match. It was Oli Lito who won that one 5-2, which sets up our elimination match. Jazz 1875 representing for West Brom taking on MCFC Ryan. Yes, Man City's Ryan in that game. The loser is out of the competition. The winner, well, they remain in Group B. Gwigzy, he unfortunately drops down into that elimination bracket. It was Healy who came out on top in that matchup right there, which sets up that elimination match. Gwigzy back taking on Saf Dragon, the man who was 5-1 up, nearly lost it, but he remained in charge for Manchester United. Can he do that once again? Moving on to Group C. As you can see in that winner's matchup, it was Falcons. Diogo taking on NFG. Jaden. Diogo came out on top 4-3, which sets up that elimination match. NFG, Jaden taking on 11s. Stokes right there in the elimination match. And Group D, Fnatic Tex, the man who won this tournament the first time round. He says he's not as determined. He doesn't need to do it. Well, he's won 4-3, and that sets up the elimination match. Footwiz, Nick Sib taking on Sean Flossy. Yeah, well done, Carl. Got through that eventually and breathed, <laughs> mate. Uh, but yeah, we can go over to our next big match right now. Mark and Dan, take it away. Thank you, gentlemen. Every single game is now a huge match. Elimination games coming out of our ears at the moment, Dan. Uh, for some people, unfortunately, and for some clubs, it's going to be the end of the road. And the game that we're going to be focusing is Everton versus Tottenham. It's going to be Jaden taking on Stokes. And I think a lot of people would be surprised to see Stokes in this position. Uh, the reason he's in this position is because he lost to Jaden already in the winner's bracket. And he lost bad. It was a 9-3 loss. Uh, something that none of us would have expected. A player of the calibre of Stokes, previous Xbox playoff champion of FIFA 19. But now he has a chance to get a little bit of revenge here. He would have been able to assess what went wrong in that game. And I'm sure he'll come back fighting here. Well, there's one thing we know in FIFA Esports. If you haven't followed it before, if it's the first time that you've watched some FIFA Esports and you're, you're thinking, what are you talking about, Mark? It's the fact that if you play someone in a tournament once, the first time, you might lose to them. You play them again, you usually win. It's a weird thing that seems to happen, so Stokes has got to keep that in the back of his mind. So Tottenham fans, don't worry too much. Of course, Jaden, though, uh, what a performance it has been from him so far. It's unfortunately slipped up a little bit to find himself in this position now, but, I mean, he's one of those players that's come through this year, like Richard Buckley was saying a little bit earlier, always on the edge of qualification to broadcast. Uh, it's been one of those names in a year of names where we've had a lot of new names, I should say, coming to the fore and really proving that FIFA Esports has got a lot of depth in its talent. That's a lot of names it's a lot of names. names one more time too many names if anything it's a real chance for him to kind of break that barrier and get into these quarterfinals but i wonder whether that lack of experience might just overcome here and whether stokes will be able to come back from what happened in the previous affair and say all right well i've learned my lesson and now I'm going to be able to show something a little bit different. Jaden was knocked down to the lower bracket by Diogo, who we also know is a phenomenal player and also a previous E Premier League. Uh, well, he's been able to get to the latter stages in previous tournaments. But here we go then. Everton and Tottenham Hotspur. Can Stokes manage to actually overcome Jaden this time? and gain a little bit of revenge. Yeah, it's funny, well, sometimes you go back up against the player. Like I mentioned, you get used to the tendencies and you know how they try and go forward and you can sort of formulate a plan to try and combat against that and have a little bit more of a, a closer game in the second game and put that pressure back onto your opponent. But it will be Stokes here who will be coming forward. Plays one of the most attacking formations that you have available to you as well with that 4-3-1-2. Likes to have those players breaking forward. And there was an example of it there. Sadio Mano trying to get in behind as Fernandez is now going to drop wide here as Mane again and almost manages to burst through. High pressure already to deal with here for Jaden Stokes really trying to take the game to him. And I remember it was FIFA 19 where Stokes really kind of changed the game in the playoff stages of FIFA 19, he was able to kind of come up with something a little bit different, the low-driven finesse that kind of came around and everyone followed suit. And maybe he peaked a little bit too early at playoffs because that was when he really showed it. And then by that time, by the time the World Cup came around, everyone else had 
caught on to what it was. Everyone else had learnt it, adapted it to their game as well. And I wonder whether Stokes can get himself to another World Cup. But for now, it's the E Premier League that he has to focus on. There's a run in behind here, two willing runners for Jaden, almost being found by that through ball, well defended by Stokes. And now Alexander Arnold can step forward, a wonderful ball in behind as well, looking to use the pace of Adama Troyore. Goes back inside there, you can see that run in behind in the middle from Sadio Mane once again not being used on that particular occasion. But end to end stuff, you have to stay, even though we're just 13 minutes gone. Both players looking to go forward and score goals. Yeah, it's about just kind of setting up shop in the right areas, sitting back, defending, and then trying to catch your opponent on counter attack with these through balls. But it's once you get into these positions on the left or right hand side, what you do afterwards. That first skill move to beat the initial fullback, and obviously looking for those passes for strikers in the middle of the pitch, like here. And there's a wonderful pass into the feet of Rashford, goes back to Bukayo Saka, tries to feed that one round the corner as well. You can see the idea, and unfortunately it didn't work that time, but now on the counter-attack once more, Stokes trying to play with pace, play with purpose here, but again, Jaden reading it well. And with the way that both of these players just seem to be flying at each other, Dan, the interesting thing for me is concentration in defence. Is one of these players going to slip up, step out at just the wrong time? And is it going to cost them? It's almost like there was 12 goals between them the last time they went up against each other. Just neither one really showing any respect and wanting to get ahead of the other quickly. There's so much space in behind here for Mane as well. Van Dijk coming across. It's Liverpool versus Liverpool. As far as players are concerned, he gets that ball back across. And Carl Walker and a player breathing down his neck, looking to put that finishing touch on it. It didn't come, it was well defended, but straight up the other end now, St. Maximin just going to slow things down momentarily here. But as I say that, he tried to slow things down, and Stokes is looking to keep that high-octane pace here. Yeah, Stokes just trying his chance as well with the advanced fake shot past Van Dyke. It shouldn't really work at times, but if you time it correctly and perfectly, it can just bobble through the legs. Wonderful ball into Rashford here, tries to take that shot early. Body's in the way, though, to get that block in, and that was an important one. Very important block indeed. And it will allow Jaden now to go straight up the other end of the pitch. And I wonder whether one of them is going to just slow this game down a bit. But that is not slowed down whatsoever. Saka now inside the box. You see the player lock trying to be used again to pull one of those strikers off and find a little bit of space for the pullback. Dama Troyo right now plays that ball back inside. Saka looking to turn creator here. Here's the ball into the box. Directional nutmeg in there. Is Rhys James the play that you were talking about trying to get that one clear? I was talking about some of his positive aspects to his game we were mentioning before we got underway here today. Initially, he was on display, but then almost gave the ball away immediately. No chance there. Zinchenko doing very well defensively. And I mean, you can see why there were so many goals between these two competitors when they did face up against each other in the winner's bracket. It's just through ball after through ball at the moment. Yeah, Saka now once again. That's been a focal point here for Jaden. Gets that ball inside. Here's Rashford. A bit of quick work with the feet. Not enough to get round the defender, unfortunately. Get a clean strike at goal. And a little bit of a risky pass there from Stokes. And almost made to pay because if he gave that ball away in that situation, those players were still upfield to counter attack almost immediately. And with how fast it's going at the moment, I do feel like it's going to be a little mistake or a little bubble that's going to result in a, the first goal in this game and it's going to be very difficult if you're on the receiving end of that perhaps just a little bit of lack of fortune on one side neither player really showing any crazy skills or anything that is deserved of a goal certainly some close dribbling and some incredible ball control i've seen from Jaden. stokes he reads the game well and i'm sure that he will have noticed those patterns emerging Rashford just waiting for that running behind. Instead, he's going to use it as a decoy and recycle the play. <laughs> Look at this. You see a centre-back flying forward now for Jaden. The last thing he wants to do in this situation is give the ball away. And Everton coming forward once more. St. Maximin going out wide to Adama Traore. There's that overlapping run now from João Cancelo. Waiting for that last attack of the half here. No goals to report so far, but Jaden looking to change that right at the end. Well, the first 45, unfortunately for him, even though things looked very good, ran out of pitch to play with. West Brom, Man City still 0-0 between Jazz and Ryan. That's a, a big qualification matchup. The two players who I'm sure would have felt like they could be getting through that group, and we'll see how that one pans out. That's a good through ball. There's De Bruyne as well. One-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, but a slightly heavy touch, which is something you don't expect. 
from the Belgian, gave the goalkeeper the opportunity to get off his line. And it's funny that we talk about how a game is going to be full of goals, full of attacking intent. It was part of, it was full of the latter, we have to say, full of attacking intent, but no real goals, no real shots to report. Yeah, it's not the 9-3 that we had between them previously, but it is going to be across two legs, just the one shot uh, in the entirety of the game and also possession going slightly in favour of Jaden. But Stokes has shown enough going forward that he can break through that back line. He is going for those through balls here or there. But when Jaden goes forward, his creativity seems to be offering a little bit more, especially when he's on the ball with the likes of Saka. Interesting substitution for me here for Tom Stokes of Tottenham is he's brought on an Arsenal player, and that is going to be the what-if foot item of Odegaard. He's got that little bit of specialness to him, the ability to find some space. He's got some skill moves. He's got he's a weak foot as well. Here's Kevin De Bruyne. He's got to be careful here. Gets that ball inside the box, tries that drag back. Well read there by Jaden, but nervy moments. Tom Stokes keeping that pressure on almost immediately. I'm sure Tottenham fans probably not so happy to see Odegaard coming on for Stokes, but after what Odegaard was able to do against uh, West Ham the weekend just gone, I'm really surprised to see him used on the virtual pitch as well. There's still no goal to scream or shout about, but chances certainly feel like they're looming. You see players flying forward again for Jaden. It is going to leave them open to that counter attack. Stokes not choosing to try and play that through ball that time. Instead, going to slow things down just momentarily. And here is Odegaard. Fortunately, the ball played out wide and played out even wider. Not for the first time. Players getting the dimensions of the pitch a little bit wrong here. And I'm going to be completely honest, if I've got knocked down to the loser's bracket by someone and I've lost 9-3, that is going to be sitting in the back of my mind of how did I concede that many goals? What did I do wrong? Of course, we were only able to see highlights and snippets. We didn't see the actual game, but you have to imagine Stokes probably went forward quite aggressively in the latter stages, which is why he conceded so many. Well, there's a chance for a ball to be found here to St. Maximin. Turns back onto that right foot and Everton take the lead. It was fantastic footwork. Inside the box from Alan St. Maximin. And the Frenchman, he has a little bit of magic to him. And that is the first goal of the game. And I think it was inevitable with how Jaden has been going forward and how dangerous he's looked inside that box with the close dribbling. There has been a goal elsewhere between Man United and Aston Villa, and it's of course an elimination game, it's a qualification game to that quarter final, and Man United 3-1 up against Aston Villa. Dragon just growing in confidence now, having just come through that crazy tie we saw just a few moments ago against Sheffield United and Gorilla. And inside the last half hour here, Jones is going to spread the play forward. Jaden with that goal advantage. An opportunity to drive it into the feet here. Fernandez back to Saka. Stokes will pick the pieces up here, and Rashford's spinning in behind, and it's going to be fed almost immediately. There's the directional nutmeg. Van Dijk doing what he can to keep up. Play back inside once more. Jones is going to actually make that interception with these players flying forward. It almost becomes a man-on-man -man situation once again at the back. Set Maximin in for his second here. Is he going to strike? It just shows too much to the goalkeeper. Couldn't quite get an angle for the shot. I think any shot too early there would have been comfortably saved by Joe Hart. And it's good acknowledgement from Stokes just to... Bring that keeper out, ensure he's off his line quickly. I was surprised to see some people playing Joe Hart in goal over Nick Pope, if I'm completely honest. Having tried both players myself, the mistakes from Hart, let's say, were not so... They live in your memory. Yes. I know they do. Yes, it's, uh, it's painful. But Nick Pope, however, always seems to get the job done. But you know, it's all down to personal preference when it comes to goalkeepers as... We are in the pause menu, both players just adjusting tactics, having a look to see whether maybe some fresh legs come onto the pitch and see if they can make a big difference. But there is still a second leg, so there's still plenty of time for Tottenham to get back into this time. Changes being made across the board as well. New players being brought onto the pitch to try and make a difference, and one of them is Kieran Tierney, who's fed another Arsenal player here in Saka, and what a misery compiler that would be for Tottenham fans to see Arsenal players for Everton. Doubling that lead. Stokes does well, though, for Tottenham. Cancelo now. Back inside, Rashford. A little bit of space in front of him to try and attack. He's Easton Maximin's trying to get back to 
Give a bit of defensive cover. There's an overlap here from Cancelo as well. And all of a sudden, Tottenham are looking dangerous into the back post of Bruyne. And it is the equaliser here, arriving late, the Belgian. And the header being the goalkeeper. And it's not a goal you'll see too often in FIFA 21, just a back post header. But enough from Kevin De Bruyne as Man United looking to put a fourth into the back of the net. It is a fourth, it is Marcus Rashford of all players, and it looks like Dragon cruising towards qualification for the oh, quarterfinals. Back and in this game, Dan, that is a rash challenge inside the box. It's a desperate challenge, and I'm sure the Everton fans will be desperate for the referee to have another look at that one because it, it looked a little bit dodgy, I've got to say. Was it a penalty? Wasn't it a penalty? Not given, though. Well, that is the thing with FIFA 21. Sometimes you do just have to take a little risk, dive in. The referees sometimes do not give things that you think they might. And I wonder whether he's got away with one there or whether it was perfectly timed. But 10 minutes left. A lot of pressure from Jaden. Oh, beautiful dribbling here from Bukayo Saka. Maybe a chance to strike it. Instead, gives it to St. Maximin. Unfortunately, though, for Everton fans, that will be pulled back. And the game stays at 1-1, which is a surprising scoreline with the way that both players have been going forward. Both players still with a chance of getting into the next stage of this competition. Wolves equalised against Leicester City as well. So Sean Flossie, the lowest seed in this tournament, coming back into things. A touch from De Bruyne inside, and Carl Walker has to get across. Fernandez though, manages to recover it and decided not to go out wide there to the overlapping Cancelo, which has allowed Everton to step in, win that ball back, and now Jaden can come forward inside the last five minutes here. St. Maximin looking for a winner in this game and the chance to take a one-goal advantage into the second, but not going to happen, Dan. There has been a goal between West Brom and Man City, and it's West Brom in the ascendancy. Mares on the turn, finesse to the right corner. And Man City's Ryan finds himself a goal down. Back to our feature game inside the last moments now. And it's going to be Stokes who has possession of the ball. And the opportunity to make a chance here. The goal scorer De Bruyne almost stole in behind, or I should say in front of Virgil van Dijk. And now a mistake at the back of van Dijk. Has to try and make amends once more and just about does enough. But, I mean, for Everton fans, it's heart and mouth moments as Stokes was turning on the pressure and it was starting to tell for him. That's a huge relief for Jaden. You saw it in his player cam as well. He knew that that could have been a costly mistake, which would have allowed Stokes to go into the break with a goal lead. Thankfully, it doesn't happen, and it means that it's still going to be tied up 1-1 here. And this isn't the game that maybe happened between them before. It isn't going to be the 9-3 explosive goal fest, but it is two players who are very evenly matched. And I don't think I would have said that just looking at these names coming into this tournament, but it shows how far Jaden has come. Yeah, what a player he has become over the last year or so. These are the highlights from that first leg, of course. Wonderful dribbling inside the box then from Alan Sam Maximin. That is why players do use that foot freeze. Newcastle United player has that great agility, balance, low centre of gravity, but there, a little bit more route one. Cross to the back post, De Bruyne arrives. I think that's one of those frustrating ones where you're tracking the run with the defender, and he just doesn't jump for it. I've seen other days where the defender might be able to stop that one, but we'll move over to this game then. West Brom versus Man City, and this is live action. Jazz having a goal lead. Jazz with the advantage, only 10 minutes till half-time here. And for Ryan, he's given himself some work to do once again. Maybe an opportunity here from the set piece. Alexander Arnold going to swing this one in. Van Dijk towards the back post and rattles the post. And it falls the wrong side for Ryan. I think both of these players knew coming into this group that Oli Lito was the likely player to go through to the quarterfinals from that winner's bracket. And they would have been eyeing up one another, knowing that they're both fantastic competitors in the Global Series. Jazz has had a better season than Ryan. But Ryan has had a slightly different season. He's been on the commentary desk for a few FIFA events. I'm sure we'd be rather doing this as he digs one up towards the back post and Kyle Walker. Well, that was confident. Let the ball drop over his shoulder. As I believe it was Marcus Rashford behind him who was arriving, looking to head it in and just hooked it away at the last second. A chance for Jazz to build up again. And try and break this back line that Ryan is presenting. It is going to be five at the back for Man City's Ryan.
Jazz coming forward now, just before half-time. Bruno Fernandes, a little croquetta cancel from him. Kevin De Bruyne, five-star weak foot to work with. Tries to feed it back in, well watched, well defended by Ryan. And I wasn't sure whether we'd see much Virgil van Dijk. And I think in a four at the back, it's difficult to try and choose between Van Dyke, Reese James and Kyle Walker. But when you've got five at the back, you can have all three. And Van Dijk is just that wall, that brick wall you need whilst you've got the pacey two centre-backs alongside him. And it's working for Ryan, but he hasn't been able to score. And he needs to find goals here against Jazz if he's going to find his way into the quarterfinals. It's yeah, always fascinating to watch these elimination games with so much on the line. You can see some nerves in the score lines and in the players as well. For now, though, we're going to throw it back down to the guys and uh, see what their reactions are for those first halves of the first legs. Thank you, Dan and Mark, right there. Wow, it is definitely tense in this next round of games. Elimination matches, the winners progress through, the losers, they're out of the EPL. And Joe, you can see the nerves on the players' faces. You really can. I mean, that game alone, Jaden versus Soak, is so tight, isn't it? And also, shout out to Sean Flossie, by the way, the lowest ranked player in the Xbox side of things, holding his own three all in that game there. But there's plenty more action coming your way after this very very short break, we'll see the second leg of Jaden versus Stokes. It's one all between Everton and Tottenham Hotspur there. Don't go anywhere, plenty more action coming your way in just a couple of minutes. Like you'll ever get paid to play video games, they said. Now you're players, creators, fans, all in one huge and growing community. We know that gaming's many faces can truly make a positive impact. We're there with you. Whether you're making the next great game or just looking forward to playing it. Squad up, we're Barclays. The first ever E Premier League. This is so big. Every single club. It's loyalty. It's passion. It's desire. Ball into the box. Kelly with a header. That's how much it means to him. He is the Xbox champion. I think it's my favourite one, to be honest. Et to tex. What a performer. Hello and welcome to the E Premier League Invitational. Oh, 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 oh. That was very sweaty. You know it's disgusting. We both know that was disgusting. And we're seeing it again, and it's a chance for Diogo. Yeah. And there it is! Diogo Jota has won the tournament. Morris into Trezeguet. Oh, he's up by two! Goes back inside. Pogba gets it back, and it's a second! And now he has won. Tom, you are no longer the bridesmaid. You are now the oh. bride. You are the EU Premier League <laughs> champion. Finally! <laughs> As the ball goes out of play, it looks like on the sidelines, Marcus Ratchford is getting ready to be their first change today. Just getting his final checks from the physio by the looks of it. And he'll be looking to make an impact from the bench, most definitely. Uh, Hector, can you tell us about an Instagram post that you posted during Pride, I think last year? Um, yeah, tell us about the post and why you decided to do it, why you thought it was important. Well, I think there was someone uh, in the Pride Parade that I was wearing um, an Arsenal shirt with my name at the back and I thought uh, it was it was really cool, you know. I, um, I'm i not afraid to, you know, to, to help in any way I can and I thought that was um, something good to do and, you know, I love when someone uh, wears my shirt and they wear it proudly and, um, of course, it was I was really happy to, you know, repost it. To have someone who is a player for our club, part of our family, putting themselves out there saying, I support you, I support your group, who you are, you are a valid part of our family and the Arsenal community really spoke volumes. It's not something many professional footballers, I think, have or necessarily would do. And using, their plat using your platform, Hector, is just something that shows how much of an ally you are to us. And it means a lot to us to know that we have the support of 
players on the pitch as well as other people in the stand. Welcome back to the E Premier League. Loads of blockbuster action so far, and it's still going on, isn't it, Carl? It is, yes. There's plenty of action that we've seen so far. We can have a look at our results right now of all of the games that are currently happening. Now, in Group A, that game hasn't finished yet. We watched the end of that first half, and I'm just being told it's not 2-0. It's now 3-0 to West Bromwich Albion. Yes, Jazz taking on Manchester City's MCFC, Ryan in that elimination game. Group B... Saf Dragon for Manchester United. Well, Man United 4, Aston Villa 1. Group C is the game that we were watching before. 11 Stokes for Tottenham taking on NFG, who's representing Everton. That game is 1-1. One, one. And then Group D, Leicester City 3, Wolverhampton Wanderers 3. We can have a look at some of the goals as well from that one right now. This is the third one from that Group A match. West Bromwich Albion's Jazz 1895 was already two goals up and he made it three with that one in the 69th minute. So that means that that game, well, we've got to finish the first leg of it. Then there's a second leg of it and MCFC's Ryan has it all to do before, well, if he doesn't in that second leg, he's out of the tournament, isn't he? He is, and I'm just hearing it's now 4-0, oh. by the way. So it is going to be an uphill battle over there. But let's go back to that Everton versus Tottenham game. Mark and Dan, over to you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Kyle, I'm sorry. You know, I'm a big Ryan fan. You know, I, I've got a lot of respect for him as a player, but it does make me smile to see Man City for once failing at something. But uh, let's talk about this game. It is an elimination game and the pressure is so high on all of these players now. You know, we get through the first half, we get through the first legs of these and you're thinking, oh, it's nervy already. But when you have a scoreline which is so tight like it is between these two, I mean, this second leg, you can't really explain how tough it is for them to, to get through these big moments in the game when the pressure's on, when they've got to make a tackle, when they've got a finish of chance. It really just turns everything up to 11. It's all about trying to increase your chances of in the future getting sponsors, getting organisations. The further you get in any tournament is something to add to your highlight reel, something to add to your career that's going to be on the FIFA Wikipedia or whatever to say, I got to the quarterfinals of X tournament. I got to the semifinals, finals. And of course, the further you get, the closer you get to getting uh, a, pro a portion of that prize money as well, being able to have your slice of £40,000. So there is a lot of pressure. And the thing is, you can only face one game at a time. And you know if you get eliminated in, in the early stages, you've only got yourself to blame, realistically. But for Jaden versus Stokes, Stokes is the player who has more experience. He has got to the latter stages of tournaments. He won playoffs in FIFA 19. For Jaden, this is kind of uncharted territory for him. It is indeed. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of character Jaden is in these big pressure situations. If he can deal with it and how he can adjust to these kind of games against a player in Stokes who's been in these positions before, Dan, who knows what it takes to win a major tournament. We're going to find out now, though, as we're into our second leg. Is he going to be Everton or is he going to be Tottenham moving forward to the quarterfinals? You could ask the same question. Is it going to be Everton? Is it going to be Tottenham fighting for those Champions League spots? There's plenty to happen in real football and of course plenty to happen here on the virtual pitch as well but that is a mad dash down the left hand side by Traore. Yeah go on Adama you're on your way <laughs> once he was moving there wasn't much stopping him it actually took Adama Traore to make the tackle eventually which turned things over and it will be uh, NFG Jaden here for Everton who's going to play one of those long through balls forward again Bakayo Saka and he's going to be collecting that pass and maybe looking to continue his run good tackle though coming in from Stokes and one thing I've noticed is, is with these long through balls, not a lot of direct play after it's initially into those strikers. Both players looking to turn back and put a more traditional attack together instead of trying to burst beyond maybe with a bridge, maybe with one of those directional nutmegs. At the same time, it's almost like they're expecting an easy goal where they're not going to have to work too hard, where the through ball is going to do the job and they're just going to be running onto the goalkeeper and they'll focus on the finish rather than actually getting into that position. 
However, with Jaden's goal, we did see creativity. He is very good on the ball, and it's difficult to keep up with his play. Well, here's going to be Adama Traore inside the box, unfortunately. Kind of gets that one wrong, and it will be a goal kick here, which Joe Hart will send upfield. Of course, the flashback Joe Hart, 91 rated in game. And some people are wor wondering, why is Joe Hart in between the sticks here? A very, very useful foot item for these players, based in the Premier League, of course, for Tottenham. And now the Tottenham man, Stokes, is going to be striding forward here inside the box with St. Maximin. There's a ball roll, there's a scoop turn, there's a cutback as well. Fernandez looking for the finish, but the block comes in. Yeah, there was a little bit of everything there, and you could see Stokes nodding along. He's feeling it now, a bit of confidence through him. Rashford, unfortunately, meets Virgil van Dijk, who takes that ball off of him just as that confidence did start to flow. And then in response, you can see now, Jada going to fire this ball forward to Maximin. There is the directional nutmeg, but again, almost history repeating itself there as van Dijk is the player to step in and turn possession over. That's what van Dijk is good for, as long as he can go stride for stride and he can kind of go shoulder to shoulder or get in the way of those strikers. He's just an absolute solid force at the back. See another attempted cross into the box there for Stokes. That's how we got his goal in the first leg of this game. It was Kevin De Bruyne who managed to steal into the back post and nod it home past the goalkeeper. Fernandez will come back and pinch that one back off of Jadens. He was looking to formulate his attack, but certainly something he's looking to target then. Yeah, you'd think he's maybe just hoping for again a little bit of lady luck to allow him to go ahead here. Or maybe it's going to be something a little bit more devastating. Here's Kevin De Bruyne goes for that cut back, but again. The reach of Van Dijk, enough to stop that. I mean, you create your own luck, right? So if you're going to actually just try it every now and then, perhaps he feels like the through balls aren't working or he's not been able to break down that back line of Everton. He's saying, hey, let's try something a little bit different. That's a nice interception from Bruno Fernandes there as well to allow Stokes to once again attack in these early stages. So Dama Traore again, who's opening up those legs and flowing forward and using that pace to really get at those fullbacks. Kevin De Bruyne now, twisting and turning, looking to bait out a few players in the midfield. Mane into De Bruyne, good stuff going forward, but again, Van Dijk, he's just there when you need him at the moment. That through ball isn't going to quite get past the defender. You can see at the top of your screen as well, if there are any goals, you'll be notified very quickly. West Brom still with a 4-0 lead over Man City. And there has been a goal between Man United and Aston Villa. And it's going to be a fifth goal for Dragon and Man United. It's a very sloppy one. But in also a game where Dragon had lost that game earlier to Gwigsy in the winner's bracket. He's come back and he's shown what he can do. So perhaps Stokes can maybe channel the energy of Dragon and do the same. Well, certainly not a goal you're going to be uh, framing and putting up on the wall, but effective none nonetheless. And as we always say, in football or on the virtual pitch, they all count. But around 50 minutes left until half time between these two, and it has been a very different feel to this game down than what the scoreline suggested that we had earlier between the two. And you have to put that down to the elimination factor hanging over this game. In the other game, there was an opportunity to bounce back in the tournament as Joe Hart makes a phenomenal save. Got down to the ground, just punched it away far enough where it's not going to be a threat, a great save. But that was a massive, massive chance for Jaden, and boy, does he know it. And you are completely right. I mean, elimination games, they just add that extra factor, those extra nerves that come into play. And look at these players flowing forward now for Stokes. If he can pick someone out, there might be an opportunity. Alexander-Arnold, Kevin De Bruyne now. Little chop from him out to St. Maximin. He's got beyond the defensive line here. Goes for the cutback. Rashford, and it is the goal! Jaden couldn't take his chance at one end. And Stokes answers back by taking his at the other. And again, it's Stokes just trying to push the limits, going for a cross. It didn't work out, but the players were pressing up the pitch. He's able to win the ball back. And it's nice, fancy footwork in the box with St. Maximin. Gets the easy cutback to Rashford for one of the easier finishes he'll have in this competition. It's amazing how much that happens in FIFA as well. You're thinking back on that chance that you had, and then all of a sudden, up the other end, your opponent scores. There's a goal here coming in from Wolves as well, Dan. How about that? Sean Flossie, the lowest seed in this tournament, taking the lead against Nick Seb. That would be incredible if he's able to get through to the quarterfinals, but still plenty of time in that game. 
And back to our feet again then on the stroke of half time now. We're into stoppage time at the end of it. Set Maximin again, the creator, tries to go inside Fernandez. And that should be the referee bringing this half to an end. And the real story from that one, Dan, is those two chances. One player able to put the chance away, the other unfortunately not. Yeah, and you said it yourself. Sometimes it just happens where you're so close to scoring a goal, you think you're in the money, and then there's just a fantastic save from Joe Hart. And then right down the other end, when your mind is probably still thinking about that missed chance, you're not really focused, you may be player switching a little bit badly, or you don't quite have the coordination, and it looks sloppy defensively. There's slides coming in, Jaden just couldn't keep up with Stokes there. Yeah, you see that slide tackle coming in, I think that is a little bit of a mistake, maybe just trying to use you know the height of the presence of Van Dijk just to try and cut out that cutback that was inevitably coming but Stokes having the composure there to, to find the player inside the box and not only that put the finish on it as well uh, and that's the difference like you say you go back to that chance that Jaden had that's a better chance for Jaden than the one that Stokes actually managed to convert it's a straight 1v1 with the goalkeeper maybe expecting something uh, from goalkeeper movement overthinking the situation big moments unfortunately he didn't come up with a big answer as we uh, take a look at a goal from one of our other games down yeah there has been a another goal in that matchup, and that one was going for Aston Villa, actually. So maybe a late fight back between Guigzi and Dragon. As I said earlier, it was a 7 5 victory for Guigzi, but Dragon still holds the lead for Manchester United in that tie. But we're now back underway between Tottenham and Everton. And I wonder whether Stokes can hold on to this one. Well, Jaden will have chances. We know that Stokes loves to keep going forward, he loves to try and find that second and here is Jaden there's a directional nutmeg and this time he finds that near post and he finds the back of the net the perfect start to this second leg and all those bad memories have now evaporated if you can get through like that with a directional nutmeg it just seems like everything has presented itself to you and the goal is inevitable and for Stokes we've not seen enough of that I have to say there's been a lot of crosses there have been a lot of through balls but Maybe not enough skill moves to try and beat that final man. But he does have it in his arsenal, and I'm sure he's going to go for it, as now he's starting to skill a little bit more on the ball. Yeah, now you're seeing the tricks start to come out. Big tackle again by Virgil van Dijk, and the difficulty here is you have those two strikers, you have that central attacking midfielder as well, just waiting up pitch at the moment for Jaden. So if he can step out like that, with the likes of Van Dijk, win that ball back. He's just got the immediate opportunity to fire that ball forward as Walker steps in, but that's straight through the back of him. And that's going to be a free kick. Oh, and there's another goal between Wolves and Leicester, and it's Sean Flossy Ooh. again. And I reiterate, the bottom seed in the Xbox bracket, 20th, only 88 Global Series points. 88 Global Series points, but... A chance of making it through to the quarterfinals. I know that a lot of players would rather the quarterfinal spot than they would the Global Series ranking points, but back to our main game now. On the hour mark, 30 minutes left. One of these players to take the lead and potentially win this game. And Saka, burst past Adama Traore. Saka in here for Stokes, goes for the ball roll on the shot, and maybe the shot was the simple option. Yeah, I think a lot of players want to go for that extra percentage. They want to go for that ball roll to try and increase their chances of scoring, but sometimes you just got to let rip, you just got to hit it. And maybe he wasn't confident with Saka. Saka maybe not one of the best strikers to have in the game, but he can certainly put it away. There's an option to whip that one into the box as well with one of those low-driven crosses. Fernandez steps in, though. Jaden starting to look a little bit shaky at the back here, and Stokes looking to take advantage. Went for the cut back, but it will be a corner now. Always dangerous from corners as well. Try and find the big man, and there he is at the back post, but Nick Pope does enough to at least put him off, and it's another corner. We whipped in this time from the far side. Van Dijk being controlled manually inside the box, just trying to find a little pocket of space. Van Dijk will go up, but he will be challenged. Adama has to be careful here inside the box, and to be honest, for Jaden, he's done that extremely well. Especially considering the circumstances and the through ball is on. Can the defender wrestle him off? He can. Alexander Arnold doing his job. But you have to congratulate Jaden really for just being able to put up with that little bit of pressure, being composed in the box and passing the ball out, not giving it away, not making any mistakes. Well, look at this run here through the middle from Mane. Mane inside the 18 yards box. Will he shoot this time? Goes for the ball roll, turns back inside. Inside now to Fernandez. And again, the players just streaming back to defend. For Jaden, and another missed opportunity here for Stokes. That's two now. 
Inside of this second half, wins the ball back high up the pitch. Surely now, Sadio Mane against the goalkeeper, goes round him again. Just hit it. But he's not going to take advantage. He's in his own head now. Every time he's getting in a 1v1, he's going for a ball roll. He's had one, not two, but three chances to just strike it goal. If he had hit it every single time, surely one of those would have gone in. Well, another goal from one of our other games, Wolves versus Leicester. And it's Leicester who are looking to fight back now. Nick Snap getting that goal from the cross as we jump back to Tottenham versus Everton. And the EPL is surely starting to reach boiling point now. You see West Brom with a 6-0 lead over Man City as well. So it's going to be the end of the road for Manchester City and Ryan. Rashford inside the box here for Stokes. And finally, Tottenham will take the lead. He's been knocking on the door. And finally, he gets the answer that he wanted. But that one, a little bit of fortune going his way, but Rashford makes no mistake. And that's going to be a huge relief for Stokes after those missed chances. He won't have to look back and think about them anymore. Instead, he can just focus on trying to keep this lead for what is only 14 minutes left in the game. Tierney stepping forward now for Jaden. Jaden into Saka. Saka trying to get round his man. Well defended by Stokes and looking for that outlet, but... It's looking like it's going to come straight back at him now. Well, Wolves versus Leicester. Another game for a chance in the quarterfinals, and it's a big chance for Rashford here. Nice elastico. Oh, it's oh, beautiful wow. from Sean Flossie. He does not look like the bottom seed in this tournament. Now that is technical ability of the highest standard. And now for Stokes, the opportunity to play the ball in behind. Walker's going to keep this one in here. And for Everton fans, you need to get behind your boy right now. Jaden needs to create a chance inside these last 10 minutes as he almost slides through the player. Van Dijk again, a monster at the back. Now this is where we need to see the experience from Stokes. Dominate the possession, but take a chance if one presents itself. Rashford in on goal again, and not for the first time. Stokes fluffs his lines a little bit. And that's good news really for Jaden if he can force Stokes to still go for these opportunities. He will have chances to get a goal back. Saka now showing a little bit of experience. The opportunity maybe to play that one into the box, not taken. Value in possession of the ball. Over finding that decisive goal. You can see the pressure coming in from Jaden as well. He's doing everything he can to win the ball back. It must be so frustrating to see Stokes just popping it around like this. But this is excellent stuff from the Tottenham man. Very much textbook stuff. Switch the play, go to where there's the most space on the pitch, where there is as little players from your opposition. But this is where it gets a little bit scary. Nice turn, though, from Walker. Good composure from Stokes. And he just has to hang on for what is only one minute to have added on time. Yeah, stoppage time now. And if he can't win the ball back here, that will be game over. Stokes with some... Oh! Games was through the sack and stolen it away! No! And the referee brings the game to an end! Just as he'd won the ball back! Oh, that could have been so, so different there for Everton fans and for Jaden. I mean, but I think I think the defender had kind of stopped play there, but there was definitely a chance, the ball going into the box, and Jaden will probably feel a little bit hard done by, but Stokes had done the job. He'd run the clock down to the point where the referee blew the whistle. Yeah, Stokes getting the job done. Tottenham fans, you can finally rest easy as your man is still going to be moving on through the tournament. But that was such a nervy game. That's what these elimination games have been all about. They are, and they had the kind of the backup of being in the winner's bracket earlier and a loss meant they go into the lower bracket, but now a loss and you are out of the tournament. And for Jaden, I mean, it is going to be heartbreak for him. It was a fantastic tournament for him to even get this far and have the chance of going to the quarterfinals. But in the end, the experience of Stokes paid off. And it could have been five, it could have been yep. six from Stokes, if I'm completely honest. But he looked a little bit lacklustre in front of goal. Yeah, I think that's the one thing that we can take away. It was a... The, the right player maybe won that one at the end based on chance creation, but Stokes has got a few questions to answer. I'm sure he's posing himself at the moment as we do see that goal that was one of the deciding ones from Marcus Rashford there, but the amount of 1v1s that he situations he found himself in, Dan, and just couldn't convert. His brain is naturally going, right, if I can ball roll past the keeper, it's a guaranteed goal. But unfortunately, every time he got to the chance to ball roll, the keeper had come too far out, where either he was going to make a collision or the defender had got back. He should have just shot two or three times. And I think he'll know that. And he was shaking his head. And as long as he learns from that and he goes into this next game and he doesn't play too much of a percentage game, he should be all right. All right, then that's going to do it all from us for that game. Stokes was, of course, the winner. The Tottenham man is now with Nicole to have a quick chat.
Yes, Stokes, how are you feeling right now? That was a nervy game. Talk us through it. Um, yeah, no, nah, honestly, it, like, these sort of games, I'm, I'm usually terrible. Like, I'm the worst um, time waster of the ball like, ever. And um, I've been getting quite lucky this tournament. I feel like a lot of them bounces that I eventually scored, like, I scored the winning goal from a bounce, which was, um, I feel bad for Jaden, but like I'm, I'm glad like one finally happened for me sort of thing, you know? And also, you know, you just touched upon Jaden there. He's done really well today, hasn't he? Yeah, no, um, Jaden at the start of the year, like, I didn't really kind of know him. He was a guy that come into my stream and talk to me sometimes. I didn't, like, consider him as, like, a, a serious player, but, like, as the year's gone on, he's got better and better, and he's a very good player, like, very, very tough opponent, for sure. Yeah, because, like Gorilla said earlier, because you yourself are an experienced player, but when it comes down to the games, you just never know how it will go on the day, do you? Oh, no, absolutely not. And um, even my, my... I played against um, another guy called Alfie earlier. Mm. Uh, I didn't know him either, and just... They're just like, you can never uh, like write anyone off sort of thing. You can never think, oh, that's an easy win. Because I, I went into the second leg, I was three goals up, and I ended up having to win in the 90th minute. Like, it's, it's, it's games like those that you can easily slip up on. So, it's a very hard, like, every game's a hard game. But, well done. You must be buzzing right now. I mean, what's going through <laughs> your head? Yeah, no, I'm happy. Obviously, um, my year hasn't been as good as I want it to be. So, like, if I can get into the top four for this and get towards Friday, then that'll be obviously a massive, massive uh, move forward for myself. Have you thought about getting to that final? Have you kind of imagined lifting that trophy? Well, you won't. You wouldn't be here to do that anyway, would you? <laughs> but I could do it for you. Uh, yeah, no, I was, I was, I was gutted. I was gutted last year. I went out in this exact stage last year, and I, obviously, this is a really like, it's a different kind of style of tournament. Obviously, you're representing like someone that's not just yourself, you know. So it's, it's a big thing. And um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to the game. Versus, I think I played Oli. I'm looking forward to the game against Oli. Um, hopefully, I can win. And what are you going to take into this next game then? Uh, mainly not to uh, shield the ball in the corner in the last minute. I will not do that. Um, just play like I did there. I did. I think I could play quite well. It's just um, I need to be more clinical as well. Very, very poor in that game. So yeah, clinical and time waste better. I think. Mm -hmm. And just quickly, how much practice and research goes into a game like today? Um, yeah, no, you're always you're always practicing, you know, especially when these tournaments roll around, you want to like ramp everything up. I had to get used to all these new players, like a lot of these Premier League players I don't really use often, so it's been different, but yeah, obviously you need to put a lot of time in to get the rewards back. But are you feeling are you feeling a bit more confident now going forward? Um yeah, I, f I do feel confident, but at the same time I know like every everyone's so good and every game's very like not 50-50, but a lot, of, a lot of small things can decide these games. So I'm not going to go in overconfident. I'm just going to go in and play like I did there. And I think um, hopefully it'll be enough. Well, good luck. Thank you so much. Guys, over to you. There we go. Nicole, hands off that trophy. It's mine. Whenever the winner is announced, all right, whenever they win, I'm the one that's going to be lifting it. OK, so, yeah, keep your hands off. Right, Stokes makes his way through representing Tottenham right yeah. there. He seems quite confident, quietly confident, I'd say. Yeah, he seems very confident. Obviously got a very tough game to come, though, hasn't he? And there were some big results as well in, in there. Uh, you just mentioned, didn't you, Manchester City yourself, you want to get your hands on the trophy. Yeah. Well, Ryan won't be getting his hands on the trophy. That was a very, very tough result against Jazz. 7-1, Carl. I mean, I can't make any excuses. Absolutely heartbroken. Finished 8-2, actually. 8-2, it's finished. You, you ate to be a Manchester City fan right there. <laughs> I'll, I'll get that in. Uh, it is the latest result right there because it's not finished that one just yet. Another 8-2 result in Group B. Joe, stop smiling. I'm not even going to look at you. I can just—I know you're smiling. Manchester United, yes, Saf Dragon makes his way through on that one, winning 8-2. As we saw with that last game, it was much closer, a tighter affair with 11 Stokes representing Tottenham Hotspur, beating Everton, NFG, Jaden 3-2. And then in Group D, Leicester City 5, Wolves 7 which means that they go through. That game in Group A has finished as well. So, yeah, Jazz 1875 beating MCFC Ryan 8-2. Yeah, very impressive as well, because we were chatting to Ryan earlier in the week, weren't we? And he was saying that he's very confident about his group. He felt really good coming into it. And that'll be a bit of a shock to him, because after his first game, of course, he said didn't play well, not feeling good. So maybe he's just had an off day. 
maybe that can definitely happen as well. So sometimes it's really difficult because these competitors, they can train, they can put so many mm. hours in and then they get to these, these competitions, they get to the tournaments like the EPL and it just doesn't go their way. It doesn't go their way. One man's way it has gone though, our lowest ranked player in the export side of things, Sean Flossie representing Wolves. Let's go to Richard and Brandon. What's going on? I mean, uh, this is ridiculous. I mean, this is the furthest that Wolves have ever been in the E Premier League. The first time, uh, the third time in the competition, we should say. First year, got grouped. Second year, didn't make out the groups again. Year three, we're looking at a top eight finish. And Rich, you're going to talk me through some of the goals that this Wolverhampton Wanderers player scored because he was absolutely incredible. He's up against Footwiz Nixer of Leicester. Talk me through it. Yeah, I think one of the big sort of moments in these games is just the inexperience. He's sort of playing with what can I be described as sort of naivety. He's got no respect for anybody else, for the simple fact that he's not really played anybody. I've heard rumours that he's not even verified. So he's playing with just a sort of house money. And some of yep. these goals that he's scoring have been simply incredible. That one right there with Bruno Fernandes. And I just want to look at this goal here. This was scored in the game in general. And this dribbling from uh, Alan St. Maximin, there's a reason he's in the squad. He might not be the highest rated player, but it's the five-star skill capability. Just watch this goal right here. That close control, left stick dribbling, waiting. He gets the ball here into Bruno Fernandes, and then the reverse elastico. That skill move, the reverse elastico, is an exquisite skill move. Mm. Very simple to execute. Just a simple flick of the left stick in any direction. Better than the normal elastico, because it exit, and it also hasn't been patched. This entire year, it's a skill move that you have to get into your arsenal. And we have to talk about this, Rich. 88 Global Series ranking points this man has got. That's from just weekend league alone. What's he saying to the rest of the pack of this competition and people watching home that you don't need to be playing at these European tournaments. Just turn up, play your best FIFA and go knock out the big names and book a, what, a top eight finish? It's ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely. But I think as much as he's been and played incredible, there's other names that are sort of getting through and... I don't think we have given enough recognition. Diogo, big one from Chelsea. I think Stokes right there, getting through the, the group stages and not playing his best, but still getting through, mm. he's going to be one to watch. And I would probably say, for me right now, Tottenham, as a football club, are the favourites to go and lift the Premier League. Wow, there you go. I mean, on the PlayStation, they've got just as good, haven't they? In, uh, of course, hashtag Tom the Man that won the competition last year. Also, quick mention as well to Healy of Arsenal. Yeah, He's also booked play. a top-eight finish and a player that we haven't really spoken about, but that's just a couple of goals from the man of Wolverhampton Wanderers who's booked a top-eight finish. We're going to pass it back over to Joe and Kyle to chat about that man. Guys, incredible story. Oh, incredible indeed. That is what the EPL is all about. It's so great that I've yeah. mentioned it before. We can shine a light on all of these competitors and they're really taking their opportunity to be both hands, Joe. Definitely. I'm delighted to see Sean Flossie doing so well. Olalito versus Stokes, we're going to be looking at after the break as well. So I'm really excited about that one. I mean, it's getting more and more exciting. We're moving into the quarterfinals next. And yeah. this is where all of the action becomes even more heightened because they're thinking about the finals. They're thinking about making it to Friday as well. If they can make it through this next matchup, mm. they've booked themselves a day on day three of the EPL. Yeah, and let's not forget that we've got Liverpool versus Manchester United coming our way, Carl, haven't we? I mean, that's huge right there. There's so many games that are coming up, so make sure you do stick around with us. Yes, we're moving into the quarterfinals of the E Premier League, and we're going to be looking at Oli Lito, who's representing Leeds, taking on 11 Stokes, who's playing for Tottenham. That's coming your way. We'll see you after this break. I'm not happy with it at all. What are you not happy with? Man, for, for, like, for, for starters, I could at least be in the 80s. I've been 70 for the last three years. What do you think needs to change for FIFA 22? For starters, the rating of the card, I'm saying at 82. OK. Pace, I reckon we could go up another 10 to 75 at least. I think that's not being... I don't think that's being too harsh. Shooting, I reckon, can go up to 44 now. I think it could go up to at least... I can at least put it up 20 to 65 at least. 
passing, I think, could go up to an 80, maybe a 75, another 10, 80. Dribbling, I think, could go up to a 79. No, uh, yeah, like a 75, actually, dribbling. Defending, probably like an 81, 82 and physical, 81, 82. Nothing too major. I think just little upgrades. But I think like, I think last or the year before I had a team of the season for part, it was like in the objectives, it was like an 88. It was an absolute beast. People were buzzing off it. Sadio. Well, it is Sadio. It is Sadio. 94 pace. Is there anyone else you'd have up there alongside him, Robbo? Um, <clears throat> Joe Gomez. Yeah, no one's got down got... the second fastest in the club as Mo Salah. Oh, shock. Yeah, well, of course it's just to keep his fans happy. That's all that is. Welcome back to the E Premier League. My name's Kyle Walker. I'm joined by Joe Tomlinson as well. And Joe, we've had plenty of action so far. We're now moving into our quarterfinals of the E Premier League. There's some massive matchups as well coming up. Yeah, huge matchups. I've particularly got my eye on Tex versus Dragon there. Ooh. Liverpool versus Manchester United. Absolutely buzzing for that one. Dragon's already knocked Gorilla out of this competition as well. But the favourite is about to play for the Xbox side, Ololito, and I believe Nicole has him on the line. I do indeed. Ololito, how are you doing? You've had a very good competition so far, haven't you? Um, I'm doing fine. I think I'm playing quite decent. Um, and of course, you know, always trying my best to go as far as possible. And uh, I think I'm playing solid at the moment, for sure. Yeah, and you're playing Stokes next. How are you feeling about that game? Um, going to be a very, very tough game. I played some games versus him uh, before the tournament started and it's always uh, very, very close between me and him. So uh, looking forward to the game and uh, hopefully I can take the win and move into the semifinals. And what do you do before a game? What will be going through your head now? How do you manage to stay calm? Um, I don't know if I'm being honest. I'm just chilling here with my ha hand warmers, keeping my hands warm. Um, don't think of anything that I sh shouldn't be thinking of, basically. And uh, just, I, I just want to play now. I'm uh, excited to be on uh, broadcast. I th think this is my first time as well. So uh, looking forward to be playing. And you said before that you want to be a name that everyone talks about. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about you today. Does that give you more confidence? 
Um, I wouldn't say it gives me more confidence. Um, I like to have my feet on the ground and just be calm and relaxed every time. Um, so, uh, as I said, um, feeling confident, but this is going to be a super tough game and I can't uh, wait to start. And I know that you've got a really supportive family as well. They must be really proud of you today. Um, I hope so. I hope so. Mm -hmm. But I want to make it to top four, then I'm happy. <laughs> so, have you been thinking? So, obviously, You've got your eyes on the final. Have you been thinking about that moment or do you, would you kind of rather not go there yet in your head? No, uh, as you're saying, I take one game at a time. As I said, I have a very, very tough game now against Stokes. So uh, I do, I'm just focusing on that game at the moment and to see if I make it through. And uh, hopefully I, I will be in the final uh, on Friday. Well, good luck to you. Thank you so much. Back to you guys. Cheers, Nicole. Yeah, sounding pretty confident there. Oli Lito <laughs> has to be said. We can have a look at some of the other goals that we saw just a minute ago. This is, of course, West Brom versus Manchester City. Jazz really putting down a marker in this competition against Ryan Pessoa, who himself was pretty confident earlier in the week coming into it. But has to be said, this was this was some result. It was a bit of a jaw dropper. This finished 8-2. Um, and I think a lot of people will be surprised about that. You know, Jazz taking the first leg 4-0 and then taking the second leg 4-2. And, it, you know, at one stage, it was 7-0. Like, this is this is a serious marker laid down, isn't it, isn't it, by, um, by Jazz? It oh. is indeed. And you're looking at two competitors who've got a wealth of experience right there. 8-1 it was. Ryan gets that penalty, puts it away, but it was just another consolation. Moving into another game, Saf Dragon representing Manchester United. I don't know what he tried there with Penandes, uh, but nah. he managed to score the second <laughs> a chance, the rebound, and he was taking on Aston Villa's Gwigzit right there. Both of those games ended 8-2. One thing we can promise you, there's going to be plenty of goals, and we move into our quarterfinals right here, Joe. I said before, the action gets so much more heightened. Everyone... Now is thinking about Friday, thinking about the finals. Can they do it? Let's find out. We can go to our next game right there. Richard and Brandon, it's over to you guys. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yes, there's only eight teams that remain here on the Xbox in the E Premier League. We say goodbye to 12 of the clubs that came out to try and be the last one standing. By the end of play today, there will be just four Premier League clubs left with four players left on the Xbox, Richard. Our game of focus will be Leeds United against Spurs. I mean, this is Leeds' first ever E Premier League season. What a season they look to be having at the moment. Not only what a season, but what a player as well in Oli Lito. It's going to be a magnificent watch this game. I'm expecting lots of goals, a very tight first leg, and I think the second leg is going to explode into life. But Kyle Walker's probably just jinxed us and said that there's going to be loads of goals, so it's going to be a nil-nil penalty <laughs> shootout. I mean, just a quick word on Stokes, as you said. Had a very interesting run in his group in that bracket. He lost to, to Jaden by quite a score. Yeah. And then, as I think Onset said it perfectly in terms of it always seems to be the case in FIFA Esports. The person that wins the first time round doesn't win the second time round. And, and, and it just flipped on its head there. And that man on your screen ranked 70th in the global series rankings, but needs no introduction. He's a veteran in the competitive FIFA seat, is 11 Stokes. Of course, that's Gareth Bale's esports organization that he founded a couple of years ago now. And the question is, Richard, though, he's up against the man that's fifth on those rankings. And a man that's looking to get this game started with the perfect goal in Sadio Mane, teasing that back line back to Saka on the finesse, and it's only taken three minutes for Leeds United to get underway in this quarter-final. There's a reason that we've been speaking so highly of Oli Lito. He was a, a favourite coming into the competition with Leeds United. And Bakaya Saka, what a finish that is. Tucked into the top left corner. Oli Lito, 1-0 up in That's our quarter-final. Let's just remind you who has got through in that final. It's Leeds and West Brom from Group A. In Group B, it was Healy of Arsenal and Dragons Manchester United. Group D, we saw Tex, of course, a former E Premier League champion, go through alongside Sean Flossie. What a story that is for Wolves. A chance coming forward now for Stokes, trying to bundle his way through with Marcus Rashford. And, of course, last but not least, in Group C, we saw Stokes and Diogo of Chelsea able to break through. Of course, the other game that's underway at this moment in time is Arsenal against Wolves. I think two of the lesser-known players in this one, Richard, have had a brilliant run in this tournament for their team. The furthest that Wolves have ever been in the E Premier League. Flossie, a relative unknown coming into the tournament. 
the lowest seed in the tournament. 88 global series ranking points to his name. Goes to show what can be achieved. Looking at these teams, Rich, I'll give you a little bit of time to dissect them. Maybe people will be wondering why he is so good. Here's Oli Lito, chance to make it two. Sadio Mane is so clinical. And Oli Lito ensuring that every single Leeds fan watching right now is having the time of their life in the Premier League. In at that near post, Sadio Mane on the left foot. He even moved the goalkeeper to the near post with Joe Hart. Joe Hart not having a day to remember here at E-Premier League. And that foot freeze, Sadio Mane. Position change from a left winger to a striker. Going to do all the business for well, Olilito. Well, well, look at that score in the, top, in the top corner of your screen. The dream story for Wolves continues in the E-Premier League. Remember, we're only playing up to the semi-finals today, the top four, as that is what will happen on Friday. We'll have four players left on each console, all battling out for the chance to call themselves the E-Premier League champion. Sean Flossett having the tournament of his life right now. Here Jones. comes Stokes, looking for a way back into the tie. Rashford can't force by his way past the defender there. Just as I wanted to talk to you about Oli, uh, Oli Lito's team, why is it so good? I mean, it's the same team that he's been able to use throughout this whole tournament process. Saka, cheeky chip, maybe not on his own. Oh, oh my days, Oli Lito makes it three goals to nil. Oli Lito doing all the Oli's proud out there. Beautiful finish at the near post. 3 0 up. We'll see that first goal from Wolverhampton Wanderers here. This was Sean Flossy with Alan St. Maxim in. Out of the directional nutmeg, smashing it into the bottom left corner and putting Wolves 1 0 up in our second quarter final. I just want to talk about that quickly, for, especially for Sean Flossy. This E Premier League tournament, yes, there's money on the line. Yes, there's the chance to call yourself the E Premier League champion. But for players that aren't in the playoffs right now, Oli Lito. He's already in the playoffs. He doesn't need that playoff spot. Of course, it's a security there. That is a dream story for Sean Flossie. If, again, if he went and sort of became the Xbox champion here in the E Premier League. Also must be recorded as well. We have got an incredible game coming up in a little bit of time. Liverpool take on Manchester United in what plans to be an absolute thriller. And of course, on top of that, West Brom against Chelsea. Diego up against Jazz. That's your final eight on the Xbox side here in the E Premier League. Here comes Stokes again. It was quite a frustrating last leg for Stokes. He's getting into the right areas. He's finding the right opportunity. It's just that final ball, isn't it? That final combination that just hasn't been on his side in terms of a skill move. It's just it's not necessarily a skill move, but just that final piece to the puzzle is missing right now. Whether it be a skill move, whether it be a shot or a pass. Whereas on the other side of that, Oli Lito. He's looking remarkable in the attacking third. He's had three chances, scored three goals. There's a reason why. He's ranked number five in all of Europe on the Xbox this year. Interesting that you start Saka as well. Don't get me wrong, I know that future star item has got pace and it's very good in the final third. He already bagged himself a couple of goals with the item, it's Mane out on the left, it's Rashford there as well, he's got support from Hummin Song if he wants to... He's the Korean forward, it's just lots of pace, isn't there? Stokes, a frustrated figure right now in the bottom half of that webcam. He, he, nothing's really happening for him, and as this game goes on, normally in FIFA Esports we say the, the game's two legs, you've got loads of time to get back into it. Oli Lito is a different player. He is a champion. He's won previous events and he really is sort of got that winner's mentality. He doesn't let leads slip, typically. Three goals, that would be a capitulation for the Swede. Here comes number four, maybe. Saka, he'll two in the box, back to Min Song. Can he find De Bruyne on the edge of the box? De Bruyne will pick up possession, links back in with... Forward. Of course, you cannot forget Tom Stokes has been a playoff champion before out of hundreds upon thousands of players. That was, yes, some time ago, but still, those moments never leave you as a FIFA player. Top eight of the FIFA E World Cup as well. Can't forget that. And a player that came back into the scene after supposedly giving up for a period of time. It was the best decision he's ever made to come back and 
pick up all the success that he has. Rhys James away from fullback, that's what he's dealing with right now, having to get that future star item of Chelsea for. But look at the space to exploit on the flip side, is Mane. Rashford will try and make that looping run into the box, he's also got son of the back post, there's Saka there as well, they're all lining up. So Zinchenko Bruyne. has been very good defensively as well. Son looking for goal number four, teasing. Stokes does well! Oh, brilliant save from Hart. He needed Joe Hart right there. Just sort of saying that showdown plus Zinchenko. All the Hampton Wanderers. Two goals to nil. This is the fairy tale story for this man. Sean Flossy is having the time of his life. And look at the goals he's scoring. Oozing with confidence. Three or four step overs inside the box. The first shot unsuccessful, comes back to him, Elastico, and then rifle past the goalkeeper. Giant Stokes, this needs to go in, does well. Fortunately, not well enough to just get that extra inch past Virgil van Dijk there at the half-time whistle in the first leg. Three goals to nil, Oli Lito does lead. I mean, a brilliant start, so clinical has the Swede been in this game. So, so good going forward, Richard, and it's just so difficult for Stokes to let alone get a chance or even get a goal. And the one sort of real redeeming factor that's going to come out of these highlights is the fact that Olito didn't have 10, 15 chances, but the chances that he did have, he was scoring. Sloppy pass there in the midfield. And it's just a, such a quick counter-attack. That ball in behind for Sadio Mane. He's one-on-one. -on -one. Do I ball roll? Do I go past the goalkeeper? Even though he moves him to the near post, he still hit it. And Mane still scores. And now Saka in that one-on-one. -on -one just took past the goalkeeper at the near post. And in the second uh, half here, in the first leg, you see multiple changes coming on for Tottenham Hotspur's player in Stokes. Yeah, I think Stokes saying, I want to have a go of Saka and see what he's all about. It's a double Arsenal change, actually. So if you're a Spurs fan, maybe look away. It's Odegaard and Saka that come onto the field. Of course, we are playing on FIFA Ultimate Team with Premier League players only in you. Stokes, currently three goals down. He's got plenty of time left. Still a second leg to come. Mane does well. Brilliant feet in the box. Again, it's another great tackle. And just a quick word on. Sean Flossy. Do you think it's helped that he's not been on stream massively today? Yes, he was on stream against Tex, and that would have been a really testing game, but he's just been left to just go about his business, hasn't he? But even that game against Tex, it was still a very good performance from the Wolverhampton Wanderers man. Into Hoon Min Son! Oh, that's an awful finish. Tried to line up the shot, didn't he? Instead, he just kicked the grass. Is he on Chance. side? Rashford. Is he on? Needs to score this for Stokes! Going for that ball roll, and it's just often too late. You can understand why he's frustrated. He's done everything right, it's just not been able to gauge that extra pocket of space that he was looking for to get round the goalkeeper to make it a guaranteed goal. Well, he's also so frustrated, because that's not that's not the first time today where he's had an opportunity in a one-on-one, -on -one and it's not gone in for him. Oh, no, well, he leads to make matters worse. So oh, that's an own goal. That is an own goal to forget about. I have no idea what's happened. I don't think Tom Stokes needs <laughs> needs to know and wants to know either. We'll try and see it on the replay, but... It's a very good tackle from James. He's come across and just slide tackled the man and the ball into the back of the net. Olilito leads four goals to nil. In our other game, slightly more contested this one. Arsenal with a big goal back to half the deficit for Ashy. That's two goals to one right now. That's a harsh goal for Tom Stokes to concede there. He's, in his mind, he's done it from right and... He did do everything right, the tackle came in. No idea how the ball just found its way into the back of it. Four goals to nil now. This is a mountain to climb for Spurs. I mean, you said it, I know you might not want to back it up now, but you said Spurs might have a one of the better chances of winning the Premier League. Still got another day, Brandon. Still got a PlayStation <laughs> to come up. Still we got do. Hashtag we do. to play. But right now, Leeds United looking for a fifth goal in the first leg. Son round the corner to make matters worse. It is going to be five! And it's five of the best for Leeds United. Leeds United fans rejoice around the nation right now because your player in Olilito is doing Leeds proud. First ever season in the E Premier League. And boy, what a season it is. What a tournament it is for Leeds. Yes, we said we've already said goodbye to 12 clubs after these next couple of games. We'll be saying goodbye to four more. At the moment, it looks like 
Leeds and Olilita will be the first name in the hat for Friday's finals. Yes, he was a, a name that everyone was talking about. Chance Stokes has to score. Surely, no, there's still no way past Olilito. Stokes just simply cannot buy a goal right now. Whatever he's doing in the final third doesn't seem to be working. And the even more frustrating part of that is your opponent, everything is going for them. Anything that he gets inside the box, he's just gobbling it up. Chance for another one. Mane now. Not that time. Can squeeze it past Joe Hart on that angle. 70th minute now, ticking over. Five goals to nil. Just something for Tom Stokes to take out of this game for Spurs is needed. A goal. Most definitely. Doesn't help that your opponent is so clinical, as you've said, in the final third. He's had so many opportunities to get reps in this year in Global Series tournaments outside of the Premier League. Hence why he's fifth is it? on the rankings, just <laughs> offside. Well, six goals in that game. Again, though, what do we talk about? You've got to stay in front. Even when your opponent gets a goal or two back, Sean Flossy still got that two-goal cushion, Richard. Now four goals to two. Wolverhampton Wanderers leading against Arsenal. On the side of that, Tottenham Hotspur struggling to do anything here against Olilito and Leeds. Marcus Rashford just turning straight into Virgil van Dijk. And whenever those white shirts flood forward, it looks like Olilito is in to score. This was the goal here for Flossy to send him into that 4-2 lead. Joining the action back right now, Marcus Rashford will blow past the goalkeeper just offside. We'll still lead 4-2. Remember, whoever wins goes into Friday's final of the E Premier League. Chance needs this to go in. Marcus Rashford, scoop turn well. Fortunately, scoop turns into the tackle of Virgil van Dijk. Oli Lito playing out of his skin right now. Incredible stuff. Defending well, attacking well. He's even had a little bit of fortune on its side as well, especially with that fourth goal. And this is a, a very tough task as well, because Tom Stokes is a, a, a top, top FIFA player. He's been a champion in previous FIFAs. He's been highly regarded as one of the best players, not only in the UK, but in the world. And I'll be honest with you, Olito is making him look very ordinary right now. And Stokes is a special player, but I think that also just goes to show how good Olilito is playing right now. I think many would have said he was the favourite coming into this for Leeds. Arsenal get a goal back. That's Healy of Arsenal. Only four goals to three now. Watch that in the right top corner. We've still got two quarter finals also coming up today. It's West Brom against Chelsea. That's Jazz against Diogo. And the big one. The fans' favourite in real life, I'm sure, will be the same on the virtual pitch. It's Manchester United Dragon up against Tex in Liverpool, the former E Premier League champion, last year's Xbox console finalist. Rematch, actually, from 2019. Liverpool and Man United met in the grand final, the cross console final for all the marbles. It's Kyle Lees representing United on that occasion. Different player, same team. Last chance of the game then. Can Stokes have anything to cheer about in that first game? Bruno Fernandes, back to Mane, Charles Rashford, something, there's something for him to hold on to, just one goal. A sliver of hope right now for Tom Stokes. It's been a pretty woeful first leg for him, but it gives himself hope, and that's all he has right now. Five goals to one he trails, but if he comes out in that second leg firing, we never know. We nearly saw it happen. Yeah. With Gorilla and uh, Sheffield United against Manchester United earlier on in the group stages. Quarter-final right now. It has to go for Stokes if he wants any hope of getting into the latter stages and making it into fi Friday's finals. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a tough game, wasn't it? We'll have a look at the highlights from it, Richard. It was one-way traffic for so long in the game, but what a first 45 it was from Olilito. You just see that close control dribbling. Saka was the recipient of the assist and the dribbling from Sadio Mane, but Mane got a goal to add himself at the near post. Joe Hart, unfortunately, nothing he could do about it. Saka has doubled up on his own tally, smashing past the goalkeeper at the near post. And in the second half, it was more of the same yeah, for this was... Olilito. This was quite, quite harsh, I'll yeah. be honest. It's a good tackle. <laughs> from James, he came across, and that sort of killed the confidence as well of Stokes. You saw he looked a lot more deflated, he looked defeated, I'll be honest. 
in that first leg when that goal did go in, as anybody would be. That double tap pass into Marcus Rashford, making it 5 0 for Oyelito. And just that reaction right there, I think he also just deep breath. I'm 5 0 up. I'm feeling good right now. However, late goal to potentially pull Stokes out. Yeah, pull him out of a hole he's in at the moment. He's currently down by four goals still, but he needed something to talk about and something to celebrate in that first <laughs> game because it was a real tough one for him. But everyone's been talking about Leeds and Oli Leto, saying yeah. that he is one of the favourites on this Xbox. And with performances like that, not a group game in a quarter final. It, it's, it's, you know, it's pretty easy to believe these these people that are saying this right now. Well, not only the fact that it was in a quarter final, but for Oli Leto, quarter final, semi final. The only thing that matters is winning this trophy. And for a lot of Leeds fans, that was going to be huge sort of relief knowing that you've got a player who is fully dedicated and also I think expects himself to win yeah. this trophy you just see his approach very calm there's no real tension about him he's just stepping into the matches playing his FIFA and moving on and he looks just really really composed does Olilito. Yeah, and a quick word as well on the other game that we saw at the halfway point. Wolves just about in front against Arsenal and Healy. The dream story continues for Sean Flossie, the lowest seed in this whole tournament. Just going to say, why not me? If I'm a football fan Absolutely. out there, someone that wants to play FIFA competitively, why can't I go in and cause an upset? And he's doing that right now for Wolves. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen sort of a sprinkle of his goals that he's been scoring. He looks creative in the final third. He looks really sort of just, he looks like he's having fun really, with a lot of goals he's scoring. I'll be looking to see if he can continue that and does make it through to the top four on Friday. Yeah, we're going to pass it back down to Joe and Carl. Now, they've been watching all the action. Gents, what are you making of the game so far? Absolutely loving it. Richard, Brandon, thank you so much for that one right there. Both of those quarterfinals are underway. We can see the results just here. That first matchup we were watching, Oli Leto playing for Leeds. 5-1 against Stokes for Tottenham. And then in our other quarter-final, that is happening. Arsenal taking on Wolves. It is Sean Flossie. Four goals up to Healy's three right there. Those two quarter-finals have got 90 in-game minutes to go. And then we'll find out who progresses through, Joe. Yeah, absolutely buzzing. I am keep banging on about that fixture as well. One to watch Tex versus Dragon, Liverpool versus Manchester United. A historically huge Premier League fixture and we're going to see it in the EPL here but it has to be said we spoke to Oli Lito on Nicole did like five ten minutes ago he was very confident coming into this one and it's proved to be 5-1. It was yeah he came out he flew out of the starting blocks yeah. right there that is why he's at the top of the FIFA Global Series rankings we know just how good he is the best in Europe on yeah. the Xbox if you looked at those rankings yeah. right there and he's proving it with all of his uh, all of his performances today. Yeah but he's not even really the talking point the talking point Sean Flossie the lowest ranked player and representing Wolves he's having an unbelievable time of it Mark and Dan what have you made of it? He is having an unbelievable day, Dan, and quite rightly so that you're highlighting him. He's been involved in a crazy game with Arsenal as well and Healy. And we're going to take a look at some of the goals that we've just seen from this game because it's a perfect example, Dan, of how in FIFA 21, you're never out of a game. Yeah, I'm in 88 Global Series ranking points. The bottom seed we see Sean Flossie. And going up against Healy, who has been playing incredible throughout this tournament, but Sean Flossie just knows when to hit it. We saw Stokes earlier really struggling when he's through on goal, when he gets into the 1v1 situations. How is Sean, Flo Sean Flossie? He knows when to shoot. OK, he gets a little bit of fortune here or there, but the fact he's creating that luck, he's creating those chances by going forward and taking those shots, Mark. Yeah, I mean, there's a few little mechanical things in there. You're seeing some Elasticos, you're seeing some Croquettas, but a 2 new up, Healy answers back. And I've got to give a big shout-out to both of these players because they're not big names in the FIFA scene, but they're making themselves big names in the FIFA scene. And then all of a sudden, after that goal, Healy unfortunately concedes again, and this time it's from a corner down. Yeah, but again, just hitting it when he sees that opportunity arise with Adama Traore. It's on his left foot, does just bounce off the crossbar. There was a little bit of hope for Healy coming back into the game. Again, a little bit of fortune, just trying to get into those dangerous areas, counting on maybe a little bit of luck bouncing off the players. Then this was really the killer goal, just a nice little one-two back and forth, very simple football a very effective football match. Well, you thought it was a killer goal, but then, all of a sudden, right at the end of the game, you get a corner, you get a set piece. We've seen him taken short, but also, get the ball into the box. When you've got the likes of Van Dijk, when you've got the likes of Carl Walker, who can win those headers, you can just get that ball in the last minute, and, you know, you can win a header and get yourself back into the game. This game is poised absolutely beautifully, and to be honest with you, Dan, I don't know what way, what way it's going to go. I think for both of these players, it's a huge, huge result. It's uh, an incredible first game, an extraordinary first game, really, to see the likes of Sean Flossie here when 
a lot of people would have predicted him to go out in the early stages of this competition. But he's still here, he's still fighting, and I'm excited to see what happens in this second leg, Mark. But, you know, what's going to happen? Who do you think is going to win? I don't know. We'll find out from the desk, though. We're going to get their opinions on it. We'll go back to you now. Uh, you're never out of a game of FIFA. I'm staying very tight-lipped about who's going to win, by the way. I I'm really not too sure. I'm on the fence. I'm firmly on the fence, Carl. I'm just going to keep on scoring those headers. Uh, it's not me, same name, obviously, but you know, <laughs> I'm going to keep on scoring those headers. I'm not yeah. saying who's going to win because I always get it wrong, Joe. You do. You do. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Right, let's move on because it is time now for a quick break. After it, you'll see the second leg of Leeds versus Tottenham Hotspur. Don't go anywhere. Back with you in just a minute. Good result there. That's the final whistle in North London. Harry Kane steps up yet again for Tottenham. Big points in the bag. What are your Great game, Harry. Cheers, mate. Such a clinical finish from a top class striker. I learn from different people every day, different cultures, people with different coloured skin. And it makes no difference, you know. My advice would be to stand strong and comfortable in yourself and speak to whoever you need to speak to, whether that be your family members or your friends, and don't be afraid. We're teammates, regardless of, of our, our skin colour and our ethnicity. Um, but if anything was to happen, it's I know that I've got the backing of my teammates and likewise they have me in that respect because it's, it's, a, it's kind of like a family type environment. So, you know, we're there for each other when we need to be. You see our chain room, it's full of people from all over the world, but I think that what makes us such a good change room is that we come from all over, but we want to sooner to come into that change room. I think especially my teammates, it's it's not necessarily being captain, it's more being a friend and knowing that they can come to me for anything they want, and if, if something was to happen on a football pitch, outside of football, whether that may be, all the lads in that change room know they can ring me straight away and we'll, we'll get it sorted and we'll sort out whatever's going on straight away. I think now we all know that racism's there, and it's about not waiting for it to happen. It's making sure we do things before it happens because it's important now that our eyes are all open to the matter and that we're all trying to make change, but it's important we use our platform to make change. You know, everything can help. Some people like a hugs, other people just some support or speaking or encouraging. I think at that moment you just feel like you need some positivity and you want to feel like you're in the comfort zone and protected. Uh, but other than that, I would say just try to say something and make it stop and then yeah, just trying to understand more about the situation, I think. It's so important that you, you know, you create that bond and um, when you're in that team environment, you want to stick up for your mates and make sure your, your mates are feeling OK and not going through any, any unneeded stresses. It's important to, to ask, you know, your teammate to your right, to your left, you know, how are you? Because you don't always know what people are going through behind the scenes. It's always, always important to talk, you know, no matter how, how young you are, whether it's to your teachers, to your friends, to your manager, to, to your boss at work, um, to your parents. It's just, it's just vital to, to talk and, and there's so many people out there that, that will want to help. I have good family members. My nan um, was a big role model for me and even still now I still stay in touch with with my um, one of my old school teachers now and I've got decisions I need to make, I ring him. What do you think of this? I think it's just recognising, you know, who the good people are around you and actually keeping them tight and holding on to them because the older you get you do realise that actually they've been a massive help and you'll need them even when you are an adult. For this moment, black people need everyone's help and then let's fight racism the way we try and fight the virus by coming together.
Welcome back to the E Premier League. I'm Joe Thomas and joining me, Carl Walker. Carl, what's coming up? Oh, we're back into our second leg. Yes, we're ready to go in that quarterfinals. Yes, it's Leeds taking on Tottenham. Oli Lito taking on Stokes. Who comes out on top? Richard, Brandon, you guys take it away. Thank you very much, Kyle and Joe. What a tie we have got right here. Oli Lito, 5-1 up. Tom Stokes needs a miracle if he wants to get back into this game. Has he got a miracle in his locker? I mean, the question is, if Oli Lito scores again, is that it's game set right match? Is that Leeds right United off. in a semi-final in their first ever E Premier League? And that'll be the end of the road for Spurs, unfortunately. On the flip side of that, what a narrow game it is currently between Arsenal and Wolves. Sean Flossie, we keep talking about him, but we also <laughs> talked about, of course, Arsenal's representative yeah. in Healy. What a, a breakout tour they're both having, in all honesty. Yeah, incredible scenes for both of those two. Two sort of rookies coming into this tournament, not a lot of experience between them find themselves in the quarter-final stages of the E Premier League. That's something to put on your FIFA CV. Down the line. Here we go, then. Second leg on the white. Spurs from left to right. In that white shirt, blue shorts, white socks, of course. Leads in their away strip from right to left here. They'll be over the moon with the start that their Xbox representative is having this year. In Oli Lito, one more goal for me would send him into a semi-final. Looks to find it early. Saka, where's that cutback? Humming Song's in the box. It was a great idea. Oh, still could be alive. Stokes has got to start better. He has to score the first goal. If there's any chance of a comeback. Look at the space. Mane, son, they lean to change superbly well. Mistakes like that have to be eradicated from Stokes' game if he wants to try and perform this comeback. We saw, as you said, an incredible game earlier today. Stokes coming forward numbers. Gorilla nearly turned it around against Dragon in that elimination game. Unfortunately, it was just too big of an ask. He, need, he also needed four goals as well, Richard. And despite three goals in 30 minutes in that second leg, just didn't have enough in the tank to turn that full game around. And I mean, that's the first leg you want to have. Of course, five and it would have been nicer than five one, but four still. goals still in front is. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, you're still in a very demanding position, a very comfortable position. Marcus Rashford looking to turn past Rhys James. One of our quarterfinals is five goals to one. The, the other one, four apiece. It's a running race. Now, look, Mane's on site. It could be through. I think he is. Ball roll. That's Leeds. In my opinion, on their way to a semi-final. That's six goals to one in aggregate. And I don't know what it's been this game. But Oli Lito is just pulling apart Tom Stokes' defence. I don't know if it's the manual sort of player switch he's doing at times. He's pulled players up and Oli Lito has just found all the gaps. Let's just jump over to this game quickly. Three minutes in, the Gunas have responded. 4-4. Four, four. Wow. Unbelievable. Arsenal and Wolverhampton Wanderers. Nothing to separate those two sides at all in our featured quarter-final. 6-1, Oli Lito score at Lotto Leeds. We said that Stokes had to score the first goal in this second leg. It's gone against him, and really, is it just a case of... by how many now, unfortunately? Look at the space. Could be worse. Back Rashford post. out. Can he find a cutback? We'll try and go on his own. We'll win a corner for his efforts. This must be so difficult for Stokes. He needs five goals, and it's just a shame he's up against one of the best players currently. Not just in Europe, but in the world. It's not only that, but I think Stokes, by his own admission, will admit that he's not played that well in this game. He, he's very honest with his performance. If he knows that he's playing well and he knows that he's played well, uh, he sort of had a good game in FIFA. And... Surely not a direct shot from here. Going to go for it. Bruno Fernandes! Oh! That is a man that's full of confidence right now. But as I was just saying, he's also very honest when he's not played well. And he'll admit that. He'll say, I wasn't at my A game at all. Coming into this game, he'll have certainly known that Oli Lito was on good form. Look at his face. He had to play his best. Rashford to make it seven. Ball back inside. Hummin Son, what a save. Brilliant bit of goalkeeper movement there from Joe Hart. But shame. It's just a little bit too late. I mean, six goals to one. It might make sense to jump over to the other game which is a bit more tight, I mean, much more tight, so it's 4-4 between Arsenal and Wolves. We'll look to play out this attack now. 
And then we'll try and join. That game, oh no, there's been another goal. Arsenal with the ultimate turnaround. They have been full of those results today. They were losing 4-1 to Brian in the group stages. They came back and one of the penalty shoots out. And now they're about to flip that game on the head and to end the fairy tale story for Wolves. And an inconfidence, Tom Stokes shoots there at the near post when the ball rolls into him. You can just see the confidence he's been drained from him by this commanding position that Olito is in. Arsenal, Wolverhampton Wanderers. Arsenal taking the lead in this back and forth tie. Bruno Fernandes shot rebounded into Marcus Rashford. Lovely ball or scoop turn and finds the near post. Does Healy five goals to four now? He leads. Yeah, it was a bit of a scrappy build up that, but a really well taken finish. The ball row into the scoop turn through the legs. Here we go, then let's jump over to that game. All the eyes should be on it. We are going to look at it now. I'll tell you what, some of the skills and the combinations in the final third. These two might be lesser known players in the global series, but no doubt, should they not be taken seriously? They've done so well to represent these two clubs and to get to the Premier League finals. They've knocked out some huge names on the way through. Currently, 5-4. Arsenal lead. Is he onside? He is. Chance! Oh. Oh. Bruno, Bruno Fernandes. Fernandes. You expected to be on target from there. Oh, how on earth has he put that wide? Went for the first time strike across the goalkeeper. The only thing you can say is on his left foot, but still you expect Bruno to score. I'm coming into this. 20th seed in the tournament, he's only got 88 ranking points to his name. If you don't know what that means, it basically means that this is a bit of a breakout performance and a first ever tournament for Sean Flossett. Did so well to get through the playoffs and he's just so full of confidence in front of goals. Scoop turn, I don't know if he went the right way, he should have went the other way. He did well to get the ball roll off, then oh. cut back inside on a scoop turn and by that point there was just bodies at the back to defend. No, it was incredible attacking play. The ball all scooped in. A glorious move. It's just very unlucky, really, that there was two bodies on the line defending. Managed to get a block off. It's one thing that we've come to sort of expect now from Sean Flossy in the final third. It is so good. However, it's even better from Arsenal at the moment. Nick Pope, got to be careful there, nearly caught in no man's land. Who's that ball back forward? Arsenal will then put the pressure on again. Same Maximin. Needs an option. Needs to get that ball to Bruno if he can in the box. Still brilliant feet. Back to Walker, it's an ugly chance! Oh, he's offside. Just offside. Looking to cement his position. By adding that sixth goal for Healy. Look at the press though, Surely. Saka this time. Last chance of the half, Sam Maxim in this time, just about doing enough. And we have to be honest, looking at that Group B that Healy was in of Arsenal, I don't think many would have expected him to get out of that group. He was the 10th seed in the tournament. We had Gorilla in there, he didn't get through. We had bundled Luca of Brian again. Yes, first tournament for him as well, didn't get through. Once the was the 7th ranked seed coming into the EPL. Dragon, as we know, did get through. But Quigsy, he started so well. Yeah. You wouldn't think that he would have fallen out of the tournament, but he did. Last chance of the half. Fall into Arsenal, fall into Alan St. Max and Min. That is absolutely beautiful. Arsenal Football Club 6 4 up right now is Healy. You see the formation he's playing. If you want to take some notes at home, 4 3 1 2. What a performance that he's putting on right now. And sort of typical Arsenal back in the day when it was that uh, va va voom style of play. He is. <laughs> what a goal. Just the, the confidence that he's playing with. I think you look at what. Uh, Flossie's doing as well. When he lost against Tex, because he didn't lose massively, he didn't get smashed by him, you take confidence from that. You take a lot of confidence sometimes from a loss. And both of these two, speaking of confidence, sky high right now. Well, they're both playing for playoff spots as well. Yes, they're playing to win the Premier League and to get into the final day. This is the, the first half highlights. Bit of a scrappy goal, but that was class from Rashford. Scoop turn through the legs. This goal, picture perfect from Healy. Sit back, watch it, enjoy it. Absolutely incredible. Just look at the passing in around the box. Alan St. Maximin with the ball roll. Scoop turn back into the space and then just slid across. Chancier coming in for... Stokes, and it looks like Marcus Rashford smashing in at the near post. That's six goals to two. Still a lot of time left in the second half. 
if Polilito's controller dies, maybe he might be able to get back into the game. I mean, yeah, it would be a, a huge ass there. We'll keep you up to date with the second half of proceedings. We're back to this game now. Wolves are behind, six goals to four. Arsenal Healy leads, chance, Rashford. It's so silky! Every single time in the box, he looks like he's going to score. And Sean Flossie, once again, the Elastico of dreams. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's going inside or outside on the reverse Elastico. It's incredible from Flossie at every single opportunity. Whenever he gets inside the box, he's looking to do a skill move. He's looking to create a dribbling avenue to go down. Arsenal, oh, no, it's even better. Oh, oh the lack of why did he not connect onto the chance? You've got to be asking questions how he's not locked onto that. Oh, he'll be heartbroken, because that was a picture-perfect La Croqueta as well, and some of the... Uh, maybe a counter-attack. Chance for Sean Flossie now, on the other end. But in moments like this, both of the two are just oozing with confidence in the final third. Their combinations are on point, whether that's ball roll, scoop, turns, or skill moves being cancelled, and then reworked into another chance or another skill. Both of these two putting an absolute show right now for everybody watching at home. Some of the best FIFA we've seen here in the e Premier League is coming in this game right now. That's what it's all, it's all about, showcasing some of the very best FIFA talent there is. Chance, again, reverse Elastico, can't get around Virgil van Dijk that time. 30 minutes left, remember, winner of this game plays the winner of that Leeds-Spurs game. So at the moment, it would be Arsenal against Leeds. I mean, unfortunately, not a North London derby that I'm sure a lot of people would have been praying for in the semi-final. Because it's just too much of an ask for Stokes at the moment. So Maximin coming forward again for Arsenal now with Healy. Defends well, Virgil van Dijk all the way up from centre-back. Chance to break, numbers forward. Only a goal between the two. Steve Berg won. Rashford's in the box. People queuing up, players queuing up for the chance. Does well to keep possession, he's got pressure from Trent. Back to Saka, fake shot back inside. It's Carl Walker that's needed to come to the rescue. Just enough bodies at the back there for Healy as he looked to turn back inside with Saka. If there was just one more five-star skiller in the Premier League who could go for oh, it, like Rashford. Rashford, can he stay composed? Cuts back inside again, it's another last-ditch tackle. If there was another five-star skiller, the attacking options would be so much more sort of just accessible. There's really a lack of out-and-out -out strikers, out-and-out -out attackers. Bruno Fernandes, he's playing striker right there. He, he was up top. Alan St. Maximin at Cam, Bruno is that striker. So I think that just is a perfect example of the lack of real out-and-out -out number nines that we've got yeah. in, in the Premier League in FIFA 21. I mean, the only players that are strikers, they're coming off on the bench about 65th minute. It's Abama Yang. We saw Giroud make one appearance, I think, early today for Manchester City. Ryan, who fortunately is now out of the tournament. But they're more super subs, these strikers, aren't they? Because, as you said, there's other ways you can fit better players into the team. Not only that, but we've got strikers. Harry Kane's rule breaker, Sergio Aguero's flashback. They're not meta, though. They're not skillers. That's always going to bounce over. The five-star skill, pacey attackers. It's Rashford or St. Maximin. As we know, that third in form, Rashford, is a, a left midfielder. However, in-game, you can move it around, as these pros will do. Winner will play Leeds United. Oli Lito was up by four goals last time he checked in. It's past him. Certainly feels like he's on top now, Sean Flossick. Chance around the corner, here's Rashford. Well played by Healy, who came from behind in this game. He had the first half of dreams. Three goals he scored. One more would maybe conclude the tie for him and send Arsenal into a semi-final. Chance, goal, Arsenal! Could be on their way to a top-four finish with Bruno Fernandes at the heart of the attack and, more importantly, with potentially the match winner. Bruno Fernandes popping up inside the box. One touch and then just smashed past the goalkeeper. No chance at all that he's ever going to get across. Look at that foot item. 97 shooting, 98 passing, 98 dribbling for Team of the Year Bruno. The best player in FIFA 21 in the Premier League. And he's proved it time and time again today. 
There's 15 minutes left. Two goals are needed for Wolves. If there's any hope of extra time or a comeback here. Needs to see the best version of Sean Flossy. Dancing, twisting the box again. He's just offside. That was Alan St. Maxim in there, finding the perfect combo. Reverse elasticos into the scoop turns, the ball rolls. Everything was coming out from the French forward. Twelve minutes left. What a second leg from Healy, by the way. Just I know we've talked a lot about Flossie, but 4-1, this second leg. People often talk about the Premier League being a special virtual league. And look no further for the stories we're looking at here. Two players that may not have been spoken about in detail, may not have been hyped up to the level that they... thought they deserved, and with the way they're playing, most definitely they will be hyped up. What's that back post? Bruno Fernandes goes on his own, looks to go back inside to Bergwijn. Rashford's going to be on side. Marcus Rashford to set us up for a Grand Slam finish with eight minutes left. Only a goal between the two. And what is that? 13 goals? What a spectacle. Both of these two should be so, so proud of what, are they, what they're doing right now. Just looking off the bench, going into a five-back is Healy. Roberto Firmino going to be coming on for Curtis Jones. Sadio Mane being introduced as well very recently as that out-and-out -out striker. On the other side, I imagine very attacking-minded changes for Flossie to try and get that goal to send us into extra time. You can just see this game, unfortunately, ran away from Tom Stokes, Olilito, adding another goal to the tally, 13-2. Leeds fans must be rubbing their hands, thinking, wow, we, we are in for a treat. That means that Leeds will be involved in Friday's finals. The first team to be confirmed. Who will they be playing against, though? Will it be Arsenal or will it be Wolves? Five minutes left in this game. Arsenal lead 7-6 on aggregate. You can imagine that Sean Flossie of Wolves is going to have to pile numbers four, but that will mean that gaps will appear at the back now. If Wolves win the ball back once, they might have a chance. Game management now will be the key. Offside, win the ball back. This is their final chance of the game. And it might come to nothing. Wins the ball back, Trent. Good feet from De Bruyne, well defended by Bruno Fernandes. It's exactly where you want the ball to be. A minute left plus additional time. Wolves score, we go to extra time. It's that simple. Sean Flossie, he has been the surprise package in this tournament. Brilliant feet, St. Maximin. Oh, no! Zinchenko! Oh, Zinchenko, you beauty, what a header! Still it's alive, back to goal, he can't turn! Zinchenko, the Ukrainian, has just sent Arsenal into a top four finish. What? It was sobbed on in extra time. How on earth has that not gone in? And I mean, I, I don't want to go on a limb, but from Sean Flossie, it was so silk in the box. Did he need the extra he needed chance? It. He needed it. The double elastic R was outrageous. Zinchenko with an unbelievable header. Look how good this is, though, off of the from line. Sean Flossie. This was the goal at seven goals to six, and that was the reaction when Zinchenko headed it off of the line. <laughs> Remarkable. Oh, wow. You don't often see that. <laughs> that was, if, I can't even speak. Cannot even speak. Absolutely ridiculous. That means that two of the quarterfinals are done and dusted. Oli Lito was running away 13-2 in the end. It was one of those, just too much of a mountain to climb for Tom Stokes, of course, for Spurs. Still a top four, uh, top eight finish for him on the console. Doesn't mean any points, doesn't mean any prize money, unfortunately. On the flip side, Leeds United, debut season in the E Premier League. All the hope will be in Oli Lito to go and finish the job on Friday. That means Arsenal leads. That's the semi-final, written down in paper for Friday. Arsenal and Wolverhampton Wanderers, there was 13 goals altogether. Oli Lito scored 13 goals on his own. Who on earth is going to stop Oli Lito? That's the question, Brandon. Incredible stuff. I mean, again, that is two of the quarterfinals done. There will be two more on their way very, very soon. But for the meantime, we're going to throw over to Nicole, who I believe could be speaking to a lucky winner. Yes, I've got Healy here. Oh, my God. What a game. So many goals. I mean, right at the end there as well. What was going through your head? Um... No, it weren't great. I can't lie. I'm the worst anyone that 
that I know in the scene will tell you that when I'm in that kind of situation, I'm I'm awful and I could feel another goal coming. Um, but Zinchenko bailed me out in the end. You must have felt so nervous there. How do you stay calm? How do you keep your cool? I'm still trying to figure that out, to be honest. <laughs> um, I really don't know. Like, I felt fine all game, uh, and then I conceded a goal in the 83rd and let him back in. And then from that point on, I was just praying, to be honest. You have been an underdog here today. How does it feel to be through to the semi-finals? It must feel amazing. No, it's a, it's a good feeling, I can't lie. Um, I booked today off work, but I didn't <laughs> I didn't book Friday off work yet, what? which is how much I believed in myself. So I'm going to have to sort that one out too. Everyone um, here is in but, absolute yeah. hysterics because we're like, wait, what? So you really, you really didn't back yourself then at all? Um, I, I don't know, not really. Um, even even that game, I I didn't I didn't feel great going into it. I didn't really. I mean, it says it all that I didn't book the day off work, so I didn't think I'd get it. But I'm I'm happy that I've done it. Are we are we going to have to speak to your boss then? <laughs> what are we going to do? Uh, I'm going to have to sort it out <laughs> now. I think. Yeah. Do you now feel like you could go on to win this tournament? Are you are you letting your thoughts go there at all? Uh, I hope so. Um, I mean. <sighs> Uh, why not? I mean, I had a tough run of games today. I had a tough run of games to even get here to play for Arsenal, so why not? And you're a big Arsenal fan as well, aren't you? I mean, good choice yeah, yeah, in massive team. Arsenal fan. I have to say, <laughs> good you. choice. So is it even more special for you to be representing them and then do so well here today? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, definitely a surreal feeling um, and I'm happy to be through to Friday. <laughs> What are you going to do now, then? Are you going to carry on playing FIFA this evening or are you just going to chill, have a bath, light a candle? I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> um, I'm definitely chilling out. I can't, I've not even played the game, like, this week leading up to it. I thought I played four friendlies last night. Um, but I, I'm definitely going to get off for now and then I'm going to have to put some time in over the next few days. Yeah, I think you might have to. Why haven't you been playing this week? Were well, you just being quite chilled about uh, it, it seems? Yeah, I just kind of was chilled out about the whole thing and I don't know if that helped really. Um, sometimes I, I've got a habit of, of overplaying the game, so I thought mm. I'd just leave it and, and see what happens. Well, listen, well done. Good luck for Friday. Go chill out, do whatever you need to do to get into the zone and we'll see you soon. Back to you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole, right there. Finally, Arsenal are having a bit of luck. Uh, right. I mean, in the Premier League, it's not going too well. But in the E-Premier League, what a result that was right there. I think we need to get on the phones to Healy's boss. If he can't, Immediately. If he can't send him a text message, we're going to have to sort something out because he goes through to our semi-finals as part of the final show on Friday right there. As well as Oli Lito, they'll be taking each other on. We can see the results right here. That first quarter-final we were watching, Leeds. United, represented by Oli Lito, 13 goals to Tottenham's two. Wow, what a result. And that matchup we were watching, Sean Flossie, who represented Wolves, he got six goals, but it was Arsenal's Healy who got seven goals right there and an incredible uh, goal line clearance as well by the main man, uh, Alexander Zinchenko. Who would have thought he'd help Arsenal go through to the semi-finals? Yeah, unbelievable bit of defending, wasn't it? But let's face it. Oh, we can actually have a look at it here. How about this for a bit of defending? Because, of course, this is the 91st minute. Diving oh. header off the line. The studio actually erupted when that happened. <laughs> really, absolutely <laughs> delighted with that bit of defending. But, yeah, what a moment. In the other game, though, of course, Oli Lito, absolutely monstrous. 13-2 victor. Mark and uh, Dan, that was unbelievable, wasn't it? Unbelievable to some, maybe. To us who have watched Oli Lito play, it's sometimes he just has the ability to pull out these kind of results. We're going to look at some of the goals here, Dan, that Oli Lito did score in the background. There's a lot of them, so we're going to just let them play through. But, I mean, uh, explain how good a player Oli Lito is to some people who might be watching for the first time. Uh, Oli Lito is just technically very gifted, but he also knows how to finish a game and how to just really destroy an opponent. And that's what we'll see in a lot of these goal highlights. We're going to see Tom Stokes looking to try and get back into the game, pressing a lot, pushing his players. And Oli Lito takes full advantage of that. A lot of through balls, a lot of one-twos like you see here, clean through on goal. But then it's his execution at the end of all these chances. He's very clinical. 
He's going to always ensure he just ups that percentage, but he's also not going to shoot willy-nilly, but at the same time, he's not going to make those mistakes. And there's one thing here, you know, you talk about his ability to be clinical inside the box. He also is a master of mechanics, and you're going to use the player lock here. And it might seem very simple, but if you pause the... the, uh, the clip here you can see he's controlling this player just off the ball in the middle you can see that by the cursor over his head that's an advanced mechanic in the game that's double clicking both sticks flicking it down to the player that you want while you're controlling the ball as well and just pull him away one or two yards from where the defender is expecting him to go that creates the little angle for the ball to be played into Rashford a simple skill move a little heel to heel to get the angle and a simple finish at the end of it but one thing that always impresses me about Oli Lito as we're you know gifted to watch all of these goals that did fly in Dan is how simple he just makes everything look yeah he's very he, he makes every opponent look ordinary I think that's what Richard said uh, up on the commentary booth you can go up against one of the best players in the world but when you are playing Oli Lito suddenly you don't feel like you have that power because he just tears you apart he will find your weakness and he will pounce on it time and time again. He's very good at exposing any sort of defensive weaknesses you have. And that's why we're seeing just all these goals flood in. And OK, by this point, Stokes has given up. He's kind of pushing up. He's just looking for goals. And it was probably an unflattering scoreline for a player of Stokes' calibre. But that's what can happen. And this is another example of how Oli Lito actually plays a mental game very well as well. We talked about the player lock goal that he scored earlier. Well, he does the same thing here. But the difference between this area, uh, the, this goal, excuse me, and the goal that he scored before is he'll pull Hingman's son away from the ball. So the defender is then forced, having conceded the goal earlier, to track that. He thinks the ball is going to be played in. So what does Oli Lito do? He recognises the fact that that worked before. Now I'm just going to walk forward into the space that's been created from the player that's been pulled away. Simple ball inside. It's as simple as that. He's just a master of the mind games as well. To be completely honest, Oilito is the favourite to win this tournament, not just on the Xbox, but I think throughout the entirety when it comes to that cross-console final as well. There are a few players who maybe can stand in his way. There is the possibility of an Oilito versus Tex Xbox final if we see both of them get that far. But for now, me personally, I think Oilito is just the man to be. Yeah, I have to agree with you here. And this is a great example. Just this final goal, we'll roll this one back because we talked about him being clinical, him deadly in front of goal. He's not just got, you know, the ability to get towards goal. It's the finishes as well, Dan. A simple ball in behind, but just recognising the perfect time to chip, chip the goalkeeper and just make things look so easy. And I think when he's going up against Stokes, who made quite a few mistakes in the game prior where when he was in those 1v1 situations, he didn't really know what to do. Should he shoot? Should he ball roll? And he made a lot of bad decisions. And then he's really learned a lesson there against Oli Lito, who always seems to make the right decisions. So one more question for you. How would you beat Oli Lito? Um, it's not really something you should poise to me, I don't think, because I am never going to achieve something like that. Maybe that's a question we have to ask Tex later. Well, uh, it's also a question we can ask uh, to Kyle and Joe. So we'll go back to them now and find out. How do you beat him, mate? <laughs> Don't ask me. Absolutely no chance. Have you got an answer? Um, no, no, there's not a chance. Uh, not a chance at all. I'd be able to probably score a goal against him right there. <laughs> 13 goals against Stokes. What, 26, 30 against me and you? Probably. I reckon. Probably. Yeah, I reckon a good 30 as well, <laughs> fairly comfortably. But yeah, like we said a minute ago, you know, Ollie. Uh, Lito there scoring 13 goals in the Healy versus Flossie games or 13 alone. That's how, how good and how consistent Oli's been so far today. Yes, it has. And we talk about this game, we talk about this competition right here. You can see just how much it means, not just to mm. the competitors, but when it's 7 6 and the competition, literally your future is in your hands right there. A last minute goal line clearance <laughs> right that. I'm sure everyone at home was jumping around on their sofas just like we were here in the studio. This is what it's all about, Joe. Yeah, 100%. It was such an exciting moment. The studio erupted. I'm sure everybody at home erupted as well. Uh, but Nicole, who have you got? I am here with Jazz. Hello. How are you doing? How has your day been going so far? I'm good. Um, the day's been going well so far. Uh, we've got Diogo in the next round and I'm hoping to keep the form going. Do you feel like you know a lot about him? You know what to expect? How are you kind of preparing for this game? Yeah, um, so Diogo, with Diogo, I played him in Atlanta last year and lost him. And I lost mm. him in Paris as well. So it's time to get one of my own back and, you know, hopefully change the outcome of those previous defeats and turn it into a win this time. Oh, so you want revenge is basically what yeah. I'm hearing here. Yeah. How yeah, important we, we How important is that for you? Yeah, no, it's massive because this is to get into the top four. Uh, I've not secured a playoff spot yet for the rest of the season, so this is a crucial game for me. So, yeah, hopefully we can come out of the win. Did the win against Ryan give you confidence that you can go all the way? 
uh, yeah, of course, Ryan's the top player, and uh, to win against him, you know, it's given me a lot of confidence. Uh, Redlack as well beat West Ham. It was a big game. I uh, played Olilito as well, who beat me. But yeah, it's going to be a tough run, but hopefully we can go all the way, and I'm definitely confident and do believe in myself that we can do it. How would it feel, then, to be there on Friday? Oh, it'd be massive, it'd be massive. Um, obviously, last time I played in the E Premier League, I lost in the final, representing Chelsea, and now we're up against Chelsea, so... Yeah, hopefully we can go one further than what I did last time and go for the whole thing and win it. Now, am I right in thinking you're not actually a West Brom fan, but your family are? Uh, yeah, so um, my dad, who has almost been, what, two years now since he sadly passed away, uh, he was a mm. massive West Brom fan. So once I've seen that uh, West Brom are in the Premier League and there's a chance to represent them, uh, obviously it was a no-brainer and I made sure that I win that playoff for them and um, get to this stage, yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Well, we wish you all the luck in the world. Thank you so much. Back to you guys. Thank you. Nicole, thank you so much. Talking to West Bromwich Albion's Jazz 1875 right there. Right, it's time for a short break. And coming up shortly, we'll be going back into our quarterfinals here at the E Premier League. Yes, we'll be watching Falcons Diogo for Chelsea taking on Jazz 1875 for West Brom. We'll see you after this break. Like you'll ever get paid to play video games, they said. Now you're players, creators, fans, all in one huge and growing community. We know that gaming's many faces can truly make a positive impact. We're there with you. Whether you're making the next great game or just looking forward to playing it. Squad up, we're Barclays. Do you remember your first ever FIFA Ultimate Team card? It was um, a brown card and yeah. he had a yeah. 60, 64, I think. Good knowledge. What was it like for the first time you got included in FIFA? Yeah, bro, and I bought me in, in, in my Ultimate Team, but <laughs> this, that was a disaster. <laughs> Impossible to play with me. <laughs> Where the ball goes out of play, it looks like on the sidelines, Marcus Rashford is getting ready to be their first change today. Just getting his final checks from the physio by the looks of it. And he'll be looking to make an impact from the bench, most definitely. I call my father. It's like a psychologist. <laughs> uh, he was always trying to say, OK, are you training? Yes. And every day I was training when I called him in FaceTime. I was always on the treadmill. I've been afforded to spend time, fortunately, with my kids a lot more. But I think having them small moments where I'm perhaps around a little bit more or catching them at better times to participate in things that, that I probably wouldn't usually do. Me and Reese play chess quite a lot. So uh, we play chess against each other, which I found is you know, help trying to learn chess, start trying to learn Spanish as well. I was always helping out my neighbour, my elderly neighbour. We did his shopping, helped him out with his transport needs, his appointments and all that. So that was quite nice. Yeah, I also helped out the local bakery, take some food to the to the Royal Free Hospital during the lockdown when it was um, really ramping up. I'm always home, so always home. I'm watching nice movies. I am watching the Vikings. We tried to find something on the television or a good book that will take your mind off football for a little while. Music, yes, I vary between my soul and Motown and my classical music. We did a little bit of Christmas as a, as a family. We kept it quite private. Yeah, we helped, helped some local, local children with food. It is important to get in touch with your friends, your family, your neighbours, to make sure they're OK, because some people wouldn't ask for help if they're struggling. One of my New Year's resolutions was, you know, having a bit more contact with friends and family like checking up on them and that's what I've tried to do since uh, the new year.
Hello and welcome back to the E Premier League. My name is Kyle Walker. I'm joined by Joe Tomlinson. We're here in the quarterfinals, the final two matches of day one. Mate, yeah. it's been exciting. It's been so exciting and it doesn't stop there because we're about to watch West Brom versus Chelsea. Mark and Dan, you might as well take it away. Wonderful stuff. Thank you, gentlemen. It is time to get into our next game and two players that if you follow the competitive FIFA scene, you will know a lot about. Chelsea being represented by Diogo. A lot of hype over this man. He's already had some big moments, unfortunately, on the, uh, I would say, on the losing side of one of the biggest moments in EPL history, the, the classic Tex header uh, back in the inaugural EPL. But then West Brom's Jazz, one of the most exciting attacking players that we've seen in recent years in FIFA esports. One of my favourite players to watch. Yeah, I think Jazz has demonstrated a very different play style throughout FIFA 1920. 20 and 21 and he's grown as a player through each different iteration of FIFA and I think, feel like this is maybe the final form, the final boss that we've been waiting to see. A Jazz who can get to these late stages of tournaments and can show us what he's made of and maybe, just maybe, he can reach the semi-final. But it is Diogo staying in his way and it is Diogo a player who has reached the latter stages of the E Premier League as you mentioned uh, when he was representing Fulham that one time and unfortunately lost out to Tex in the dramatic game back in the 2019 E Premier League. But I'm excited for this one. And of course, a semi-final spot on the line between Chelsea and West Brom. So both these players, like you say, semi-final spot on the line, a chance to make it through. And unfortunately for one of them, that will be the end of the road here. Chelsea fans and West Brom fans both watching with an eager eye on this game. It will be Diogo with the ball from the start here. And I'm just in interested to see formation-wise what Jazz is actually going to be playing. It looks like he will be playing the five-back by the looks of things, potentially. But I know that he likes to run 4-3-3 as well. It's something he's done, even when it's not been particularly meta over the years, as Rashford's now inside the box for Diogo. Goes for that shot towards the near post, but it's just the side netting. I mean, liking the 4-3-3 probably works out in this meta where five at the back is so successful because those wingers do join the attack and it creates a lot of width similar to what the 4-3-3 has done in previous FIFAs. So perhaps going for something like a 5-3-2 here for Jazz will allow him to still have that creative freedom, but also have that defensive ability at the back. And Kyle Walker, ball, ball rolls away from someone like he wasn't there, unfortunately, that... Pass is just a little bit late and will be given offside there by the assistant referee. Suzoko stepping in. Interesting to see that road to the uh, Europa Cup final for I am in there. Unfortunately, that won't be getting any more upgrades. Sorry, Tottenham fans. As an Arsenal fan, just had to throw that one in there. You could have saved yourself there. You didn't even have to say you were an Arsenal fan. You could have stopped there. It would have been fine. But now everyone's going to come after you. I've made my bed. I'm happy to line it. Here is Bukayo Saka. Riyad Mahrez now stepping forward here for Jazz. And the headline is Mahrez, a lot of statistics in the right areas for an attacking player at the moment. Wonderful dribbling on the ball. Here's Rashford, directional nutmeg from Diogo. Out wide now to Adama Traore. This is where I think Jazz has to be careful when he gives the ball away in midfield and he does leave himself a little bit vulnerable when those players are pushed up the pitch, but... He has defended well and doesn't allow Diogo to get a chance on goal. And instead, now he can attack it. There's an overlapping run here from Kevin De Bruyne, breaking from midfield. Manchester City man. This time, trying to get some work done for West Bromwich Albion. And for Jazz, here's Bruno Fernandes. Now slightly dangerous here for Diogo. Has to be careful. The overlapping run once more. Bakayo Saka whips that one across. And Bruno Fernandes once again. Is it on the end of things to supply that finishing touch? It's West Brom 1, Chelsea 0. And, you know, I was wondering whether Jazz would even be getting out of his group after looking at who he had to compete against. Oli Lito, Man City's Ryan, but he was able to go up against the odds and took down Man City's Ryan in that lower bracket final and got through, of course, to this position where he has the chance to play in a semi-final. And Diogo is not an easy opponent, but the goal lead now will give Jazz absolute confidence in his own ability. He's defended well, he's kept Diogo at bay, and now he's shown that he can get behind that back line. Yeah, Saka doing a great job defensively there. Not just the offensive attributes on that future star's foot I am, of course. He's got some decent defending stats as well, which makes him absolutely perfect to be played in that wing-back area that you see him being employed by West Brom's Jazz at the moment. Rashford now stepping forward, the goal scorer, Fernandez, Looking at... Join up the pieces in this attack as always. 
Going to continue his run as well and almost gets on the end of that one or two. Got to try and, try and go for them sometimes, those through balls, and they do present themselves. It's a slight mistake. Jazz still in possession. Mares now steps forward. Rashford, scoop turn from him. Tries to just turn back onto that right foot, the stronger side. Of course, for Marcus Rashford, but just couldn't complete the turn. And now at the other end, Diogo looking to break away. Both players just trying to catch one another on the counter-attack. That's why we're seeing just a, a quick, heavy ball to the strikers from the defenders to see if any players will be out of position. Great pace here from Traore. And just to get to the byline, looking maybe for a cutback. Rashford now, massive chance here, and it's buried! Off the post, but falls the right side. The equaliser is here. A simple goal in the greater aspects of things here for Diogo, but very, very well worked. Defensively, though, I'd say that's a bit of a mistake from Jazz. You saw a little shake of the head. Offered far too much space for Rashford. Reluctant to dive in, maybe worried about giving away a penalty, but I feel like sometimes you do just have to get stuck in and stop that shot on goal. Diogo will take that space every day of the week. And now all of a sudden, Mo Salah's in on goal as well. He goes near post and... Bang, bang here for Diogo. Two goals in just a few minutes and now he's in the lead. And that's enough to really destroy your mindset as a player. When you had the early lead, you make a small mistake and then suddenly you're behind. Jazz is going to have to not fight against Diogo here, but maybe have to fight against his own mentality as many FIFA players do. Wonderful composure and response from Diogo, though. The Chelsea man who did go down early, like you've just indicated there. Ten minutes till half-time. Can he find an equaliser just to sell his nerves down? Before we do go into half-time, reminding to everyone, it's two legs of FIFA and an aggregate score will decide who does go through to our semi-final matchup. But for now, Diogo's got to defend because Kevin De Bruyne has managed to just about keep that one in as well. De Bruyne is still fighting here. Ball roll from him and oh, oh Edison denies his Manchester City teammate. A real chance there for Jazz and he knows it. Maybe something from the corner, but no Edison again. Quick off his line. Diogo maybe can look to try and counter-attack from the corner. You're always vulnerable from a corner situation. But thankfully for Jazz, the defender's tracking back quick enough. And Diogo just aware of the time on the clock as well. We'll take a look at a goal coming in from Man United, though, and it is going to be Dragon, who gets the first goal in this one. And it's going to be Tex, who finds himself 1-0 down. Dragon showing some great form down. That's not what you'd expect to see when you look at those two players. It was Rashford showing his strength again. We've seen it many a time already today. We're going to have to see a comeback from Liverpool's Tex. Big tackle there from Suzoko. Into stoppage time then. At the end of our first half of the first leg, Ooh, a strong tackle coming in from Diogo. Maybe just making sure there was no breakaway opportunity there for Jazz. You always worry that just maybe this one time the ref will reach into his pocket, it's a red card, and that changes everything in the leg. But the halftime whistle will go. And there has been another goal between Liverpool and Man United. And it's Tex going forward, and it's Son on his left foot. And just like that, in the 14th minute, that's an equaliser from Tex. A great response after going a goal down. Yeah, perfect response. It's been a, a game of responses so far. We saw Jazz, of course, uh, taking uh, the lead there. And then uh, the brilliant comeback in just a few moments. We'll see the goals as they were scored as well. This was the first one. A simple goal, really. That overlapping run from the fullback, creating the space for the cross. I mean, I think Buckley titles it a Buckley ball, didn't he? I think he's trying to claim that one. And I'm happy to give it to him, if I'm completely honest. But then, just like this... It was a little mistake there, offering up too much space, maybe too late with the player switching, and Rashford was able to get the shot away. And then only moments later, Diogo also adding extra salt to the wounds, delaying the shot, and then Mo Salah on the left foot. Yeah, he's waiting for the goalkeeper movement to come and then sliding in, like you say, or drilling it in more. Mo Salah there. We're back underway, though, in the second half, and it's going to be Jazz on the attack. Rashford now, cricket a cancel, but as we all know, it's a long, long road around that team of the year, Virgil van Dijk. And it's one that wasn't be able to be navigated there by Diogo. But here's a ball inside the box. Bruno Fernandes decides to maybe try something a little bit different there, Dan. Yeah, and I'm OK with different. You've got to keep your opponent on their toes. You've got to try and be unpredictable. 
But as with any attack, you're always going to have the possibility of your opponent then coming back into things with a counter-attack here. And nice flowing football from Diogo. Diogo now getting into the feet of Salah, who continues his run as well. Bruno Fernandes making his way across the edge of the 18-yard box. Salah now thinking about that ball into Rashford. Waiting for the run outside of him. Here's Mo Salah. Goes for the strike. Big save from the goalkeeper. I thought it was going to be offside, but it was a fantastically weighted ball. Perfectly poised for Salah to get onto the end of it. Really just too close to the goalkeeper, and Jazz will be thankful that he's not 3-1 behind here. Very difficult to keep up with Diogo when he's just dancing on the edge of the box with Marcus Rashford. Just biding his time, waiting for Salah to make that run. There are goals in this tight. Jazz will just be hoping that he can at least get an equaliser before another one heads back into his own net. Here's De Bruyne out wide this time, inside now to Rashford. You can see a little number situation developing. Big slice of luck here for Bruno Fernandes. Good composure in front of goal, though. And having been presented with the opportunity, Fernandes will put that one away. And as in real football, Sometimes a bobble, a deflection can go in your favour and you just have to take full advantage of that. Good composure from Jazz. A little bit of frustration from Diogo, but he just has to put it behind him. Recognise where he's been having his chances, where he's found his success. And not be too disheartened. Well, another goal in the game between Liverpool and Man United and it's Tex who has won at nil down, who's turned things around now to be leading 2-1 in that game. The Liverpool man get it done one again, once again. I mean... I don't want to say it, but there is a chance of a Diogo versus Tex rematch here. Back from that first inaugural E Premier League. I'm sure Diogo would love to get some revenge <laughs> after that one. Uh, if that was me, I think I'd be having cold sweats thinking about it every night. Well, plenty of time left here for both of these players, of course. We've got the second leg to come as well. But not too much between them at the moment. Both taking their chances when they have come. Sizoko now steps forward. West Brom on the attack once more. Jazz trying to be creative. Look for that opportunity to find a penetrative pass inside the 18-yard box. Or is that run outside? Instead, it's inside now to Rashford. There's a run from Mane! Oh. But he can't hit the target. And you don't get too many chances better than that. And sometimes that's the difference from using a Mane to using an R9, for example. But we're going to jump into Liverpool versus Man United live here. Still in the first half. Tex leading 2-1 against Dragon. Of course, Dragon already knocked out the second seed Gorilla previously in the tournament. And I wonder whether he can have another giant killing here. Well, there's a running behind here, just looking up to the official at the top of the screen to see if he was going to raise his flag. It did not come. But the goalkeeper was quick enough off his line there to deny the opportunity for Dragon. Now Tex coming forward right at the end of this first half in our first leg. Mane, beautiful turn back inside once more, there's the nutmeg. Defenders left for dead here, Tex at his best, it's vintage Tex. And it's just wonderful to watch. He's just unplayable sometimes when you're going up against him and he's oozing confidence like that. He's happy to dance around with the ball, add in a few skill moves. And Liverpool have a 3-1 lead in that quarter-final matchup, but back now to Chelsea versus West Brom. Only 15 minutes left in this first leg. And it's Chelsea on the attack. Diogo slides that ball into Marcus Rashford! And Rashford makes no mistake! Chelsea take the lead with 76 minutes on the clock. And what a big and important goal that could be in the context of this site. Oh, that's going to be great for the mentality for Diogo as well. And there's another through ball here. He did not go once more, this time it's St. Maximin, tries to get a little bit fancy, maybe guilty of overplaying that one, but another chance, and Jazz has got to be careful here. It's very easy when you concede a goal like Diogo did earlier with the Bruno Fernando skill moves that kind of bobble through to get down on yourself, but he's fought back and he's taken the lead once again. Mares now. Jazz going to have to fight his way back into this game from behind. Bruno Fernandes trying to find the ball through, you can see the idea. But unfortunately for Jazz, so could Diogo. Diogo probably do with slowing this game down a little bit now. Try and take out some of the seconds in this first leg. Maybe give himself one more chance before that final whistle. Well, here's Bukayo Saka. 
And Arsenal man goes inside. Rashford now. Chelsea looking to find another one towards the end of this game to give themselves a bit of a cushion. Ahead of that second leg. It will be coming up afterwards. Fernandez, beautiful stuff here from Diogo. Only the attentions of Rhys James will stop him. Yeah, just was reluctant to commit to a pass or a skill move there. Was hoping that maybe the goal would present itself. Opportunity for a through ball to Mahrez instead. Just waiting for the runner, Bruno Fernandez, And the Portuguese man does not miss from there. It's 3-3. What a touch that was as well from for Fernandez, And the finish just added to really what was a sublime move that now has us again poised 3-3 between the two. And Diogo at one end having a chance, not taking a risk, giving the ball away and then Jazz right up the other end. What a game. It's so well to patiently wait from that run as well from Fernandez. That run, run came from deep. There was a more obvious ball that you could see that Diogo was desperately trying to defend. Great patience, knowledge of where those runs are going to come as Van Dijk has to be careful. Right to the death in our first leg and when it's all said and done here between Chelsea and West Bromwich Albion, it will be tied up at 3-3 three three as we now jump over in the 60th minute to rejoin Liverpool versus Manchester United. Yeah, Liverpool under a little bit of pressure here, Dragon applying the team press, but Tex trying to play himself out. It is going to be a throw-in in favour of Man United. A chance for Dragon to make some serious history in this competition if he were able to take out Gorilla and Tex. Arguably two of the most famous players, not just in this competition, but in the world. A previous World Cup winner in Gorilla. Of course, Dragon was the coach at that World Cup victory for Gorilla. But now, going up against Tex, the mo more recent domination that he's had in FIFA 19 and FIFA 20. He does find himself two goals down here, Dragon. Got to be extremely careful here, Texas Dragon. Whips that ball in towards the back post, and it's that man again! Bruno Fernandes, this time for Manchester United, who gets Dragon back into this game. And I had a feeling coming into this tournament that Dragon had found the kind of form he was looking for. A lot of success in weekly tournaments, and knowing what a huge United fan is, he was expecting himself to perform with that shirt on, but now comes Tex. Well defended. I do think there's a little bit more in this game. It's not just Tex versus Dragon, it's Liverpool versus United. And it's Rashford against the goalkeeper now, and Dragon's found the equaliser! And from 3-1, it's 3-3 now! First it was Fernandez, now it's Rashford! Both United players getting it done. Dragon, a Reds. huge United fan. Tex, a huge Liverpool fan. And now it's all square between the two. We spoke to the players before the tournament and the question was asked to Tex, who would you like to beat in the final? His answer, Manchester United. It's not a final, but he certainly would not want to go out at the hands of anyone representing United. About as true a Liverpool fan as you could possibly get. We always make the joke that you'll hear more about Liverpool Football Club on his timeline on Twitter than you will about FIFA Esports. With 15 minutes to go in this game, and once again, just Dragon with this never say die attitude. When Dragon seeded 15th coming into this tournament, Tex seeded in fourth, which I guess is slightly lower than we would expect Tex to be, but when you look at who's ahead of him, Gorilla, Oli Lito, and Diogo, all three incredible players in their own right, so you can't really discredit anything they've managed to achieve. But Dragon being down in 15th to knock out Gorilla, to now be tied up with fourth seed Tex. I mean, Dragon is seriously about FIFA, but he is also one of these players that we seriously need to be considering about potentially getting to the latter stages of this tournament. I mean, anyone who gives Tex a game, regardless of who they're representing, deserves to be taken extremely seriously. Dragon with so many accolades over the years as well, and he's looking to roll back those years right now and put in the performance against the man who has dominated recent FIFA esports years Still a lot of time to go here. Still around 15 minutes in our first leg, let alone the second leg. But if this is what the first leg's got in store, down the second one's going to be even more exciting. Do you want to be playing against an angry Tex? That's what I want to know. 
Saka now inside Fernandez. Edison gets a touch on that one. Jones will pick up the pieces. And I think you're right, Texas starting to play with that little bit of aggression in his game now. Saka whips that one in as well. A little touch from the defender, almost took it into the path of the on-rushing striker, Jones now. De Bruyne, pressure building here. Dragon desperately trying to defend. Oh, De Bruyne going all the way around the hard way. De Bruyne should get there first oh. as well. Tex somehow working his way inside the 18-yard box, and if not for a stumble, might have been through on goal. But speaking of which, what a ball that is. Mane now. Tex tries to take him out. Rashford! Oh, he's turned the game on its head. And just look at that slide tackle from Van Dijk. Tex thinking that Mane was going to go all the way. Dragon stops up perfectly, plays the simple ball across. And now, just like that, from 3-1 down, Man United find themselves 4-3 up. And Liverpool and Tex rattled here. He was just going up against a wall of defence from Dragon, and the counter-attack perfectly executed. Well, now things are interesting. Into the final moments of this first leg. Still 90 in-game minutes to play. But the Liverpool man needs to summon a magic Liverpool moment once more. Here's Curtis Jones. Will it be the Liverpool youngster who can supply someone? No, it won't. There are many great moments for Liverpool. Istanbul, Calvert-Lewin at the back post. I mean, they're, they're <laughs> equally as, as fantastic, aren't they? But Tex is going to need some of that magic. You are quite right, because Dragon has completely turned that game on its head. And Manchester United find themselves with a goal lead going into the second leg. And I think that's the good thing for Tex, is there is still a second leg. How many times have we seen Tex go behind and then the second leg turn into a completely different player? But Dragon looks very, very commanding in how he's trying to go for these counter-attacks, just absorbing all that pressure. And then he's been clinical in front of goal. I think the concerning thing, though, for Tex, if I'm, I'm being completely honest, is he was 3-1 up. And usually when Tex is 3-1 up, it becomes 4, 5, 6, 7. So some worrying signs here, but still all to play for in that second game. We're going to get the reactions now of Joe and Kyle down on the desk because that was a crazy round of FIFA. Unbelievable few games there. Could we actually see Dragon taking the scalps of Tex and Gorilla? I mean, it's possible. That led there 4-3 to Saf Dragon against Fnatic Tex. Also, Chelsea and West Brom is 3-3. Do not want to miss this. We'll be back after this short break. We can start. It's your family, your teammates, your squad. This is football, and in football, you are never alone. FIFA 21, win as one. That's sick. PlayStation. So who are you choosing for pace? Pace, pace, Adam. I don't think it's just his pace, it's the acceleration as well. It's, it's, it changes so quick from zero to, I don't know, to 30. <laughs> so the next one is shooting. I'm going to go for Aguero. The way he finishes from inside the box, outside the box is really good. No mention of Cristiano Ronaldo, your Portuguese teammate. If I can choose Cristiano, he's obviously in the shooting department. <laughs> For shooting, you'd pick Cristiano over Sergio? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> he's quicker, he's taller, he, I think he's a more complete uh, player. Next up is defending. Big Verge, unbelievable. We all know that, unfortunately, he had a serious injury. I just want to wish him a speed recovery as well. But I think uh, he proved and will prove again that he one, he's one of the best defenders in the world, if not the best.
whether we're in a stadium or not. There's no room for racism. Not out there, not in here. There's no room for racism. No room for racism. Anywhere. Take a knee. They kneel in unity. Inside. But without actions, genuinely powerful sight. There are just words. There's no room for ignorance or intolerance, for hate, for injustice, for sitting in silence, for doing nothing. I'm ashamed, I'm embarrassed we want equality in society and football. We all need, need to, to do more. more. Challenge it. CCTV will find the perpetrator of that and he will have a lifetime back. Report it. Change it. Premier League. No room for racism. Anywhere. Hello and welcome back to the E-Premier League. We're in the business end on day one of the Xbox side of the competition. It's time to get back into the second legs of the quarterfinals. Mark and Dan, it's over to you guys. It is indeed, and it is time to get straight into action because, I mean, we just had a tremendous amount of things happen in those first legs there. We've got Tex, who's struggling. We saw a massive turnaround from Dragon for Manchester United. He was 3-1 down in that game, and now somehow, at the end of it, has a lead. That's how quickly it can turn around, but we've also got this matchup, Diogo versus Jazz, and also a game where it's so difficult to separate two fantastic competitors. Diogo has looked, in my opinion, the best better player going forward but Jazz has had those moments as well where I just know that he has the possibility to score goal upon goal and I really feel like it's going to come down to who can have just that period of FIFA where they can have back-to-back -back goals and break away from the other. Yeah, it's also about uh, consistency in front of goal, something that stood out for me from both players. You look back on that game between uh, Diogo and Jazz, uh, and you don't remember many missed chances. Every single time there was a chance created, it seemed to be finished by the players. They were choosing the right options. They were choosing the right finishes. And sometimes it comes down to the goalkeeper making the save. Sometimes it comes down to your striker not hitting the target. Sometimes it comes down to a little bit of brilliance from one of these two. Two players. You can see we're loading in right now, just moments away. Essentially nil-nil in this game as we are playing on an aggregate scoreline, but it's 90 minutes ahead of us to decide who will be moving through. And it's really difficult to try and predict who is going to have that kind of momentum shift to really take them far enough away where they can create that gap, maybe a two or three goal lead, or whether we are just going to be in a situation where we get to the latter stages of this game and they are still tied up and it's going to come down to either a clutch moment or maybe a mistake I feel like there's drama in this quarterfinal, as well as, of course, that Liverpool versus Manchester United tie. There's always drama in FIFA esports. And the deeper that you get into a tournament, the more it impacts the players. And it will be Jazz who have possession from the start of this second leg now. You can see the aggregate score in the top left-hand side of your screen as well, if you're just joining us. As Walker now steps forward. Kevin De Bruyne. Suzoko spreads that play out to Bukayo Saka, who's been... Doing a lot of good work on that left-hand side, Dan. Yeah, I, I spoke to a few players before the tournament, and I was wondering where Saka was going to feature, what formation people would be running. Would he be a winger? Would he be a wing-back? And in that 5-3-2, he's actually done a fantastic job. What a ball that is, though. And Mo Salah looking to use his pace. Doesn't have much of a weak foot to work with, so you're always going to expect him to try and shift it onto that left. Alexander-Arnold. Back inside here to Jones. A moment of respite here for Jazz. Running behind for Bruno Fernandes, though. There's one as well being triggered. Salah now into Rashford! Rashford puts it away! And first strike will go to Chelsea! And Diogo was just slowly but surely bringing out player upon player of Jazz, forcing the mistake. As there's been a goal between Manchester United and Liverpool. And it's bad news for Liverpool fans because Manchester United have taken a two-goal lead on aggregate. 5-3 now to Dragon. So much action in just the first few moments of both 
the quarterfinal games. Tex with it all to do. Liverpool fans, you need to get behind your man. Manchester United fans, you're going to be loving what you're seeing from Dragon right now. But back to Jazz versus Diogo. West Brom, Chelsea. Diogo stepping forward. Here's Rashford, here's Bruno Fernandes. Strength of James is enough to deal with him. It's just how Diogo's trying to lure Jazz out of his comfortable spots with his defence. As soon as one defender leaves a gap, that's where Diogo tries to pounce. He tries to initiate those runs to take advantage of the space that's been provided. And that's why he's got the lead, but it is a very slim lead. We've already seen that Jazz can get back into the game at any moment with just one opportunity. And again, it's a matter of being clinical, something that I preach in these games where you have two extremely high-level players. The chances are at a premium, and your finishing needs to be premium quality as well. Here's Rashford, oh! And there's the difference. That's what only a four-star weak foot can do sometimes. It's all about percentages when it comes to those four or five stars. You are going to have a lower chance of scoring when you're on that weaker foot. And that could have been an equaliser for Jazz. And I mean, we look at the chance he had previously in the first leg with Mane, for example. That one could have been tucked away by a different striker. Saka once again doing great work on both ends of the pitch here. And Jazz is going to want a little bit of fortune going his way. Maybe he feels like he's created two really good chances. And that Rashford one was a golden opportunity. Even on his left side there, you do expect Marcus Rashford with that third informed foot item to at least trouble the goalkeeper. Rashford now for Chelsea, though. Diogo going to slide in Mo Salah versus the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper does well. Fernandez beats the keeper to it. Jones into Rashford. Oh, oh the keeper makes another save. Oh, it would have been such a good goal as well. Diogo just responding to... The ball bouncing back in his path, and then the quick passes, noticing where the gaps were, knowing the goalkeeper was slightly off his line and out of position, as well as all the defenders. The Jazz, thankfully, watched his goalkeeper get back into position. Oh, and James had to spend like a final disc to get back into position quick enough to cut that one out. Rashford now coming forward for West Brom. Jazz needs a goal here to get back into this just before half time, just to settle the nerves a bit. It's great movement from Jazz on the ball with the croquetta cancels, the ball roll into scoop turn. He's got everything there. Just needs a goal to not allow Diogo to continue with this wave of confidence. And the pressure's good. He's been able to win the ball back. And he has been able to create chances. There's still lots of time left. I think that's the good thing for Jazz here. He doesn't need to get too antsy. There's a run through the middle here from Bruno Fernandes. Isn't going to be used this time. Instead, more steady build-up. Diogo doing a great job of pressuring the ball, though. Player switching phenomenally, and there is the perfect example of what can happen when you do so on the defensive end. Wins that ball back and just releases all the pressure that was building from Jazz. Jazz stepping up so far with Van Dijk there. It is going to leave a quite hefty gap at the back. That gap has been found by Rashford as well. Fernandez, Van Dijk now back into position. So a more traditional attack being formulated here. We'll bide his time and slow things down as we approach half-time here. De Bruyne giving far too much space. De Bruyne maybe thinking about hitting this one as well. Instead, it's going to be passed off to Rashford. Step over from him. Doesn't use that run from Traore. Running behind now from Salah. Diogo. Croquetta. De Bruyne are just teasing the defenders at the moment. And for Jazz, this has got to be agony. It's exactly how we saw a goal scored earlier. Maybe there was another chance there. As Diogo, he just tries to bait Jazz into biting. Jazz did dive in, but thankfully he got his second defender in a place to stop the through ball. But that is going to be slightly detrimental. Chance for a counter-attack here in the dying moments of the first half. Right at the end of the first half. Salah now out wide. Trying to drive at the defender, and he's going to do so. Show a bit of strength about him as well. Oh, oh it's beautiful from Mo Salah. And it's beautiful from, Di from Diogo, but the only thing missing... Was that finishing touch one a goal? The difference between the two players as we bring the first half to an end. But again, you can feel the tension in every single pass, every single shot, and every single tackle in that game, Dan. Quite right for Jazz just to clear it there as well. He knew that 
Diogo was in the ascendancy and he didn't want to offer him another opportunity before that halftime whistle went. But on the ball, I mean, Diogo looks fantastic. It's how patient he is. Look at him just baiting out those players for Jazz to try and win that ball back. And as soon as he saw a slight gap emerge, he took full advantage of it. As we have now kicked off our second half of this second leg, 45 minutes left for Jazz and West Brom to try and find an equaliser. It will be Diogo with the ball, and he's looked so comfortable with possession at his feet. The Chelsea man. So represents the Falcons, of course, the FIFA Global Series. And it's the blue of Chelsea today that he's looking to do proud. Mane will step in, though. And it will continue his run forward as well. And you are going to see Jazz having to commit more players forward as the time starts to run down in this game. Diogo is defending well and forcing Jazz to constantly go backwards with the ball. Fernandez finds the overlapping run here of Mares. Wonderful inside the box here from Jazz. Pass across here to Kevin De Bruyne. Doesn't pull the trigger. Second by the cherry though. Fernandez, Rashford with a bit of break dancing on the edge of the box. And it isn't going to pay off this time. As soon as I said that Diogo was kind of forcing Jazz back, Jazz suddenly has been able to find gap upon gap. And arguably could have had a shot at goal with Kevin De Bruyne. Tried to up his chances of scoring by delaying that extra second. Not against him here though, but certainly warning signs. You can see Diogo's player switching, trying to anticipate the passes that are going to be coming forward from Jazz. The difficulty of that is it looks brilliant if you get it right. But if you step out once and there's a delay on the pass, you leave that space in behind that can be exposed. It's a, a very advanced way of defending on FIFA, using that right stick switching, but you get it wrong. With those runs in behind, you can cause yourself problems. Jones manages to slide this one through. Tackle from James. Good challenge again. Defensively, Jazz is stepping up to the plate now. We just need to see something on the other side of the pitch go his way. That's an <laughs> interesting challenge from Jones, but it's actually worked out. Timed perfectly, you could argue. Some Slightly fortunate. Some say that Curtis Jones is still sliding. And if Fernandez tries to flick that one with the outside of the box, and now Curtis Jones was finished sliding, he's back on his feet. Will be part of this attack. Here's Bruno Fernandez. Dangerous times here for West Brom. Gets the ball back inside the box. It's beautiful from Fernandez, but not quite the angle. A lot of patience again, though, from Diogo. Trying to force the mistake from Jazz, but he's not necessarily taking the initiative in trying to go for something and take a risk. Instead, he is hoping that Jazz is going to dive in and almost gift him a goal. And I guess we have to look at how Jazz has been defending and the fact that he hasn't been biting for those challenges and, and allowing there to be too much free space for Diogo. Around 25 minutes left in this game. And Jazz needs a goal, West Brom need a goal. And maybe it's going to come here from Bruno Fernandes. Doesn't get a hold of it though. Simple save for Edison, usually expect Fernandes to test the keeper a bit more from there. Yeah, I mean, if you hit it at the right power, and you hit the sweet spot, you do see them sometimes sail into the top corner. Not on this occasion, though. Diogo still has the lead. And that's Bruno Fernandes charging to the defence. Salah trying to get on the end of it. Edison will be quick off his line, though. And now you can see a pause being queued, which means tactical changes, you'd imagine, for both players. But Jazz is the one who's got to force the pace here. Still needs this goal. Yeah, it's time now to throw everything in the kitchen sink forward for Jazz. Wonderful ball through. Mane on the overlap, goes back inside here to Rashford. Croquetta cancel. Jazz starting to flow a little bit here. Mares into Bruno Fernandes. Well read, though, by Diogo to stay on your feet there and change direction. It's such a massive moment, cannot be commended enough. It's whether Diogo can take advantage of this, though. Counter-attack, men forward for Jazz. Danger here. Rashford, maybe a chance to strike oh. Rashford! A chance taken by Diogo! Finally gets that two-goal cushion. And it was the right foot this time of Marcus Rashford that found that top corner. And Jazz has been wanting to desperately get into that tactic screen for quite some time now. And after having kind of glimpses of hope at the other end, 
All it took was a counter-attack from Diogo, Adama Traore on that left-hand side bursting into space, and then Rashford with some pretty ballet on the edge. And the finish just topped it off. And now Diogo is merely minutes away from a semi-final, unless we see something different here from Jazz. The Jazz has got to find a way to break through Diogo. He's still got to the edge of that 18-yard box so many times. There's been opportunities to find those passing plays, those intricate plays, the opportunity, the 1v1s, to create the opportunity for the strikes. But Diogo defensively in those 1v1s has really impressed me. He has. He hasn't really been diving in too much. There's been a couple of times where Diogo has maybe lapsed in concentration and allowed Jazz to play one extra through ball or one extra pass, but he recovers well, and I think that's what we have to focus on here. When a mistake is made, he does seem to have a backup plan. He does seem to also recognize those little situations where maybe the ball has bobbled the wrong way and he's reacting very successfully to them. So Jazz needs to strike and he needs to strike soon. But unfortunately for West Brom fans, he's given the ball away here. Salah making that run in behind. Fernandez just going to carry it through midfield instead. Finally fired forward. And now the chance to counter here for Jazz. Needs to make something of this, Dan. Yeah, I was wondering whether maybe Diogo should just be holding on to the ball, if I'm completely honest. A two-goal lead into the 84th minute now, and he went forward, he went for the goal. But it hasn't come back to bite him, because he still has possession. As I say that, Mane wins the header. There is still time for Jazz here. Fernandez, oh, a little bit of pressure from behind from Curtis Jones is going to be enough to make that pass wayward. Wow, and look Saka. at the pace there of Saka. You could argue that that might even be a game-winning challenge for Diogo. If Mane got hold of that, there was an opportunity of an attack for Jazz. And Saka, for all the work that he's done in the build-up to this, still has hold of the ball as well. I think you're completely right. The Arsenal man could have been the reason that Fernandez is through on goal and that Diogo will be moving through. 3-0 in this game. He puts the game to bed in the final minutes here. And Chelsea fans, you can start smiling. And that game done and dusted, really. So it's quite right we move over to Liverpool versus Man United. Only 10 minutes left for Liverpool Tex to get through here. The only problem is he's got to defend first. Van Dijk does that. Tex does have the ball back. And he needs to find chances but gives it away and Dragon now with every passing second gets closer to knocking out Fnatic Tex at Liverpool a winner of the E Premier League the inaugural E Premier League when Fnatic Tex took that championship but Dragon now just has to hold on to the ball and restrict the chances Tex has got possession, and there is still time, but he needs a goal here, Mark. Needs a goal from this attack. Van Dijk steps in, though. Mahrez keeps battling for Tex. And Saka will stride forward as quickly as he will be allowed. Son now. Liverpool needs something magical. And Fernandez steps in for Man United and Dragon. And that might be the tackle in this game that wins it for United. And now, at the other end, to finish things off, Dragon can't make the most of it. Merely moments left for Tex, as I think he's probably come to the reality and the realisation that he is not going to be moving forward in this competition. And it's the hands of Manchester United's Saf Dragon of all players. And look at that reaction, Mark. Dragon knows what he has done. United on this day have beaten Liverpool and knocked them out of the E Premier League on the Xbox. That man on your screen, Dragon, has found the form he's been looking for. He took down second seed Gorilla, knocking out Sheffield United. Now he takes down fourth seed Fnatic Tex, saying goodbye to arch rivals Liverpool. And you can see the frustration from Tex as well. And I'm in a picture, you can say a thousand words. <laughs> Love it. Amazing stuff from Dragon. Not only beating Tex, not only beating Liverpool, but beating 
Liverpool represented by Tex is probably as good as it gets for a FIFA player, FIFA pro who supports Man United and that obviously has the United badge on his chest. Unbelievable stuff. Uh, a huge shock uh, coming in. But Dragon in the form that he's been looking for for years now and looking absolutely unbeatable. I want to get the thoughts now of the guys on the desk because that was a crazy final round of FIFA. It was indeed. Mark and Dan, thank you so much. There we have it. We have our four semi-finalists making their way through to Friday. Is this 2003? Leeds, Arsenal, Chelsea and Manchester United <laughs> all making their way through to those semi-finals. Yes, Oli Lito representing Leeds, Healy representing Arsenal. As we've just seen, Falcons, Diogo representing Chelsea and Saf Dragon for Manchester United will all go head-to-head -head hoping to be crowned the E-Premier League champion. Yeah, I mean, what a day we've had today. And the action for the E-Premier League doesn't end there, does it? Tomorrow, we've got the PlayStation Affairs, which we'll see the favourites for the competition. Hashtag Tom playing. And that'll see the group stages and the quarterfinals. We'll also see the finals, including the cross-console grand final on March the 26th, Carl. Buzzing. Mate, I cannot wait. What a day of action it's been. FIFA 21, the E-Premier League right here. We've whittled it down from 20 competitors on the Xbox side all the way down to four, making their way through yeah. to Friday. It's so exciting, mate. Unbelievable. I just can't believe what we've seen with Manchester United and Dragon. To knock out Gorilla and then to knock out Tex, it doesn't get better than that. We've seen some huge names going out today. And unfortunately, that's what happens. You, you know, you can be yeah. brilliant coming into these tournaments, but if you don't do it on the day, that is what we've seen. And there's four players that have done it on the day. As I said, Leeds, Arsenal, Chelsea and Manchester United all represented on Friday. Yeah, I think Oli Lito probably impressed me so far the most. You know, that comfortable, comfortable win against Stokes. 13-2, he looks the favourite. Yes, I'd say so. He's top of the FIFA Global Series rankings right there. Top in Europe. Goes through. He'll be full of confidence as well, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for everybody at home for tuning in. Make sure you come back tomorrow. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you later.